and gets the rope. Has about 30, I'm oh, sorry, 53 seconds left into the aerial barrel. We just saw uh, our previous runner, Dante, go down here. Let's see how Nolan will be able to handle this. Building up some nice momentum and gets the grab. Wow. Looks like he's going for the dismount on the cliffhanger. Oh, no, he peeled off. Nolan. Nolan Latham peels off of the cliffhanger. I thought for sure he was going to get that, but Nolan should be able to finish out the course strong. Uh, still going with forward grip right here. Uh, going from the second to last. Uh, he looks like he's gassed. Still a great run by Nolan. And I we even though he didn't get that dismount, that might be a beta break right there on the cliffhanger. Uh, just not even bothering with that 90 degree transfer. Uh, for those of you just tuning in, uh, welcome back to the Tier 2 uh, World Ninja League Championships. I am Evan Mel, and I'm joined by Philip Scott. As we start our with our next athlete, we have Shay Goldstein. Uh, Shay comes out of Empire Ninja. Empire Ninja, uh, their regional championships uh, have been coming out strong. Misses the grab to that first ring. Saves it right there. Uh, looks like he's going to try and use the spider walls to get up there, but he is spinning around in no man's land. Goes to reset. Uh, very smart move right there. Come on, Shay. Yes! There we are. Now, Going through the rest of these rings and holds. Should be able to get a clear. No problem right here. And he does. Uh, wobble balance beam. Makes it through. And then slack line into the rope swing. Making quick work on the slack line. Uses the pad support. And makes the leap to the rope. Now, the aerial barrel, uh, definitely been a highlight of this course so far. Um, big shout outs to Nick Fortney and the Austin Ninjas, and shout outs to the aerial barrel. And makes the jump. You know, it looks like he'll have to build up some more momentum as he makes his way to the cliffhanger. Only has about 13 seconds left, so let's see if he could just get through this obstacle before the time expires. Still a great run by Shea. Makes a nice grab over to that cliffhanger, but just peels right off. Is he going to do the double steps? Uh, he is not. Uh, I look forward to Shea in the full course. Up next, looks like we are going to get... We don't have anyone at the starting platform just yet. Looks like Azui Jasso, I believe. Um, it... Liam LaRue should be next. Yep. Okay. Uh, thank you for the correction. Um, I've just received word that Liam LaRue should be running next. Uh, Liam comes out of comes out of Austin Ninjas. Uh, Coach Lulu uh, coaching his uh, athlete along, providing chalk if need be. Shout out to Coach Lulu and the other coaches at Austin Ninjas. Skips uh, one of the shrinking steps. Going with a bit of a lock-off technique. Um, might be a bit of a strategy that the other athlete should take advantage of. Skips that last hold. I looked like he might have missed the landing platform, but... He's still trekking along. Liam LaRue having a great run right here. Obviously, Coach Lulu has been teaching his athletes very well. It makes a great leap to the rope. Now onto the aerial barrel. Now, this... <laughs> Sorry. Um, 
yeah, he has a good amount of time left. He's getting that good momentum. Gets the pop. No problem. That's now the cliffhangers. Uh, we saw Noah Lawson try to um, make it to that dismount from that first cliffhanger, but no, doesn't look like any of our other athletes are going to try that. Uh, Liam LaRue going for the clear right there. Now, he's only got 20 seconds left up the double steps, making his way up. Let's see where he tries to go for the UFO. He's going from the very top with uh, a forward grip. Let's see how his hand placement is. And comes up just short. Looked like his left hand was right there. But his left, right he's getting that good misses. momentum. It's the pop. But still no great problem. Run by Liam. Um, definitely <laughs> any of our other athletes are going to try that. The, uh, uh, Liam LaRue. And nice dismount from the cliffhanger. We have our next athlete up next. Uh, Cole Jackson. Uh, Cole comes out of Empire Ninja in the New England region. Uh, Empire Ninja, shout outs to them for giving us a lot of these amazing athletes. And Cole is getting started. Cole using his uh, longer wingspan to reach that ring up there. I believe he they... quali I believe he qualified out of Empire. He's from one of the USA Ninja Challenge gyms, as I can see from his shirt and also his coach's shirt. So, yeah. Gotcha. Oh, he just he just Went steps off. off, but he's yeah. gonna keep going. Absolutely. Just because you doesn't mean just because you miss one obstacle in the full cor flow course uh, does not mean you can't try the other obstacles. Um. Definitely gets a feel for the other obstacles, and maybe so sometimes when you fail an obstacle, maybe your confidence goes a little bit down, but clearing all these other obstacles can get that right back up, and obviously, uh, it's nice to see our ninjas having as much fun as they do. And absolutely, uh, and another thing is experience. Just getting even clear or fail, every obstacle you do is experience, and that's a very important thing here in tier two and it's a great thing absolutely uh truer words could not have been said phil and now we have the uh ufos right here let's see if he'll be able to nail this lachey right here definitely proven to be a bit of a crux point yeah, that Looks drop like is tough to yes the timing on that drop is tough um so yeah, UFOs are tricky, like we've said, so that's another thing that ties into experience. Yeah. So, Phil, what do you think about uh, some of our athletes going for, like, more of a forward grip uh, on the double steps trying to lache over to the UFOs? Uh, or do you prefer, like, the reverse grab into the UFOs? I would personally prefer the reverse grab. That way I can just kind of flip my hands over and I don't have to, like, I'm like flicking my wrists back on the back side of the devil step um that's kind of just a technique thing and that's just part of you know tier two um some athletes uh do figure it out but i i think the more these athletes study them more they'll uh more they'll learn that and uh i could see more of our athletes coming up doing that yeah i agree uh, just for a different reason, because I feel like you're you can't get as much of a backswing because obviously the other double steps are there. Yeah, and we have Elijah, another one of our Austin Ninjas athletes, with Coach Lulu on the deck right now, running. Not on deck. He is currently on the course, and he's making short yep. work of it. Just under a minute left. Yep. Uh, we saw Noah have a great run. Uh, Noah, his brother, make a great run on the course. Uh. A few runs ago, building up a lot of momentum uh, to try and grab this ring. And gets it. Let's see how he'll handle the cliffhanger. Doesn't even bother with that uh, top rock. Uses the pole to help him out. Um, now, still using that pole, trying to get his hands up there. And makes the dismount. About 15 seconds left, uh, up the double steps. Making his way up. 
Shout out to Coach Lulu and our, our Austin Ninja uh, over here at the Tier 2 World Ninja League Championships today. Misses the grab on the UFOs, but still a great run by Elijah. And I look forward to seeing him uh, and his brother try and grab this in ring. the full course. And gets it. Makes the nice we'll grab right there. Get his and he hands used that up post there. Very smartly. And makes the I was going to mention it. It was a really smart move there. Yes. Absolutely. Minimizing the amount of grip that you had to use. But up next, Absolutely. we have Rico. Uh, Rico qualified from Austin Ninjas as well. Yep, he's from Move Sport, a gym not too far away from here. Absolutely. Um, something I mentioned earlier is that some of our Texas ninjas, uh, they don't have to travel as far. What a great way to get some swing right there. Um, oh yeah, he's got but, a lot of swing. Absolutely. Uh, definitely putting the rest of the competition on notice. And onto the balance beam. Not even using the little uh, safety nets. He's moving very, very smoothly. Uh, great run by Nico so far. As he moves on to our fifth obstacle, the aerial barrel. Going a little bit sideways. Oh, good. Those those straps on there are pretty wide, so you can really recenter yourself pretty quickly. And he's now he's gotten enough swing. He should be able to get the jump here. He just has to time it. Pop up. There he goes. Nice work. All right, and then Rico makes his way to the cliffhangers. Going for the dismount. We saw Nolan Latham fail that earlier. Wow. And then, but he gets it. Definitely saves up a lot of time um, because he only has about uh, 10 seconds left to try and get through the UFOs. Going from that top uh, top step right there, with the reverse grab, and he comes up just short. Um, looks like his hand placement was a little too far forward, but still great run by Rico, and definitely wants, definitely is going to be someone to watch out for in the full course. Yep, definitely, and that last obstacle, as I mentioned earlier, is the crux point of this course. Uh, it's a lot of speedy obstacles leading up into it, and then that climb up the devil steps and then the drop down is just a uh, those three ufos are really tough and these athletes are giving it a really good shot so far absolutely um up next we have logan polasek uh, another one of our austin another one some another athlete who uh qualified out of austin ninjas uh yep. their regional championship Yep, he's from Rise, as you can see, his coach as well. Uh, Rise is out of Houston, so another Texas ninja here. Mm -hmm. Making his way through the ring holds with absolute ease. Uh, doesn't have a ton of momentum, but using his wingspan to his advantage. Yeah, he looks really calm here. That's the nice thing. is When he was swinging, he was looking pretty calm. That keeps the heart rate down. But he's moving through really nice. He's got oh, he just passed a minute left, so he has a lot of time left to spare. To get through this course. Oh, what a save! Oh, what a save! And reaches for that cliffhanger right away. So really smooth. Really staticking his way and pushes off of the support to help his dismount. Uh, that is a very smart technique uh, out of Logan. Um. He's got about 30 seconds left. He has plenty of time uh, to get through these oh. UFOs. Just goes down. But he's smiling. He had a great run there. What a run by Logan. He yep. was looking really nice and smooth to spare. Absolutely. And this save and right here. Was... Ooh, what a save. Oh, what a save. Um, obviously, smile on our faces is something that we always love to see in Ninja. Because what's Ninja without having some fun? Absolutely. And then, uh, we, yep. Uh, we have Ian Stewart on the course now. Um, yep. He's got a he is, he's got a Lucas Reale shirt on, so he must be from the New England area. Yep. Uh, 
Uh, shout out to Lucas Reale. Um, definitely a very popular ninja. Great um, coach too. Definitely, absolutely. Yep, uh, he out of the New England area. Uh, Empire Ninja. Yep, he qualified uh, out of the... there. That's where our regionals were held. He's moving through. He's bounce beams, nice and calm. And that that red wall is in play. Good awareness there. Now we have the aerial barrel. This obstacle has been very, very fun to watch. We saw two incredible saves, one of which uh, happened with our most recent competitor, uh, Logan. Makes a great jump right there and reaches towards the ring. Making way through the cliffhanger. Going for a little bit of a safer dismount. It makes it. Devil Steps are up next. Going, going from the second to highest uh, step. Uh, oh, doesn't get a lot of momentum there onto the UFO, but still makes it through. Slamming that buzzer. <laughs> it's fun to hit the buzzer. Absolutely. I I know it was fun when I hit the buzzer, uh, when I finally hit the buzzer, when I did my Tier 2 qualifier back at MLab Ohio. So shout out to Movement Lab Ohio uh, yep. for hosting the Midwest uh, Tier 2 qualifiers and regionals. Yep. Next, Next up, we, we, have, we have Nathan oh, Woe uh, out of Austin Ninjas. Again, Coach Lulu always on the sidelines for his Austin Ninjas. Absolutely. Co Coach Lulu has a very busy weekend ahead of him. We have a <laughs> lot of Austin ninjas here. For sure. Making quick work of those ring holds. Nice job. Ooh, what a save. Wow, saint. wow. That's incredible. Oh, he's still fighting. What a save. Absolutely. Now onto the aerial barrel. Let's see if Nathan can ride the momentum right here. A great fight out of him so far. Here he goes now. Lots of swing. Can reach right up to the ring. Absolutely. Moves right into the cliffhanger. Use, using the uh, support. Help out his transfer. Now for a little sideways lache dismount here. Absolutely. And nice dismount right there. Has about 20 seconds left. Uh, double steps proven to not be... Oh, and... Just slips slides off. Slides right off. Let's take a right. look again at that save. Yes, absolutely. Um, right here on the rope. Nice slides job. Ooh, down. what a wow, save. Wow, wow. Just enough. That's incredible. Oh, he's still platform. fighting. What a save. Great awareness, too, to just know not to just he didn't touch his feet at all. You could see right there, he didn't. But next up, we have Stephen, Stephen Mall, Mall out of Dexterity Depot. Uh, as you can see, Tim Dexter on his sidelines right there. Tim Dexter, a shout out to Dexterity Depot, they're one of the teams. Tim and his team are going to be at the World Chase Tag World Championships in two weeks, yes, all the way in France. So He's got a great program with ninja, parkour, all that. and Absolutely. Shout out to Dexterity Depot. Shout out to Tim Dexter. And shout out to another Dexterity Depot athlete, uh, Matt Bradley. Oh, yeah, of course. And, uh, yeah, lots of, like I said, great crew over there. He's going through the balance beams now. Moving over to the slack line. Uh, looks looks like he cleared he it. A uh, yep. little bit of technical difficulties. Aerial barrel. Uh, see how the ring, how he's going to mount to the ring. Gets it with ease. Nice and smooth. Absolutely. 
Now he's going to reverse. It's the static. Oh. He can use the post. Oh! He tries to make a leap for it. I think I think he just wanted to do work out. just wanted to do the cliffhanger. You know, Coach Matt Bradley is all about cliffhangers. So. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Matt Bradley, absolutely insane skill at cliffhangers. Going from that top seven. Oh, close. Oh, hand was... placement was there. He yeah, just, just, just he got to get those arms bent a little bit, but still nice run out of Steven. And we've got a few runners left. We have five runners left in this division. Uh, let's pull that up. Let's see, we got Lucas, Brandon, Cameron, Kyle, and Luke to wrap up our pre-tain male division in the flow course. And then they're going to pop over to the full course after a little brief break. Um, and of course, as we know, and we'll go over the format again once we run th go through the last five. Just a quick summary um, before we head into our last five runners. Uh, all athletes run through four events, two courses, two skills, and then the combined result, the combined placements, lowest combined placement out of a you know, win. So if say somebody gets first in all four events. They get fourth place, or they get four points, and that that would mean they'd get first place, and so on. So, uh, four opportunities for all of our athletes to show their stuff, have fun at it, and yeah, I tier two has tier two worlds last year were great, and this year it's already looking to be a lot of fun, and I can't wait for the full course. Um, I also want to give a shout out to a former tier two uh, athlete who has made his way over to tier one. Uh, definitely has grown in skill a lot over the past year, and that is Kane Casillas. Yes, um, yeah, Kane. Uh, he got second place here last year, and now he's moved into the tier one. We've also had some other athletes move up pretty quickly through uh, tier two. Um, Tier 2 is just a great starting spot for Ninja, and uh, for example, uh, AJ Merchant uh, out of Stamford, she started in uh, Tier 2 last year, and uh, now she, then she competed in, at Tier 1 Worlds and then Premier Series, so yeah, Tier 2 is just such a great spot to learn how, the ins and outs of competing, especially when you when you get to like this level where it's the championships, and you know, you gotta learn how to adapt to you know, being nervous and, you know, you got the crowd around you and stuff. It's just such a great, uh, great learning experience for all these ninjas. True words could not have been said, Phil. And I can already tell it looks like a fantastic atmosphere over at Austin Ninjas. Once again, shout outs to Austin Ninjas for hosting this amazing event. Shout outs to Nick Fordney and the Austin team for designing all these obstacles. And of course... Uh, shout outs to the state of Texas for even having one of these gyms in the first place. But yeah, um, ama uh, absolutely incredible. This this has to be like an incredible time for everyone involved. Like, absolute like, it's it's so nice to see everyone support each other as much as they do, regardless if it's in tier two, tier one, or premier series. For sure, Evan and. That, that's one of the building blocks of Ninja, something that's stayed in the community for... Ninja's been around uh, here in the United States in particular for about 15 years. But it's uh, over the past uh, 10 years or so, it's slowly uh, grown uh, in the competitive scene. And uh, it's so nice to see, even with Tier 2, that sportsmanship that was still there at the very beginning of the sport still be here. Um, Let's take a quick look at the format graphic, as I briefly summarized earlier. Um, as you can see, athletes compete in four events, two courses, flow course and full course. Flow course, uh, your scoring stops after your first fall, but full course, all obstacles count. Um, so, so, if you, so let's say you fail an obstacle in the middle of the course, but beat an obstacle later on in the course, you, you'll still get the points for beating the obstacles later on in the course. So two different kind of formats. Full course is a little bit longer than the flow course, um, and the flow course is a little more speedy as you can as we've, as we've seen. 
anyway, um, then we also have two skills, which we kind of seen in the backgrounds, uh, two mini or mini courses that are more tech and power focused, but all of them add up kind of like a gymnastics all around sort of, um, as you can see, combined placement as a, if you, if an athlete gets first and three and second and a fourth, then they get five points. That means they end and the lowest number wins. So it's kind of like golf in that sense. Also kind of like motocross, if you've seen it, that sport before. And as you can see, we also have medals for athletes that get individual events, top placements and in individual events, not just the combined. And then also overall categories. So both courses combined and then both skills combined also get medals. But through and through, main point, all athletes get to run on four awesome courses this weekend. Absolutely. Like, even if you have a bit of a rough run in one of them, you can still make up the points on every other course. And that that is that that is the joy of Strongest Ninja and the joy of Ninja in general. Just having fun, doing as many courses as you can, and of course, staying active and staying fit. Yep. Ninja is um yeah, Ninja, a lot of these athletes, although some of them come from other sports, like started with other sports and things like that, or do multiple sports. Um, For example, I know uh, our pre-teens tier one champion, Charlie Ball, uh, has done football too. Um, I th a, lot of, a lot of athletes actually start with Ninja. For example, I started with Ninja as my first sport. Um, and... It's just such a great sport for your whole, just all your coordination. It do, would help you with any other sport. Just uh, the amount of upper body and lower body coordination that you have to have in this sport. Um, it's pretty unparalleled. But right now we have our next athlete up. It is Brandon, I believe. Oh, it's Lucas Luke. Pine. Lucas Pine. Uh, Lucas Pine uh, qualified in the Northeast uh, region at uh, Brooklyn Ninja Academy. Going with a four drip. Uh, looks like uh, rocking the Series 1. Uh, shout out to Series 1. And uh, has an Urban Playground shirt on as well. Shout outs to them as well. Yep, Urban Playground is one of our newer gyms and they hosted a tier two competition i believe earlier this season there in pennsylvania Aaron, moving smoothly onto the aerial barrel absolutely building up some nice momentum right here taking a few extra swings oh doesn't have a lot of time left but makes the leap We'll see if he can get through this cliffhanger before time expires. Looks like going for going for the dismount, maybe. Oh, he's wow! Makes a like a ninety degree lache. Not easy at all. But time runs up. But still, that was an awesome move on the cliffhanger right there. Uh, ninety degree laches are not easy, especially on a cliffhanger. For sure. It, it takes a lot of core and just timing with your arms um, and legs. A lot of people think that upper body obstacles are just upper body because of the, you know, the name and you're hanging and stuff, but so much more, it, it, every obstacle is full body. You need to, um, look, all these athletes at the start of their ninja training, um, they're learning and they're doing a great job at learning how to control their lower body as well getting that swing going like flowing um moving your upper and lower body to control yourself to get to that next bar um is i uh, one thing that i i've seen sometimes is um a lot of especially like um older athletes uh like adults that get into it they kind of try to muscle through it but these these kids have been learning for a, a bit now like how to coordinate themselves upper and lower body swinging through obstacles flowing and uh yeah they're all these athletes have been doing a great job 
Uh, we got Brandon up next. He's out of Axios. Um, there's Coach Abel Gonzalez. Another Texas, another Texas gym. Absolutely. Uh, also wearing the We Are All Able shirt. So once again, shout out to Abel Gonzalez as we begin a Brandon Bro Ronaldez run. Uh, bit, of, bit of a stutter there uh, on the last name. But um, yeah, so something to, something else to keep in mind as well. Like um, Obviously, Ninja has evolved so much since our humble beginnings. And I cannot wait to see what the sport, what the future of the sport uh, has in store. And the way it looks right now, it's looking very, very bright. For sure. And uh, something that's amazing is how many kids have been getting into it. Um, I, So many of our newest athletes have been starting from the youngest age group. So they've been building themselves up through the ranks, through the years, and it's just really cool to see all this interest in the sport, and these kids really motivated to keep keep going, and it's great to have coaches like Abel cheering them on the whole way. Absolutely. Uh, on to the aerial barrel, which uh, this obstacle has been very, very fun to watch. Um, definitely the cliffhanger has also been pretty tough. Uh, so shout outs to Cliffhanger. Um, also shout outs to Nick Fordney and the Austin team. For oh, Christ. just misses it. Yeah, that the barrel. It, it's tough to jump off of it unless you get a perfect swing and can like reach out. Sometimes if you miss time the jump, put a little too much weight on the bottom, and you kind of miss. But oh, look at that! He gets Gra that grabs first the first grab. UFO. Look Makes at the that second flow. one too. And now we have the third and final one. Wow. There we are. He just has the dismount left. Look at that flow. Absolutely. Uh de definitely a great way to end the run, even though Maya came up too just much short on that aerial on barrel. Bottom. Yeah, look at this. Kind of what, watch this these but, UFOs. Oh, look at like, that. This but, oh, look at right. that. He gets Gra that grabs first, the first grab. UFO. He gets that timing down and kind of like kips back and flows. Look Makes at the that second flow. one too. And that's smart too because he keeps some of his momentum going. For sure. Next next we have Cameron Vignault. I uh, hope I pronounced that right. Vignault, um, I believe. Yeah, so Cameron uh, comes uh, qualified through Empire Ninja. So once again, shout out to Empire Ninja. Uh, New England uh, region has a lot of athletes here today. And these athletes, like, this is tough, like, for them specific, especially for, like, uh, our regions that travel really far because you have to deal with a lot of Ooh. variables. Ooh. Banks his knee, but he gets the he gets to reset, gets those legs up. Just needs to take a breather, reset, and reach up. Yep. It's a good Still, kickoff. There we there go. There we are. Good fight. Absolutely, uh, using the spire walls to help him out, making quick work of the ring holds. The wobble balance beam, which is deceptively difficult like i've i've tried uh wobbly balance it's it, it's tough yeah very very tough with ninja being all swings and stuff and i've mentioned how ninja's upper and lower body and obviously we need to mention <laughs> balance obstacles balance obstacles can be forgotten by a lot of athletes but the athletes today have been making good work of it. It's good that they've been learning. Oh, just missed the timing there. He's going to keep moving. See if he can get through. Absolutely. Get through this UFO section yeah. here. We just saw Brandon Bernaldez actually get through the UFOs. Let's see if Cameron can do the same. Building up some momentum. Oh, just undershoots it. Yeah, it looks like he banked his face on the UFO. I hope he's okay, but he he looks be just okay, fine. Yeah. But uh, still a great run by Cameron. Um, 
Might have missed, might have missed a few grabs, but still a lot to be proud of. Next up, we've got Kyle Becker. Another Team Reality shirt. So out of New England, he takes a reset, gets the little kick going. Nice grab up to the ring. Moving on through the holds. Yeah, making quick work. Uh, now we have our two balance obstacles back to back. Using the safety nets. And gets through. Oh, go, going off side to side. Oh, oh. yes. Just yeah. Tough to save that one, but it's going to keep Absolutely. moving on through. Yeah, that's another thing about slackline. Once your momentum starts going off to the side, very, very difficult to recover. Building up a lot of swing right here. Trying to get to the, this ring and gets it. He goes now moving on through. Absolutely. Matches. And now he's now he's getting that sideways swing going. Gets up to the Oh, Jess Smith is but good idea moving up to that top one. But now he's moving on up through the devil steps. Kyle Becker putting in amazing effort on each of these obstacles. No quit in him. Now we have the UFOs. He had a good idea there, kind of going for that kind of back tip where he kind of sets himself back and reaches out like we saw Brandon do. Uh, but yeah, the UFOs, you have to be right in the middle of each one of them. But now we have our last athlete up, uh, another one of the USA Ninja Challenge squad out of New, New England. We have Luke D'Souza. He is our last runner before we uh, take a short break and switch over to our second course of the day for our preteen boys. Yes, indeed. Uh, Luke, uh, re looking ready to go. Uh, very determined. Uh, just trying to get a few questions from uh, the ref. And looks like Nick Fordney right there. Uh, shout out to Nick Fordney, uh, design, uh, course designer. Looks like we're having a uh, just doing uh, a look, quick little yeah. timer reset there. Gotcha. And uh, looks like uh, the ref and Nick Fortney uh, were trying to figure a few things out before our final runner. And let's see how Luke does. And we are off. Nice Having a lot there. of momentum right here. The wobble balance beam. Not using the safety nets either. Now we have our slack line. Nice high nice, grab on Over the a minute left to this point. It's been yeah. nice and calm here. This has to get the momentum here on the barrel. Oh, Whoa! good save. What good, a save. Good save. That that's that might be the save the save of the course. The amount of grip strength you have to hang on to those straps is absolutely incredible. And he but, keeps it moving. He beats that obstacle now under the cliffhanger move here. This needs to well, Get himself lined up. It's a little bit of a diagonal and back move. And he makes it. Now he's onto the devil steps. Chalks up a little bit. Uh, he run a little short on time, but can he make it through these UFOs? Goes for a step lower. Yep. Trying to build up some momentum. Oh, he hangs on! Let's oh, see if Luke D'Souza can finish strong. Time expires, but... He, oh, oh just... no! He, 
heels off. Still very what nice run. run by Luke D'Souza, and what a oh, save. Oh, good save. Oh, that aerial barrel. Yeah. What good. a save. And good save. The thing, and the best part is, he didn't even look phased. Like, the amount of, the amount of time, like, you have to, like, stay under control the entire time. Like, I know if, it's kind of hard for me to, like, not be phased by an amazing save. Like, I'd be like, should I just do that? But no, uh, Luke D'Souza, uh, just absolutely shrugs it off and makes it all the way over to the double makes it all the way to the double suck and grabs that first UFO. And as you can see now we have our leaderboard for the three team male division so far on the floor course. After the floor course you can see Logan flying through just missed the last obstacle but oh, great job by all these athletes and Nobody quite finished the whole course, but we'll see if that changes going into the next course. They they've gotten some of the they've gotten some of the jitters out, warmed up a little bit. We'll see how they can attack the full course in that three quarter. Absolutely. Um, what do you think are should be our competitors' mindset? Uh, sorry, our athletes' mindsets uh, going into uh, the full course. I'm just. And just remember, like, e even though the obstacles are different for the full course, just remembering that, um, just remembering kind of just how it was on the course, what movements they, what kind of similar movements they may have struggled with or did good at in the flow course, and, um, also just visualize, look at the full course, um, they, of course, did the, uh, saw the rules video, uh, earlier so i'm sure their coaches and parents have been uh helping them out with uh kind of making a game plan making a game plan for themselves and uh yeah visualizing is just imagining yourself on the course sometimes a lot of ninjas if you go to any uh big pro ninja comp you'll see during the rules <laughs> if there's on in-person rules you will see just a line of ninjas just like moving their arms around because um, they're just visualizing, just trying to Im imagine just like each grab. And that's definitely an important skill to learn. You see that in not just ninja, but all sorts of sports like this. So like climbing, you'll see it and things like that. Um, so yeah, they, this is just another one of those great learning experiences here. Um, just getting ready. You've already done your first course and now you're just getting ready for the second one and yeah it just gotta stay warm uh know what you gotta work on and uh and also another great thing of course with the full course is um every obstacle counts um it's not just uh the tradition flow is trad for those that are unaware flow is uh the traditional ninja format where you, you, know, you fall and your run is run ends like where your run gets stopped scoring after your first fall and then full is every obstacle counts and then uh it's kind of it's kind of a very fancy uh, mathematical formula um that calculates the rest uh, based off of um based off of how fast you do it and how many other people beat a certain obstacle uh but it's long story short it's uh eat as many obstacles as you can and do them you know as efficiently as possible, and uh, best, the best at a, at the course will uh, will get the highest placement. Absolutely. Uh, obviously, stay warm, but obviously, do not uh, drain too much of your strength while warming up because there is still an entire course ahead of you guys. And when I was uh, doing the, when I was commenting the kids female division uh, with Billy Dixon, shout out to Billy Dixon. Um, I noticed that a lot of the athletes uh, were starting to get really tired towards the back half of that course. So, like, obviously, not only do you have to find a way to fight through, you also got to find a way to, like, conserve your energy as much as possible, which goes back to ever trying to do all these obstacles as efficiently as possible. Yeah, for sure, Evan. And we will be taking a quick little break here. I'll pull up what our 
schedule is for the weekend. Of course, we have two courses running at the same time. This is our first time at the Tier 2 running two courses at the same time. We got so many athletes, we have to run two at the same time. Um, and uh, so we will be right back in a few minutes. And here is the schedule. Thanks for tuning in, guys. This is the Tier 2 World Ninja League Championships in Austin.
Hello everybody and welcome back to the Tier 2 World Ninja League Championships. I'm Philip Scott alongside Evan Mel. And so far in the preteen male division, we've seen a lot of great action. Lots of athletes getting to the very last obstacle of the flow course, but just coming up short on that really tough UFO obstacle. But now they got a chance to redeem themselves on this second course, the full course. And we're getting underway really shortly, and we have a 2 minute and 30 second time limit for these athletes on this full course where every obstacle counts, clear or fail, you get to do every single one, and it is scored. So, let's see how this goes. Evan, what'd you think? Uh, alrighty, uh, let's get into it. Uh, we're experiencing some technical difficulties on our end, uh, but it looks like Shane Martin is starting off the course and is making quick work of that first obstacle. Now, it looks like we have a little bit of a hold into our second obstacle. Second obstacle is our cliffhanger with a kind of big dismount to the end. We got a variety of different cliffhanger holds for these athletes. Uh, got some rounded ones, some flat ones. He's Absolutely. Down the pyramid of cliff holds, and now got to swing his way over to that blue pad all the way on the side. It's tough to get a sideways swing going, but he monkey bars it and gets it. Absolutely. Uh, great dismount by Shane there. Um, we have a lot of ninjas from the New England region here today, uh, so shout out to the New England region, um, and shout out to Empire Ninja for hosting the regional championship over there. And, uh, definitely a lot of athletes coming, uh, from very, from that area of the United States. Um, do you, uh, obviously, like, no two obstacles, uh, two same obstacles from different gyms are the same, um, Maybe a, maybe a cliffhanger is different. Maybe a UFO is different. Um, many, many obstacles. Oh, just comes up. But just he had a re short right there. Really good run still. That obstacle is really tough on the core and keeping yourself centered. And look at this fidget spinner that's on two straps. This is another example of just how tough this full course is, but these athletes have been making it... All weekend looks strong. He's keeping it moving. Remember, every obstacle counts here, so he can keep moving and keep scoring points. Now he's up. absolutely. Now he's up through into through into this uh, ring toss here. Yep. Uh, yeah. Uh, moving the rings by uh, in your other hand definitely not easy and. The fidget spinners on bungee cords, also not very easy, uh, experiencing a little bit of technical difficulties, uh, and time runs out right on what looks like to be a kaleidoscope. Uh, Shane Martin put up a great run, um, definitely the highlight was that one-handed monkey bar dismount on the cliffhanger. And, uh, now we are going to move on to, I believe... Uh, Jax Hyun. Looks like still a little bit of technical difficulties over here. Um, yeah, so I absolutely want to give a shout out to Austin Ninjas in Austin, Texas. Uh, shout out to Nick Fordney and the Austin Ninjas team for designing, uh, course designing, uh, both the full Full, uh, flow and the full course. Uh, we are in the flow, uh, full course right now. Um, and we are on to our second ringer, uh, Jax Quing. <laughs> so, Jax qualified from the, from also the New England region, uh, over at Empire Ninja. Um, and, uh, Looks like uh, might be making his way over to the starting platform. 
Or do we have a zoo? Yeah. So, oh, well, there uh, we we're go. off. Now he's off. Just Jack's and out of Grit Ninja. Moving on through these holds. Making absolutely quick work of them as well. Yeah, um, definitely something that a lot of our uh, competitors that had, I'm sorry, our athletes have more, have a lot more travel miles on them. Might some might be dealing with a little bit of jet lag if they came here by plane. Oh, balancing on the slack lines, but slides right off. But that's okay. You still got, he still got plenty more obstacles to make up points on. And one of them is the one that he is attempting right now. Spinning around uh, doesn't even bother with Lachey, which very, very smart. Uh, Lachey into like a pumpkin hole, uh, not very easy to do. And spinning around trying to fix his hand placement. Yeah, Jack Swing is in a lot of trouble right now. He's continuing to spin. But he's fighting. Absolutely. Yeah, those Definitely bearings, the no issue with the him. bear is, issue with these bearings is they're so smooth that once they get going, it's really hard to stop, but he's controlling it. He's gonna go for that Lachey. Oh a good fight stopping it. Um stopping that swing and he's gonna move on through to the next obstacle. Absolutely. And Mo looks like he's getting a little bit of chalk uh, sizing up this next obstacle here. Yeah, he's probably uh, a little ahead. little fatigued too from fighting that. His grip and core is probably yep. a little taxed right now, but he's moving through. Makes look, the at, loche look at how over that thing to swings. The spinners. Swings in all directions, yeah. and he makes it. That's going to be some good points there for Jax. Yep. For sure. And then we have um, these ring placements uh, on these little holds. We saw Shane Martin struggle with them a little bit, but Jack Swing is making quick work of them. And looks like time has yeah. just ran out. Yeah, time just expired, but still nice run out of Jax. Absolutely. Uh, definitely the fidget spinner grab and the fact that he was able to save... Uh, on that spinning hold, uh, those were the highlights of that run. Like the fact that you were able to, he was able to stop himself. Uh, definitely a bright future for Jax over here. And uh, up next we have Connor Pre Prazi, I believe that is how it's pronounced. Connor Press, uh, I believe. Th uh, thanks for the correction, Phil. And, and I assume. Uh, um, yeah. Wait, now and he, then, here he goes though. On to yep. flew through the steps as you can see, just came flying into view, moving on into the cliffhanger. Absolutely. Uh making quick work of the cliffhanger as well. Uh cliffhangers uh obviously a staple of any ninja competition. And nails the dismount. Now he's moving on over through to the balance. Look, looked good at first, but just bounces yes, off, but that's hurt. okay. Now, we just saw our previous two athletes fall on this obstacle. Let's see if Connor will be the first. He laches to it. Now he's now he's in the same situation as Jax before him. But good but recovered. control. He's just got to commit to that jump. Oh, so close. That's a hard lache too. Oh yeah. Like that nothing nothing is easy about this course. Nothing is easy about ninja in general. It he makes keeps that swing nice centered lache. here. He's gonna go for this dismount on that that crazy gyroscopic fidget spinner that Nick Forney's come up with. Yes, uh shout outs to Nick Forney and shout outs to Austin Ninjas. Uh, absolutely. Looking like a little bit of a gets through it. Um, now on to what looks Ola like to be a kaleidoscope. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yep. One of our DGS obstacles, the kaleidoscope. Uh, shout is, out to DGS, which we've seen at the Mirror Series Finals and 
uh, we won championships last year, and, uh, yeah, nice work. There he goes. Now he hits the button. <laughs> yep, uh, great run by Connor. Um, definitely was able to, like with uh, Jax before him, um, was able to get that uh, little UFO, like, that spin spinning around. He was able to get under control. Uh, which, of course, is not easy, and Connor should be very proud of himself. For sure. And our next runner looks to be Luke Thornton? Yes, Correct. Luke Thornton. And uh, Luke came out of... Again, the New England region. Uh, shout out to the New England region. Uh having a lot of athletes come out today. As uh, they, as our course designers look into reset each of these obstacles, um, shout out to Austin Ninjas once again. Oops. Um, Phil, what do you think the difference uh, will be for a lot of these uh, athletes here today? Um, there's a lot more upper body and swing control in the second course um so i think it'll just come down i think if you can beat that the ufos that spin around and then like the with that tough cliche at the end to grab that we've seen some athletes already kind of have trouble with i think if you beat that you'll be in really good shape for the overall standings because uh, if not a lot of people get through that, then the that means the uh, that point will be that much more important to get. Absolutely. And then we have also like and obviously the New England region coming out strong. Um, do you th do you think that maybe uh? Jet lag might be playing a role with uh, these New England uh, athletes here today. I don't or think the possibility so. They, of jet lag. They've probably already been here for a day or two. Um, they've probably um, been to a gym nearby um, or something to kind of just get warmed up. Um, and so I don't think that'll be an issue. But traveling is definitely tough. You never feel perfect at a competition because you need nerves and everything, and traveling does make it kind of tough, but that just makes it more impressive how good these athletes are that are able to go somewhere they're unfamiliar with and do so well. As we see Luke, who is from uh, the New England area, moving on through now. Absolutely. Like, it's absolutely incredible what these... Uh athletes can do so like shout out to all of these athletes here at austin ninjas competing regardless of division um ultimately like oh, just oh, slides off short. slides off the cliffhanger i think he was moving a little too quick and might have slipped but good good idea once he slipped off to <laughs> run over and start uh next obstacle oh he almost oh. got it he's he's been going at a pretty fast pace so far Absolutely. Okay. Just to reach up here. That's a hard grab, too. It is. And then, oh, yeah, oh. you have to monkey on through between. That's just such a tough, um, such a tough grip and momentum based obstacle. Like, just really Absolutely. controlling. Oh, what a save. Whoa. Yeah, we just caught that. And. Now, but now because of the way it freely spins in all directions, he's gonna have to really get it. But it looks like he should be able to get the dismount here, and he does. Good save. What Look at that save. thing flying around. Absolutely. Now, let's see how he'll handle uh, this a little bit of ring tech. Trying to get the ring right out and sticks it right back into the next hold. Luke Thornton, uh, really pick, really uh, making up for some uh, lost points on those first few obstacles, and now we have this uh, kaleidoscope. You get this little hop in. Uh, yeah, that is so tough. It 
that last obstacle is so tough because you have to just be so precise with that little jump into that bar. There's just that little, like, inch, inch and a half slot. That's nice ending to a tough course. Absolutely. Uh, next we have Noah Bamford, uh, one of two Bamfords competing. Uh, the other one is his brother Elijah, who will be running later. Um, we have Coach Lulu. Shout out to Coach Lulu. Oh, there he is. Hi. <laughs> Wave, waves, to, waves to the camera. <laughs> Here he goes. He's getting ready now. Take on this course. Has definitely proven to be pretty tricky so far. Yes, especially once uh, you get towards the layer obstacles like Kaleidoscope, not easy. Uh, the little UFO spin, uh, not easy. Slack lines, not easy. Cliffhanger, not easy. This course is just not easy. Nothing oh, no. in Ninja is easy. It is the second course of this. Um of the two courses of the four events that these athletes have to do. Later on, these preteen boys will be taking on the skills later on off stream. You can kind of see some of the skills off Yeah, there. They have to do with some other obstacles and things set up yeah. for those skills, those smaller courses. Oh, oh, no! he, oh just slips off there. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, just... Just kind of swung, didn't quite eye up the dismount, but now he's moving on, nice and calm through the cliffhangers. Yep. Yep. I mean, he's they... not letting that uh, that uh, fall. Oh wow! Oh yeah, what a save! Yep, the pole is allowed in yeah. play, so he was able to use that. Look at that and he gets flying the through. Slide. Look through the slack ladder. Yeah, even though Noah might have uh, fallen on the second obstacle, he is definitely making up for lost time here. Oh, that was a oh. good plan, though, going for the both sides. That way he didn't have to control the spin. Yep. And even if he falls, he's still moving. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yep, full course, every obstacle counts, every point counts. Ooh. And that, sl that point he got on the slack line actually was a big one because... Many of our athletes so far have had trouble with that, so that will help him in the point standings. Coach Lulu uh, teaching his athletes very well. All of these There he goes. And nice lache right there. Got to get the dismount. Taking a few extra swings. Got it. Now on to our little bit of ring tech. Gonna have to build up a bit more swing here. And reach up. He get the, oh, oh! Stays on, and he gets it. it. Stays, yep. No quit out of Noah Bamford. And he clears it. Nice work. Yeah. He has enough time for this last obstacle. Oh. oh. Slips out. Go run, hit the buzzer. Nice work, Noah. He really stayed in it, even with that early fall, he still just made sure he's going with it. <laughs> Bull is Absolutely allowed in that no way, so he was uh, able to that use that. Line. Look at that he gets flying. Through. He gets the and then saves it, right? it stays on, and he gets it. it. Stays grab. Nice work. Of course, and then next up we're on to, I believe, Dante Baboni? Uh, who is about to? Who is on the starting line right now? Yep, Dante out of Empire Ninja. Yep, shout out to Empire Ninja. Uh, so many of our athletes are from the New England region. Let's see how Dante will be able to uh, handle the full course. He's looking ready, and he's off. Absolutely no waste of time on to uh, our second obstacle, Hold Swing. Making quick work of it. We just saw Noah Bamford uh, miss the dismount, but Dante gets it. Uh, he's slipping off of the cliffhangers. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, it and is. Cliffhangers are such a, such a tough obstacle. You don't know just how thin they are until you've tried it for the first time. Absolutely. He's gonna keep moving. And absolutely. Um, slides off of the slack la slack lines, but we are now on to an obstacle that has proven to be a crux point for our athletes so far. So, shout outs to uh, this obstacle right here, obstacle five. Um, crux point. And shout out to Nick Gordon for uh, des for designing this course. Hanging on for dear life on that pump on that pumpkin hold, but obviously your grip isn't gonna have nearly as much wiggle room on that. But now on to the fidget spinner. Doing a, a little bit of a sideways swing over here. Yeah, kinda like a wing nut. Oh just Whoa! Looks yeah, like you just peeled off right there. Yeah, it kind of because it's on strap, so it's not predictable like a straight line like a bearing, so Kind of in a little sideways there, but now he's moving on to the ring toss. Yep. Building up a lot of momentum right here. And looks like he'll have about 30 seconds as he attempts this final obstacle, the kaleidoscope, which uh, no one has beaten just yet. Um, Dante with a great run as like how he did in the full in the flow course um definitely uh kept fighting uh no matter what obstacles were thrown in his way yep and he's gonna uh he's definitely gonna have more fun later today on the skills Next absolutely up we got nolan out of axios yes and uh nolan um if you remember from the flow course, uh, he tried to, he basically beta break the cliffhanger and was going to make the dismount, but peeled right off. Let's see how he'll do right here on the full course, making absolutely quick work of all of these obstacles. Oh, he slides right off. That's okay, because he's got plenty of more obstacles to go. Yep, just regroup and keep moving on through. Getting those pull-ups up, up to that round one. It should be a bit of a rest of the grip for that one. And then into the downward section. And he's going to yeah. have to make that tricky sideways jump over to that blue box. His, uh, the, his, he's got to really focus on body control right here because his swing is going all over the place and he just decides to drop trying to get uh save a little bit of time for the remaining obstacles to get points on going on the slack line right now balancing looks like it looks like it cut out right there yeah but... one of our one of our cameras um we're getting that sorted out, so thanks for being patient with us. And Absolutely. Now he's eyeing up, getting some chalk, getting ready for the toughest obstacle. Skips a ring. So far for these athletes. This and the kaleidoscope have been very, have been zero for zero. Oh, he tries to static it. That was a good idea there, but that slipped mm -hmm. off. But now time for the Widget spinner. Oh, that that's an oh he decides to static it. Good reach there, nice wingspan. He uses it Absolutely. to his advantage. It makes the dismount. Now he has three seconds left, but if he can get this ring toss, that would help him a lot with the points. Go for a big reach here. Gets it. Gets just it. one more, and then right to the dismount. He now, if he, a, if he wants to get points on the kaleidoscope, he's got to go. Oh, yeah, he just slipped off there, but the run to the buzzer. Absolutely. Great run by Nolan. Um, Definitely trying to beta break some of these obstacles, so I hope the other athletes have been paying attention. Um, 
great run out of Nolan. Um, he's got a really bright future in the sport. Um, has a lot of skills and a lot of talent, and I I hope to see more of him uh, throughout uh, later down the line. Up next we have Shea Goldstein. Uh, Shea qualified through the Empire Ninja Tier 2 Regional Championship out of New England. Uh, another one of our New England competitor uh, athletes. And is off um, onto the hold swing right here. Makes a nice transfer to the ring. Keeps on going and sticks it. Now, now we have the cliffhanger. He's out of, I believe he's out of Ninja Mania. Looking at that jersey. Yep. Definitely uh, making way through the cliffhanger. Uh, making a lot of progress on the obstacle. Let's see how he'll be able to handle the dismount. Cause that that's a that's a pretty tough dismount. Oh, uh, it doesn't look like he got it, but still a great effort on that obstacle. Now he's onto these uh, slack lines, and he gets it. A lot of our athletes have been struggling on that particular obstacle. But Shay was one of the few that cleared it. Oh, he tried to stack over to the pumpkin hold, but drops. Now he's on to the fidget spinners. Oh, he's moving on through. Oh, good. Oh! Good commitment. Yeah. That mu But, however, he's going sideways right now. He's in no man's land. But... Looks like he got um, his momentum back going forward. And he's got the dismount. And gets it. Great. Great save by Shea right here. Shea Goldstein. Moving on to uh, the ring tech. That's and... that one, but he's going to keep moving. See if he can be the first one to beat this kaleidoscope. And obviously this uh, move to the cliffhanger, very, very tough. Doesn't doesn't quite get it, but excellent run out of Shea. For sure. And let's take a look at our current leaderboard. That puts him in fifth so far. Noah Bamford is in first. Right. Oh, um, look. Looks like uh, Shane Martin's run is currently under review. So that is definitely going to be something to keep an eye on. But our next runner right now is uh, Liam LaRue. And he is off and running. Pops right up into the rings. Just moving on through. Making short work of it. And excellent dismount right there. Um, we have Coach Lulu uh, coaching his athlete on. Shout out to Coach Lulu. And definitely uh, proven to be an amazing coach right here because Liam is making short work of this cliffhanger. And he's just got the dismount and gets it. We've seen a lot of our more recent athletes struggle on the cliffhanger, so that'll be something to keep in mind for Liam. And now onto our slack lines. S sizing them up. Gets it. Makes it to the second one. And he's got it. Amazing job by Liam right here. Look at and that now he is big jump up. That big reach. He's an all absolutely. That reach. Oh, but now he's spinning around. But now, but notice how when he goes to the backside, it kind of tilts downward, just the way the weight works. So that helped them. And now he gets it right side. Oh. Now, will he be the first to beat this Lachey? He's got oh, it. Oh, he's got it. Great Liam work. LaRue, Great the work first out of Liam. Clear that obstacle. And now, moving on. These fidget spinners pulls right through into it. 
Liam Liam LaRue is putting up an amazing run right here. He has a now good amount. To, he has a good amount of time left. <laughs> yeah, so he's got he's like like Bill says he's got plenty of time. So we, could we see a full clear right here? If he's just got to he's going hopping right up into this cliffhanger ledge. He gets Come it. Come on, Liam. He's got the first. He's got the first one. The last jump of the course. Oh. oh no! So close, but what a run! He was looking smooth and quick. He's disappointed, but he should be proud. That was a really nice. Will he be run. the first to beat this Look at that. Absolutely. He's got he's it. Oh, he's that got it. Jump that's been stumping everyone so far. And if we take Absol we take a look at our leaderboard, yep, that puts him in first place so far by a decent yes. margin. Yeah, Leo Maru, uh puts puts up a run right there, like an amazing run. Like we'll see if uh, our next runner, Cole Jackson, can uh, match Liam's performance right there. Liam Larue with a again a fantastic run. Um, then we have Elijah Bamford, uh, Noah Bamford's brother, Real Rico Tamez. And many more along the way. But first, we have Cole Jackson. I'm sure a lot of the Cole. athletes that are coming up will have watched Liam's run because he put on such a great performance. Just I, I, if there was one thing, it might have helped him to get that chalk. But he was. It was the end of the end of the course, so he was probably a little gassed. He was running low on time, but still great effort. So now Cole. Absolutely. And Cole is on making through. quick work of these obstacles right here. For those of you who are just tuning in, uh, welcome to the Tier 2 World Ninja League Championships. This is the preteen male division. Uh, I am Evan Mel, and I am joined by Philip Scott. And we are live at Austin Ninjas in Texas. So, shout outs to Austin Ninjas. Yep. Austin Ninjas are host of this event for the second year in a row, but on a great, great event. And as now we see Cole Jackson's taking on this course, this is our second of our two courses out of four total events for these athletes. And he makes the slack lines no problem. Now he's moving on through. Now this has been... If you're just joining us, this has been the toughest part of the course so far. These twisty, spinning, oh, he slides off. <laughs> yeah, these spinning bearings, the spinny bearing holds have been the toughest part of the course so far. Only one athlete, I believe, has gotten through so far. Yep, and, and that was our previous runner, Liam Larue. Yes, now it Cole. was. But now he's making this dismount. He's got it. Excellent dismount there by Cole. Um, Cole is out of the New England division, another one of our New England uh, athletes here today. Uh, qualified out of Empire Ninja. Now let's see how he'll handle the Flyoscope. Uh, doesn't make the transfer, but he'll hit the buzzer anyways. Uh, great run by Cole. And definitely the highlight was on the Funky Fidget Spinners, that little grab uh, with the static. And just recovering his technique, just recovering his momentum to make it all the way to the dismount. So up next, we have Elijah Bamford. Um, his brother, Noah, ran the course uh, a few runners ago. And let's see how Elijah will be able to do. Uh, also coached by Coach Lulu. Uh, big shout outs to Coach Lulu. Um, we all love Coach Lulu here. And Elijah is off. Starting with the little quad steps. Now onto the holds. Making quick work of those. And nails a dismount. Uh, cliffhangers. Uh, shout outs to the cliffhanger. Uh, being an absolute staple of any ninja competition. And shout outs to Nick Forney and the rest of the Austin Ninjas team for uh, 
course designer for course designing and of course hosting this amazing competition. Oh, and whoa! He saves what it. What a save right saves there. Saves it. Ref calls it safe. He's rushing oh. through. Oh, he's yeah. He, that's a feed only obstacle. So, yeah, once yeah. he touched, he knew that it was done. But now he's moving on through, speeding through. Oh, just misses that pop, but he moves. He's hurrying on through, knowing that speed is also a factor in your points. So, he's going to keep moving. Let's see how he'll be able to handle the fidget spinner and gets it, but yeah, if you get it's it, going yeah. in every direction right here. Yeah, it this thing it's the gyro. It, it's um, I believe it's swinging off of the uh, EGS's. Uh, ooh, I think he might have twisted his ankle a little bit, but he's gonna keep moving. Yep. No quit in Elijah Bamford. Just like his brother. Absolutely no quit. I've been now... Making quick work. Even with an injured ankle. Yep, I think he might have just... I think he just uh, kind of twisted a little bit on the mat, but he's going to keep moving. Oh, oh, he reset. He reset. Yep, he's he good. Reset. And make the list. Oh, just slips. Oh, he he's going to go for that shake. button. Nice and effort. Yeah, absolutely. I think... Yeah, I hope Elijah's okay, uh, because that looked like a nasty fall on the fidget spinners. Yeah, I think he might have just tweaked his ankle a little bit. That does happen from time to time. <laughs> it's happened to me before. Um, it, hopefully he's all right. Um, but nice run. Yep. Um, next up we have Rico Tomez. Uh, Rico is. Out another of... one of our one of our other Texas ninjas. He's out of Move Sport, which is not too far from here. He put up a very good run on the um slow course. And let's see how he'll be able to handle the full course. Definitely making quick work so far. It's called and the, the dismount. It's called the full course because Every obstacle is scored, unlike the slow course, which is just keep going until um, your first fall is where your run stops. But in full course, it is the full course. So every how long you take on each obstacle and if you beat it or don't beat it matters, and how and it also factors in what how the other athletes did too. So points always change, but pretty much long story short, do the best you can. And keep uh, on moving through. Rico falls on the slack lines. However, he doesn't look phased at all as he moves on to this crux point right here. Yeah, good static Only Liam Wimaru was be able to... And he nails a lache. He's got to get that other hand around a little bit. There he goes. Readjust so he gets a Let's little Let's see how he'll be able to handle this. Going a little bit sideways in his swing, but looks oh, like he gets it, and he gets it. Second Rico today. Rico Tomez, the yes, uh, joining Liam Larue uh, in beating that obstacle. A great now we'll see fight. how he handle the funky fidget spinners. Um, that first that first fidget spinner uh, has the bungee cord, so you can't get as much swing. The second one right here. Uh, on a little bit of a weight balance, uh, which also can get a little bit off center. Uh, but now we move on to a little bit more of a simpler obstacle. Um, we have the we have this ring tech right here. Yep, this ring. is the first. Oh, he's he's trying to recover. Yep, he's hanging got... on by one hand. There he goes. There he goes. Nice fight. Big swing there. He just needs to get this one. He has. He still has the time, but he has to go right away. Ten seconds. He pops right into it. Oh, just slips. Oh, he slides right off. Ooh, nice work. Good slide. Uh, Absolutely. Let's, let's take a look at the leaderboard. So that puts him in second place. Absolutely. And uh, Shane Martin's run is still under review right now. Uh, definitely something to keep an eye on. 
Um, but up next, we should have Logan Kowalczyk. Um, yeah, Logan. Logan of Rise. Logan got first in our flow course. He was the farthest fastest. He was the fastest to get to that last UFO obstacle that uh, that most of our athletes had a had difficulty with. But let's see if he can get through this one. He was really calm and smooth through that flow course, so that should suit him well on this full course. Absolutely. Like, calm and collected is the name of the game when it comes to Logan right here. And absolutely awesome tech right here on the cliffhanger. Line up that and dismount. now he's just got that dismount. No problem. And he gets it. Doesn't even need the pull. And he's now he's eyeing up the slack line. And it's makes it through the second slack line. There he goes. And now he's got uh, this crux point. We only Liam LaRue and our previous runner um May it through this op may it through this obstacle right here. Oh, oh, looks like he tried the monkey bar it. Yeah, just slipped it, but it's all right. It's gonna keep moving. This course uh, has been tough. Turns down the chalk. Ooh, good Whoa! save there. And nails the dismount. Over Logan a minute Paul left. Stack. Yeah, absolutely. Good Everyone idea. Everyone in the gym is watching him. This coach from Rise in Houston. Yep, and now it looks like he's <laughs> about to begin. Yep. There he goes. Uh, apologies for the technical difficulties. Looking a bit stuck on that. There we are. Yeah. And now he he's goes. going to make it through. Now, will Logan be the first one through this kaleidoscope? Wow, he links it right into uh, the cliff. Oh, but he slides right off. Still a great run by Logan Polisek. Um, definitely a lot of nice saves, uh, especially on the fidget spinners. And as we move on to our next athlete, our next athlete is Ian Stewart. Ian is qualified through the regional competitions through I believe out of the, uh, once again another New England ninja. Uh, I, looks like we're experiencing some more technical difficulties, um, don't know how his run is turning out right now, um, but for those of you who are just tuning in, uh, welcome to the Tier 2 World Ninja League Championships, uh, over in Austin Ninjas. Uh, I am Evan Mel, and I am joined by Philip Scott. Yeah, we were. Um, we will be right back really quick. Uh, just getting the video restarted. Apologies. Yep. And we are back. Let me just pull this up. Yep, and as you there can see, are. apologies Looks for that. Like he, Ian's looking very good here. He's got. He's got the Team Reality, Lucas Reality shirt on. Lucas Shout just, out to Lucas Reality. He just opened up a new gym. And here he goes. Moving on through. Whoa. That, that was a little close there on the dismount, but Ian does not look phased at all. Going through uh, the ring tech as efficiently as possible. And he's got 40 seconds left onto the kaleidoscope. Goes right into it. Makes that uh, lache to the cliffhanger. Now he's got a special Can he get delivery. this bar? Oh, that's the closest oh, we've seen so close. far. 
that was just close. Slams oh, yeah. that buzzer. He should be proud though. That was a that was a very nice effort there. Yes, and it looks like um when the, the stream uh came back into play, it looked like he cleared that crux point at the fifth obstacle spot. Yeah, that was really nice. Let's just take it a really quick before Nathan's run, let's take a quick look. And that put him in third, so that was a very nice run there. Next up, we have Nathan Nago, coached by Coach Lulu. Uh, also, big shout outs to Coach Lulu uh, once again, making Nathan making quick work of this course so far. Onto the cliffhanger, moving at a pretty efficient pace. Now he's just got to get this dismount, and he gets it. Now he's moving on through, nice and quick through the bounce. Very good technique. Nathan Lowe moving on through, up into the spinny. First is the spinny box. Oh, oh. Yes. Try the lache to it. Oh, no. Oh. Peels right off. Yeah, he, of jumped, the... he jumped to the far side, which makes it kind of tough. But... Yeah. He's going to keep moving. That's a hard fall, too. I hope he's okay. It, but he looks okay as yeah, he is just doing shook it up. Yep, shook it off. And we got those mats there. So moving on through. But now, the nice thing is he has plenty of time to try to figure out this kaleidoscope. He chalks up. Looks like can he nail the lache. Oh, he almost got it, but just peels off with his left hand but nathan to go uh put up a really good run too um definitely had some hard fails uh looks like he's okay and i'm excited to see what he has uh in the future when it comes to ninja and of course coach lulu has to be so proud of him for sure we're getting into our last few athletes of the preteen males the first wave, um, I should say, and we got, uh, then after this we'll have another group, uh, start with the flow, but we got Stephen Mall out of Dexterity Depot. Shout outs to Dexterity Depot, uh, shout outs to Tim Dexter, who is his coach, and shout outs to, uh, another Dexterity Depot athlete, Matt Bradley. One of the uh, premier names in the sport of Ninja. But Stephen Mole right now is making quick work of this course. Nailing the cliffhanger. Obviously cliffhangers and Matt Bradley go hand in hand. But now Stephen slides right off of the slack line. But he's still making really good time on this course. So he's got plenty of time staticking his way through the pumpkin. Now let's see how we'll be able to handle the spinning UFO. We saw a lot of our athletes struggle with this earlier. Well, Steven is going a little bit side to side, decides to drop. Uh, going into our funky fidget spinners. Uh, definitely a tricky obstacle. Oh, he barely misses the lache with his right hand. But now going onto the ring tech. Uh, moving through, oh, misses that, but he recovers, doesn't look phased. Oh, can you get it? Uh, uh he, he, he decides to drop, but now he has about 55 seconds left to get through the kaleidoscope. Let's see how he'll be able to handle this tricky obstacle. Nails the first lache. Let's see how it, oh, and he slides right off. But Stephen Mall, uh, great run by him, at, at just like in the full uh, flow course. Uh, but the highlight for me was definitely on the cliffhanger. Like, very, very smooth there. Um, obviously, Dexterity Depot ninjas are very good at cliffhangers, thanks to Matt Bradley. But still, absolutely incredible. But now we have Lucas Pine. Lucas... 
comes out of Urban Playground. Uh, Northeast Division. It looks like with his uh, Urban Playground shirt that's in Pennsylvania. And he qualified in the Northeast uh, Region where uh, he qualified through Brooklyn Ninja Academy. So shout out to Brooklyn Ninja Academy and shout out to Urban Playground. And he is off and running. Making nice work of these holds. Got uh, Series 1 shoes on. Shout out to Series 1. And now we're on to the cliffhanger. We just saw Stephen Maul uh, have great technique on this obstacle. Let's see if Lucas can uh, match that. But he's making his way through. Stretches up to that top cliffhanger. And now on the way down. And now makes it to the end, but let's see if he can nail that dismount. And he gets it. Oh, no! Oh, just... Looks like he got it initially, but then yes. slides right off. Here he goes now for the slack line. Gets the slack line. Now on to our crux point of the course, along with the Kaleisko. Leap doesn't even bother with the ring, and he's looking a little bit spin definitely spinning around right here. But manages to recover to the pumpkin, but slides right off. Now we have our funky fidget spinners looking to reset, building up a lot of swing. Let's see if he can get this Lachey. And looks like he just didn't have the momentum. But now we have our ring tech right here. Struggling to get that ring out. But he gets it. Oh, I just and slipped drop. Back. Yeah. Luke, Lucas Pine definitely... Continuing to fight on this course. Definitely a hard course. Uh, Lucas should be very, very proud of himself. Uh, definitely fought his way through this course. Uh, throughout the first few obstacles. And even on the later obstacles. Even though he didn't even though he didn't clear them, still took away a lot to learn. And now we move on to Brandon Ronaldez. Now, if you remember from the flow course, Brandon uh, was the only person to complete those uh, UFOs. However, he fell earlier in the flow course, so his so unfortunately that didn't count. But still, definitely gets a feel for a lot of these obstacles. Coached by Abel Gonzalez, shout outs to Abel Gonzalez, and wearing the Abel Gonzalez shirt. Uh, we are all Abel. Looks like we're getting ready to begin very, very shortly. Looks like they're adjusting a few things. I think Abel Gonzalez is asking a few questions about the course, making sure uh, what's in play and what's not. Uh, for those of you who are just tuning in, welcome to the Tier 2 World Ninja League Championships. I am Evan Mel, and I am joined by Philip Scott over here at Austin Ninjas in Austin, Texas. So shout-outs to Austin Ninjas, and shout-outs to Nick Fortney and the Austin team for designing these challenging courses. Yeah, for sure. This, uh, this whole course has been tough, but these athletes have put on some strong performances. These, um, these full course obstacles have been... Uh, like I said, pretty tough, and uh, nobody's gotten through the last one yet. We'll see if any of our last four athletes in this wave can get through it. As now we're moving on to Brandon's run. And he's off. Now we have the holds right here. Having excellent momentum shifting as he dismounts. 
onto the cliffhanger. Obviously, a very iconic obstacle in the world of Ninja. And look at that, making short work of it. Now let's see how he handled the dismount. This dismount has been deceptively tricky, but looks like Brandon gets it. Now we have the slack line, another very deceptively tricky obstacle. But well, looks like Brandon's gonna get through it just fine. Brandon Bernaldez uh, onto our big crux point earlier in the course. Gets, gets it all the way to the pump gate. It gets to try another UFO here. Gets it now. Going for that Lache, no problem. Make an excellent work of this entire course. And gets the Lache easily. It's got plenty of time. He's going to dismount with about a minute left, uh, with only two obstacles left on this full course. Oh, look at that momentum right there. So smooth and so efficient. Yeah, he's Lastly, looking very calm and collected here, but he has to hops right into this cliffhanger. Now for the bar, can he make it? Oh, he just oh, he slipped. slipped. What a run from Brandon. That Absolutely. Will, that will put him in first place. Absolutely. Just ahead of Liam. Yep, uh, Liam Willeroo is the only other athlete uh, so far to have completed uh, seven obstacles. Seven out of the eight obstacles on this full course. And we only have a few runners left. Uh, first we have Cameron... And we have Big Kyle, nuts. and then Luke are our last three. Yes. So Cameron is looking to get started here. I believe Cameron is from the New England region, like many of our athletes here today. Uh, yes, uh, the New England division. New, I'm sorry, the New England region. And now he's on to the cliffhangers. Making quick work of them, too. Now on to the descending part of this cliffhanger period, uh, pyramid. And has to make the dismount right here, which has been pretty tricky. We have seen a lot of our athletes uh, fall right here. Building up some swing. Oh, oh he... Doesn't look like he got it, but now we have the slack line. Um, this has also been a deceptively tricky obstacle. Oh, he got it! Makes a leap for the platform and gets it. Crosses the plane, and now we're on to our crux point. He is staticking his way through it, showing off insane grip strength. But now he's just spinning around on that UFO. He's going to have to fix his hand placement, or is he going to try and do like a sideways lache? Let's see, he's, he needs to get that hand wrapped around a little more. But he got himself centered, so he could go for it right here. He gets and it. he gets it! Great fight. Absolutely. And that's definitely going to help him on the leaderboard as well, because that has been a crux point for all of our athletes here today. Now the fidget spinners. Nails the dismount. Looking to reset. He's only got about 15 seconds left. He can get this. This point would be big if he can just get this off. Seven seconds. Just go right to this. There he goes. Now just go for it. Oh. Tries goes to link it, but doesn't get the grab. But Cameron puts up a great run right here, and the highlight for me was definitely fixing his momentum on the crux point obstacle. That little UFO. 
and was able to save it with that insane lache. So great work, Cameron. You should be very proud. For Next, sure. we have Kyle Becker. We have two runners left. And one of them is right here, Kyle Becker. Making quick work of the course so far. Kyle is uh, out of the New England, the New England region, like many, like many of our athletes here today. Looks, looks like he recovers. Uh, struggling a little bit on that, uh, on those holds, but now he's making up for lost time on the cliffhanger, going through very efficiently. Just has the dismount right here. Very looks smooth. Like, yeah, looks like our athletes are uh, starting to really get that dismount now. Um, definitely been a struggle for some of our earlier athletes. Same with uh, this obstacle right here, the slack line. But gets through it. Oh, looks to reset. And onto that little pumpkin hold. His hands are not centered on He's it, but looks it. looks makes those a little shay right here. Oh, he tried going for the right for the oh. disc now. Uh, hopefully Luke the Sousa uh, paid attention to that because we'll see if he could try that on this on that on that obstacle right there because that little shay has been very very tough. Off of the plane on the dismount. Now on to our ring tech. Let's move on through these rings. That's about 30 seconds left to do the kaleidoscope. Ch taking some time to chalk up. Now, none of our athletes have gotten through this obstacle yet. We'll see if Kyle can be the first. Yes, slipped. But still a great run by Kyle Becker. Um, I really like how he tried to skip that lache on that on the crux point obstacle. Uh, kind of do a little bit of bay breaking. But finally, we are on our final runner, and this is Luke the Sousa. Luke the Sousa, if you remember from the flow course had an amazing save on the aerial barrel. So we'll see if uh, he'll have any amazing saves here on the full course. So let's see how he'll be able to handle it. But looks like he's ready to go um, for our final runner. I just want to shout out Austin Ninjas in Austin, Texas once again for hosting this amazing event along with Nick Fortney and the Austin Ninja team, team for... Once again, designing the course and really going all out this weekend. For sure. And this course is I mean, very well designed. Absolutely. And it looks like Luke is ready to roll. Making quick work of these first few obstacles right here. Moving on through to the cliffhanger. Making making really good work of it. Um that's like what one of our that's one of the obstacles that oh you need dismounts right there. The uh cliffhanger has definitely been beaten by a lot of our later athletes as opposed to our athletes that ran early earlier on. But now we are on to the crux point, and Luke the Sousa staticking his way through the through the entire obstacle right here. But it looks like he might try to lache right here, and there he gets he it. Oh, nice little and pop there. Absolutely. And now he's got plenty of time left for these final three obstacles, including these fidget spinners. Uh... Designed by DGS, shout outs to DGS. <laughs> and makes the dismount. 
We just got a few holds left here. Trying to he has plenty of time, so it makes sense to yeah, just regroup and go back. Reach up, there he goes. One more, and then he'll have 50 seconds left to take on the glass obstacle. Into it. Nails it. Now, no oh, one gonna... has clear. Oh, he has the goal! Oh, no! So close. Oh, what a run, though. Absolutely. Oh, he just. Healed. I, I legit. I actually thought he was going to get that right final here. special. Hey, there he gets it. Right there. He looks oh, nice so with a pop there. Absolutely. Uh, Luke D'Souza was a great run to end off this wave of preteen nails. That put him in third place. Yep. And we we have a lot of really really solid comp uh, athletes here still to come. Uh, Definitely want to keep your eyes out. Um, we have another wave of our preteen male athletes coming up very, very soon. Thanks for tuning uh, in. Uh, we will be back in a few minutes. But until I uh, be sure to check out the schedule for today. I will catch it right here. There we go. Yep, be back in a few. Thanks so much for tuning in, everyone.
Hello everybody and welcome back to the Tier 2 World Ninja League Championships. I'm Philip Scott alongside Evan Mel. And Evan, we've seen some very good runs so far. It's been a tough course, tough two courses. Nobody's gotten a full clear on either yet. Do you think anybody can do it in the second half of today? I absolutely think there is. Uh, we still got a lot of talent uh, coming up in our second wave of our pre-team males. Uh, they've seen uh, the first wave take on both courses and felt developed some strategies. Maybe are going to start taking advantage of some beta breaks and we'll see how uh, the rest of the competition goes for our pre-team males. For sure. And... Yeah, if you if we want to look at our format just very briefly, all athletes compete in four events, two courses, flow and full, and two skills, tech and dash, and all those events combined, your placements in each of those uh, combined for your best, whatever your each placement adds up. So first, 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 second would be a three ones and a two would be a five lowest number wins then we also have medals for each individual event uh, so each one of the courses and each one of the skills and then also of course uh, overall category so both courses combined results from that and both skills combined from that so lots of medals to go around today and uh, lots of strong athletes absolutely and shout out to Austin Ninjas in Austin Texas for hosting this amazing event and shout out to course designers uh nick fordney and the rest of the austin ninjas team as uh we look to get underway fairly fairly shortly um something that uh i have noticed throughout the entire competition is we have a lot of new england region uh athletes showing up uh here at austin ninjas today which Traveling, traveling that far um, for a competition is can definitely be pretty hardcore sometimes. But uh, they're doing a great job right now, and I look forward to seeing how some of the rest of our athletes uh, take on the course. Of course, and this is tier two is the stepping stone to bigger things in ninja. This is tier two is athletes' first steps into ninja, and this is. Kind of their first taste of major competitions um, throughout the season they've competed in local qualifiers then went to a reg regional competitions and now they're here in austin texas for the world ninja league year two championships and so this like i said for a lot of these athletes it is their first taste at some very uh very nerve-wracking moments, but also some very rewarding moments, too. It is it is very... It, it, you can't have... Even the best of the best. I saw Daniel Gill. Uh, he's here uh, doing meet and greets, so if you're in the area, come stop by. But, of course, the ninja legend Daniel Gill. I'm sure he and everybody that has ever stepped foot on Ninja Course, no matter how good, can say they get nervous every time. <laughs> so, it's... It's just a little taste, and everybody's in it together, and the community's, uh, and the community's so supportive, and it'll it'll just be a great experience for all these athletes to get their first, you know, first kind of experience with this kind of event. And I don't think it's just for the athletes either. Like I feel like the coaches uh, get nervous for their athletes, and oh yeah. Absolutely, it's very rewarding when you see one of your athletes do well. We've seen a ton of coaches uh, running alongside their athletes today. Um, some of the big standouts include Coach Lulu. Uh, big shout-outs to Coach Lulu. And, of course, Abel Gonzalez. Uh, big shout-outs to him as well. Along with all the other coaches that have flown in or drove long hours to get uh, to Austin Ninjas here today. We're just getting things uh, ready to go. You can see uh, our first athletes on the blocks. 
Yep, uh, our first athlete today uh, is Joey Bank. So Joey uh, first made his first qualified through Worlds at the Brooklyn Ninja Academy in the Northeast region. So shout out to Brooklyn Ninja Academy. Um, definitely like with the uh, New England of uh, region back uh, in our first wave. Uh, definitely not easy to travel uh, that sort of distance to compete uh, in a competition like this. For sure, and, but uh, they're making the most of it. I, I've seen athletes from all over have been putting on some very strong performances. So once you get on the course and you're warmed up, it's a little easier. But definitely the traveling and stuff like that, and the whole, you know, anticipation of competing does. But that it does make you a little nervous. But like I said, that's just experience, and these athletes are definitely going to get some experience today. For sure. Uh, truer words have not been said, Phil. But um, we are getting ready to go underway. Um, for those of you who have not seen the first wave of the preteen male, uh, males, we are currently on the flow course. So the flow course, uh, if you fail an obstacle, uh, your run ends. However, uh, you'll, what you'll see very often is the athletes uh, try the other obstacles in the course as well to not only keep their blood flowing, uh, maybe gain a little bit of confidence back after the fall, or um, or to like really get a feel for some of these obstacles. Um, something uh, regarding ninja, uh, different ninja gyms, is each two obstacles are like the same obstacle in a different gym is a completely different obstacle. Like, um, for, I'll use myself as an example. Um, I am a grips ninja, uh, over in Southfield, Michigan. Uh, our slack line is different from the Movement Lab Ohio slack line, and it's probably different from the one here at Austin Ninjas. That's just one example. Like, every single obstacle is different at every, uh, ninja gym here. So uh, definitely getting a feel for those obstacles as well could lend you better to uh, your later runs on the course, whether it be on the flow course, full course, or any of our two skills. Looking to still get underway here. Um, while we're still waiting, let's take a look at what the results are so far for the preteen males before we head into the second half of the division. So of course they've done two courses, and so the first one is the flow course, which is a little quicker. That's the one we'll be seeing coming up here in just a little bit. And leaderboards look like this. Um, nobody has completed it so far fully, but we've had six runs get to the last obstacle. Uh, Logan. Uh, Logan's uh, been uh, in the lead and with 24 seconds over the next place. Um, yeah, he was looking really smooth there. Lots of really close runs. Um, yeah, everybody looking pretty strong there. And yeah, that last obstacle is just you got to drop down from the Delve Steps to the UFOs, and that's been uh, it's been catching some people off. Um, but that's the thing, it's the championships, you know, so there are going to be those crux points, as we call them, those tough, tough sections. And, uh, yeah, as we go into, let's check our full course leaderboard, that is the longer one. Luke D'Souza, Fran Bernaldez, and Liam LaRue all beat the first seven of eight obstacles, and so they are in the first, second, and third places. Uh, full course counts every obstacle you do and how fast you do them, and we have the leaderboard. Or we have the run order up, I should say. As you can see, we got Joey Bank up first, and you can see we have quite a few athletes. It's not just eleven; we're it's gonna keep on showing the more most recent up to bat runners. And uh, but yeah, Joey's up first for our second wave, and we'll see how he does. It'll be very interesting to see also how the full. Not just the flow, but the full leaderboard. How that will uh, play out as more athletes run, because 
the score is affected by how other athletes do too, like how difficult an obstacle is, how fast they get through. Um, all those points are calculated, and so this is long. Long story short, just do your best, and uh, and then the score will be, you know, whatever reflects your run, how your run was. Um, but yeah, it'll be very interesting to see if any of our top finishers from the first half of the division, how they will uh, hang on uh, when we get into these this second half. Absolutely, Phil, and keep and neither of these courses are easy. Like as Phil said, we have incredible crux points at, at on both courses. Um, the UFOs on the flow course, uh, which no one was able to take down, and on the full course, we have um, a lot of different holds, a lot of spinning holds, um, including like a UFO. And then, of course, there's the kaleidoscope at the end of the full course, uh, which no one was able to beat. Yeah, that kale that kaleidoscope was a uh, was a tricky one. Um, we saw a couple athletes just touch the uh, the first uh, just touch the first um, of the that bar. I mean, touch that bar that you have to catch. It's like this narrow bar. Um, but we've got uh, our first runner up here, Joey. He's excited. He's ready to roll. He's out of Grit Ninja. Uh, as we've mentioned, Grit Ninja's brought a has brought a lot of athletes into this sport. You see, uh, Coach Henry, his very distinctive voice and beard, um, and he's going to be coaching Joey through this course. He's getting ready to roll. Yep. Uh, he he's got he's got a smile on his face. He's ready to go, and obviously the most important part of Ninja is just having fun. You can, if you're not having fun, you're doing something wrong. But obviously, all all of these athletes are looking to have very very fun times here. As we begin, Joey Bank on the starting line. Uh, we have a lot of athletes watching. Um, Joey Bank getting ready to go. Uh, Coach Henry Coach, uh, giving them some rundown on the course. And of course, uh, mentally preparing his athlete as well. So sh big shout out to Coach Henry right there over at Grit Ninja. So it looks like we will be underway fairly soon. Yep, we are switching from unknown athlete <laughs> to Joey Bank. Um, I just saw the run order um, pop up. There we go. As you can see, Joey Bank is first up. I saw he's getting some advice from some of his teammates. Always great. Team, team, that's, that's the nice thing about teams. You know, even though Ninja is can be, you know, an individual sport, your teammates are always there to support you. Even... Even uh, athletes from other teams also are always there to support as well. And that's very important for, you know, when you're just starting out in Tier 2, you know? Absolutely. There is his name, Joey Bank. We're getting ready to roll. There's the referee. Ref telling him to scooch out of the way, give him some room to... Do the steps. Yeah, do the course. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Minute 30 time limit. This is a quick course. But it does slow down a little bit at the end. Um, first half of the stage, we've seen most athletes get through in about 30 seconds, but then the second half is a little bit, uh, a, a lot, a little bit more upper body intensive and core intensive, so... Just got to be efficient and smooth through this whole run. And this is a flow course, so that means your run is... And the score is uh, stopped once you get your first fall, but you can keep going. Get some... Back up some obstacle experience. Absolutely. Uh, uh, skips that last hold on the second obstacle right there. And yep. making way through all the balance very, very nicely. 
Very nice. Then hopping right up onto. Now this obstacle was a abs was a massive highlight from the first yes. wave, especially Luke D'Souza's save on it, hanging onto uh, one of those support straps for dear life. But we see Joey Banks building up a lot of momentum right here He's and gets it. to the ring. Onto the cliffhangers. Um, he is not going to try and dismount from uh, that little cliffhanger ledge. And you can use that little support. Uh, the ops not to. Oh, just touches uh, down. Back yeah. foot there. Yeah, that's a kind of tricky dismount. It's diagonal and sort of back landing onto that mat and so now he's just gonna uh this last obstacle here a try going from the third to highest uh didn't quite get the distance but still nice run great from run joey. by joey bank i really liked his momentum shifting on uh the holds on, in the middle of the spire walk and he didn't even bother using uh, that last hold right there. So up next, we have Landon Wright. Landon is from the Midwest uh, Midwest region, uh, qualified through uh, MLab Ohio. So big shout-outs to MLab Ohio. He, He's wearing uh, a Ninja Ninja, ninja, uh, ninja gym, Nation shirt. Gym Nation. That's a gym out in. Uh, it's a gym out in Ohio, so you can see his teammates also there. Yeah, Gym Nation is one of our Midwest gyms that has hosted tier teams. Yep, and we are off. Building up some swing onto this ring. Decides to use the spire wall to help get him, help get his uh, feet up there. Yeah. Though he is spinning around right now. You can reset if you want. There he goes. Just keep that momentum going. Big lesson to learn here is obviously not to rush it. Don't don't struggle too much. Just regroup. A lesson. Absolutely. Lesson that you learn when you're starting out, but he's he's fighting on. Absolutely, no quit in landing right. Still well, he's got the momentum here. There he there. goes. Now he's got the grab. And swinging sideways, Still taking but a lot of get this here. There he goes. He gets gets it to the next uh, ring. See if he can get to the end of this. Got one more hold to go. And he's got it. He got it. Great fight out of Landon. Absolutely. Now he heads onto the balance beams. Oh, time just expires, but what a fight. Great effort yeah. out of Landon. Absolutely. Nice job. No quit in Landon Wright, uh, especially on the, that first ring. Now let's take a look and at some of our next runners. Uh, Samuel Moreland is up next. So Sam is from... Again, uh, the Midwest region. So, two Midwest ninjas in a row. So, we'll we'll see how... Um, we just saw Landon Wright. Uh, let's see how Sam will uh, be able to take on this course. Another one of his teammates. Ow. Ref's telling him, asked him some questions. Now he's good, ready to roll. Uh, 
And he is starting off. Gets that grab. Sam Moreland going through with absolute ease. Oh, he's hanging out by one hand. But he gets that hold. See if he's going to go for the dismount right here. It's tricky to Uses keep your momentum the... going in a straight line. But he gets it. He skips the last one. Keep it moving. Oh, oh he just trips on that slack line, but he's going to keep moving. Now two. Absolutely. The barrel. His coach giving him advice. Uh, I believe that is Bradley Collins as his coach, so shout outs to him. Gonna make, going to go for this jump right here. Doesn't quite commit to it, but he's... Just going to run along and then hit the buzzer. A great run out of Sam Moreland. Um, and I look forward to see how he'll do on the on the full course. Yep. As now, take another quick look at the leaderboard. As you can see, best run so far in the preteen male division is getting to the last obstacle in a minute flat. We'll see if anybody can full clear. It's a tough it's a tough last obstacle. Absolutely. Next Up, up we next. have we have Mason uh being coached by Lulu from Austin Ninjas. They must be from around here. Yep. Shout out to Coach Lulu and shout out to Austin Ninjas. As we begin Mason's run. And we're off. Nice work through the shrinking steps. Using the spire wall to help him reach that second ring. Using the spire walls to like keep his momentum going forward. Uh, definitely want to keep in mind on that. Big leap, but oh, he just, just misses that balance beam. Going to move on over now. Look like he tried to do uh, the same, the same thing that uh, Sam Moreland tried to do. Uh, from what it looked like in the camera angle, um, it looked like they were trying to like skip, uh, like bounce, like jump, leap off of the like that little safety net. Oh, that's a hard fall right there. But Mason is still going. Uh, up the double steps. Absolutely no quit in Mason. And he is turning around to go ahead and face the UFOs. Going to build up some momentum. Switching over to a backwards grab. Tries to kip. Doesn't quite get it, but still a great run out of Mason. Um, and despite some hard falls, he's got a lot to be proud of. And I cannot wait to see him take on the full force. Up next, we have Theodore Kohler. Um, he's from the New York. He's from uh, the New York Ninja Academies, Brooklyn Ninja. So shout out to Brooklyn Ninja Academy, as Theodore Kohler is building up momentum on the uh, ring holds. Using the spire walls to help get his legs up. And does just that. Now we got, uh, oh, misses the hold. But it manages to recover. Theodore Colo taking a little bit more of a methodic approach. But it's proven to be working out just well for him. Oh, it looks like, uh, looks like, uh, they went for the safety nets, uh, that are, pu that are put, uh, by the balance obstacles, and just leap from them. Bit of a beta break here, so I hope these other athletes are paying attention. And now we are on to the aerial barrel. A uh, lot of swing being built up right here. 
Let's see Theodore go for this ring and comes up just short, but still a little bit more. Uh, oh, he's going for the cliffhanger. And now he's moving on to the, the double steps, uh, making his way up. Theodore Caller with a great run uh, here so far. Going up to that top devil step and going to try and get to the UFO. Only one person was able to clear the UFO, but unfortunately, Theodore will not join him. But still a great run, and I look forward to him on the full course. But up next now, uh, we have Sinclair uh, Leahy, also from the Brooklyn Ninja Academy. Uh, shout, shout outs to him as shout outs to them uh, once again. And Sinclair and, is ready to roll. Moving now up onto the ring holds. Doesn't even need the uh, spider walls for him. Going, looks like they're going. Looks like we're going to see a lot of athletes go for the dismount early here. Not bother with that last hold. Yeah. Um. Looks like our first few obstacles might have gotten beta break because uh, on that third obstacle, that wobbly balance beam, those little uh, foot place holds uh, to help our tier two athletes. Um, a lot of our athletes are just jumping on those to clear the obstacle but onto the aerial barrel let's see let's hope that Sinclair can reach that ring right there taking a lot of extra swings but gets it onto those cliffhangers um, you can use that little uh, support pole right there doesn't look like he'll need it. And let's see this dismount. Building up a bit of swing. Uh, 10 seconds left. Oh, this oh, just came up short. And oh, oh, that's a hard fall. I hope he's okay. Looks like it as he strolls his way over to the buzzer. Uh, great run out of Sinclair. Uh, lots, lots of good things to take away from that run, uh, especially uh, utilizing the beta breaks set by the uh, previous previous athletes. But now we are on to Lucas Walls, also out of Gym Nation, out of. Ohio uh, in the Midwest region. So Lucas is now taking on the course through the shrinking steps over to the ring holds. Misses that grab but almost gets it on his second try. Still building up some swing. You can using the spire walls. Might be looking to reset right here, and does. Building up a lot of swing, and then gets that ring. Now, using the uh, spire walls to like shift his momentum forward. And looks like about 38 seconds left onto the slack line, and now has to jump for the rope and gets it. Lucas Walls might not have a lot of time left, but he is definitely doing very, very well on this flow course. Goes ahead and resets on the aerial barrel. Oh, okay. Doesn't quite get the grab, but we might have another bear break on our hands right here. Um, Lucas Walls pulling that little, uh, balance beam back to help give him some more momentum. But uh, Lucas Walls going to the top of the devil steps. See if he can get this UFO just short. But a great run by Lucas Walls. Uh, on the 
hopefully uh, we will see him back on the full course. Yep, now. And we have Eli up next. And we have plenty of runners to go. Eli out of action athletics in the Boston area, but being coached today by Henry from Grit. A lot of these gyms, they like, um, if they're nearby and stuff, if someone needs a coach, they'll be happy to step in. That's the great thing about this ninja community. Absolutely. And now um, Eli Miller going right through all of these rings, making absolutely short work of them. Um, makes the dismount. Uh, going through the uh, wobbly balance beam as well. Now, we just saw our previous runner, uh, Lucas Walls, pull back the uh, swing on the aerial barrel. But Eli does not opt for that approach. He's going to build up momentum uh, this way. Just got to jump for the ring and gets it. That's the, the time. Line. Going for a bit of a safer dismount right here on the flipping. And sticks it. Now Eli Miller has to climb up these devil steps. And looks like he's going for the UFOs right here. Ah, uh, hand placement was a little bit too far forward, but still a great run at Eli Miller, and he should be very proud as he moves on to the full course. Yeah, and, and that looking at our leaderboard, that puts um, him in second place. Absolutely, a uh, very good run, especially since uh, this wave just did uh, skills not too long ago, so. They're, they definitely might, they, these athletes probably have some fatigue built up. So that's definitely something they got to keep in mind on these uh, low and full forces. But up next is Nathaniel Fedigan. Nathaniel is out of the Northeast region. As he makes his way through these ring holes. Oh! Drops a little bit. He uses his fire wall to recover. So he should save it here. Are you too much? There you go. And makes it this now. Makes it through that balance beam. Going through the slack line. It makes the leap to the world. Now Nathan Fenigan pulling back the uh, aerial ba aerial barrel balance beam. Uh, that swing to have some momentum, just like what Lucas Walls did, and makes the leap to the ring and nails the cliffhanger. Not opting to use the pull, you are allowed to. Well, let's see how he handles this dismount. He gets it. Doesn't have a lot of time left, but Nathan Fedigan put up a fantastic run, making it all the way to the, to the double steps, uh, making it past the cliffhanger as well. Great run on Nathan Fedigan. For sure, and next up we have Ian. Ian Humphrey. Ian is out of Grit Ninja, so uh, New England area. Yep, another one of our New England athletes uh, making the long trip here over to Austin, Texas uh, for this amazing competition. Going through the ring holds. Oh, bats the bats the hold. Trying to get a nice grab on it and does just that. 
The wobbly bounce team is up next. Oh, looked like he fell for a little bit. Uh, the referee was in the way, but he looks completely fine as he moves on to the slack line to rope swing. And looks like he got through it onto the aerial barrel. Uh, might be having a bit of te technical difficulties over here. Uh, got about, oh, there we are, back on the aerial barrel. We have about 25 seconds left. Makes the nice transfer over. It's the cliffhanger transition. Just gotta make that dismount in order to reach double step. Doesn't have a lot of time left, but still, Ian Humphrey putting up an awesome run. And that is, he was doing a uh, reverse on the double step. That's really an interesting technique. I wonder if our athletes are going to pick that up. Yeah, it would be for interesting now, to see. But for now, we are moving on to Ryan Cantor. Ryan is out of the out of the South Central uh, region. So here through Austin, Texas. Shout out to Austin, Texas. Ryan Cantu is getting ready to rock and roll on this course, and he's off. Has a lot of momentum from the shrinking steps into our ring swings. And gets it with ease. It doesn't even bother with the safety or uh, safety platforms that the wobbly down sport has. And Ryan Cantu is making excellent time right here. Onto the aerial barrel. Obviously, big shout out to um, Austin Ninjas for hosting this amazing event as Ryan Cantu gets through the cliffhanger. Uh, up and through a bit of a safer dismount. And nails it. He has about 40 seconds left to beat both of these obstacles, double steps, and the UFOs. Uh, looks like he was climbing up double steps uh, very, very easily. Going from the second, he gets the first UFO, and he oh, he comes so close. To getting oh, the second, what a run. just a little bit off, but still, what a run from Ryan Cantu, and I cannot wait to see how he will handle the full course. Absolutely, that was a very close run there. Now let's see if uh, Rowan Moore can uh, match that performance. Rowan is out of the out of the New England division. Another one of our New England uh, athletes. It looks like he's wearing the Lucas Reale shirt. Shout out to Lucas Reale, one of the greats of the sport of ninja and also a really, really good coach. Makes it through onto the wobble balance board. Looks like he got it. Uh, about a minute left uh, onto our second balance obstacle. We have the select line for rip swing. Makes the leap for it. Area Barrel pulls back the little swing. And let's see. Gets the jump to the ring. Uh, uses the uh, handles on the swing as a safety. Net. Going for the dismount on the cliffhanger and gets it. Rowan Moore is flying up the double steps. And now just has one obstacle left from a full course clear. Oh no! Oh, so Coming close. Up just short. 
Still a great run by Next up, we have Joseph O'Connell out of the Grit Ninja. Coach Henry on his sidelines. If he gets ready to take on the force. A bit of a slower approach to do the shooting stuff and gets a nice momentum into the ring holes. Uh, makes the dismount, doesn't bother with the uh, last hold right there. This is the little safety net on the uh, bottle balancing. And a little, a little bit of a scare right there, but he makes it through. Makes the nice jump to the lift swing. Uh, for those of you who just tuned in, uh, welcome to the uh, Tier 2 World Ninja League uh, Championship. I am Evan Mel, and I am joined by Philip Scott. And we are currently uh, watching Joseph O'Connell take on the full, uh, flow course for uh, the pre-team males. Uh, and he makes a dismount uh, over to the double steps, skips that second step right there, going up to the second to highest double step. Let's see, hand placement just a little bit off, a little bit too close to the edge, but Joseph McConnell with a great run um, makes it through uh, six obstacles. As he advance, as he makes it over to get ready for the full course. It is from the Northeast Division. Uh, so shout out to the Northeast Region, as well as. As well as Brooklyn Ninja Academy for hosting that regional. Uh, they're having a little bit of research right there. But makes it, making his way through really quickly. And leaps for the rope. Gets a bit of a low grab but manages to save it. Uh, aerial Barrel is up next. Getting a lot of momentum right here. Goes for the ring and gets it. Now we'll see if he'll do the dismount from here or is going to use the pull to his advantage. This swing is going all over the place, but he manages to make the dismount. Double subs are up next. He's got about 20 seconds left. See, he's going to go to that top up right there into the UFOs. But it looks like he rushed it a little bit, but completely understandable considering how much time he had left. Still a great run by Aiden Arthur Moss. Um, definitely getting a lot of swing on that aerial barrel right there. Up next is Grant Goodson. Um, Grant is from the Southeast region. Um, so shout out to the Southeast region. And he is off through the second obstacle with ease. And it looks like he's gonna go straight to the dismount. Oh, oh, that was, that was a little close right there. Um, 
definitely the spire wall supports uh, helped them out quite a lot right there. But now we are on to the slack line, the rope swing. Has to put that shaky dismount uh, back into the back of his head as he moves onto the aerial barrel. Getting a lot of swing right here. And he's going to take one more swing. Taking a lot of swings right here. Uh, making sure he gets to that ring. And manages to get to just that. Now, he's about... He's going to go straight for the dismount on the cliffhanger and gets it. He's got 20 seconds left as he starts up the double step. Oh, oh so close. The, absolutely. Uh, still a great run by Grant. Um, I cannot wait to see him on the full course. Um, even though he had a little bit of a scary fall on the second obstacle, he looks okay, and he and he still has a fantastic run. Up next, we have uh, Wesley Tomasco. Wesley is from in the Northeast region. So shout out to the Northeast region, and once again, shout outs to Austin Ninjas. Uh, for hosting this amazing event. And shout out to Nick Fordney and the rest of the Austin Ninjas team for designing both the flow and full courses that we will be seeing today. We have another Dexterity Depot Ninja. Um, we saw one, we had another one of those uh, ninjas out in the first wave. Uh, I believe it was Stephen Mall, who is from Dexterity Depot. As we get ready to begin. Asking a few questions to the ref before it begins, but and he looks like he's off. Nice push off there off of the uh, mounting platform of the second obstacle. Oh, manages to save it. Making his way through the wobbly balance beam. Doesn't use the safety nets. Moving very efficiently through the slack line. Still got about 55 seconds left as he moves on to the aerial barrel. This is where the this is where the course can get really really tough. Well, has a ton of momentum going into that ring, and gets it with ease, and swings all the way over to the cliffhangers. Don't see a lot of people using that pull anymore, and get manages to land the uh, this note right there as uh, Leslie moves on to the double steps. Going up to that, is he gonna try a 180? Or... Oh, okay, okay. And then, he's going to make a, just gotta hit that, oh, just short. Um. Hands placement a little too far forward. It's still a great one at Wesley Tomasco. Um, we'll see him in the full course um, as he makes it way all the way to the final obstacle of the flow course. Up next, we have Miles Stan uh, St Stalder. Uh, sorry for stuttering right there. Uh, Miles is from the South Central uh, region, so this is uh, of Austin Ninjas. Uh, he's a rise ninja with his coach on the sidelines. Making his way through the first few obstacles very, very easily. And onto the aerial barrel, 
He's got over a minute left onto this back half of the back half of the floor course. And he's just got eye up that ring. Oh, he gets it. Tries to go quickly into the cliffhanger. Has to take a few extra swings. And looks to be going for the dismount. Gets it. And we have about 35 seconds left as Miles chalks up for the final two obstacles. Now just remember in the in the, in the first wave, uh, we did not have a single uh, full clear on this low course. Let's see if Miles will be the first one. He's got about 15 seconds left. Miss, misses on uh, with his right hand as he hits the buzzer. Um, still a great run out of Miles. Uh, definitely showed a lot of power early on and definitely got through those early obstacles very, very smoothly. Absolutely. And uh, we're coming up on our last few runners of this course. Still haven't gotten our full finisher. We've had some close runs though, so we'll see. Um, we, have, we have four runners left. And Seth is off. Seth out of Level Up in the Southeast region, so shout out to uh, Level Up for hosting that regional town competition. And Seth makes it through the first, is making it very easily through the first few obstacles. That was just as fast as our previous runner, Miles Stadler. Misses his feet placement, was able to recover. Swinging over. Looks like Seth is also oh. going to go for that this Trying to go right for that lache, but... Yeah. Looks like Seth did get the dismount. And now let's see how he's handling uh, the UFO. Oh! A very, very quick run right here. Yeah, that... He was flying so much. Uh, let's just check the leaderboard. That puts him in first place by three seconds. Also, something to keep an eye on is Ryan Kent 2 uh, run is under review. So that is something to definitely pay attention to. But Seth Hughes moves into first place with only three runners left. And it looks like we got a Lap Rats jersey on. Yep, uh, M Lab Ohio. Got Shout out to M Lab Ohio. And shout out to Coach Lulu for uh, dancing in the background for a little bit. <laughs> Looks like uh, his coach is sizing up the course uh, as we wait for the referee to get back. And I gotta say, um, Seth Hughes' run was very, very impressive because not only what is it the first place time so far, it is also after all of the skills, which doing essentially four courses in one day is not easy. Like, oh yeah, for I'm sure. someone who gets winded very easily, so like, like I couldn't even imagine doing this. So like, it's amazing what these athletes can do. Now onto the slack line, into the rope swing. Noticing a lot of our athletes aren't really having any trouble with that slack line, which shows just the growth that these athletes have. Um, slack lines are not easy obstacles. I know I've struggled with them a lot. I know every single beginner ninja uh, can struggle with them and even still struggle with them. But, but our athletes here today showing absolutely no problem with that tricky obstacle, which is absolutely amazing to see how much the sport has evolved. Oh, yeah, for sure. And he is oh, just doing into the dismount, but he's going to move on now. Through to the devil steps.
Let's see how he'll be able to handle the UFOs right here. Oh, so close. Very, very oh, close, yes. but slow clear, uh, Sam Barlow. And we move on to our final two runners. Mason and it's Timmy. Mason Manley, uh, Coach Lulu, uh, getting him prepped. Shout out to Coach Lulu. Obviously, very, very busy uh, this entire event with so many athletes uh, to coach along the way. Looks like he's asking a question to the referee. For those of you who are just tuning in, uh, welcome to the Tier 2 World Ninja League Championships. I am Evan Mel, and I am joined by Philip Scott, and we are live in Austin Ninjas in Austin, Texas. So shout outs to Austin Ninjas, and shout outs to our course designer, Nick Fordney, and the rest of the Austin Ninjas team, as Mason Manley is off and running on these first few obstacles, uh, very efficiently through these ring holds. Uh, so Coach Lulu uh, definitely taught him very, very well. Runs across the slack line. You see a lot of these athletes take a bit of a slow approach on the obstacle. Mason's like, nope, I'm, go I'm going for it. Has a ton of momentum right here. Gets that grab. And right over to the cliffhanger. Now you're seeing all of these athletes skip that... Uh, make it straight to the dismount from the cliffhanger are in a way the Bay. fastest time so far absolutely let's see how he'll be able to handle the ufos remember we have never oh. seen a oh. so close oh actually no that wasn't the fastest time i thought it was um so you can check the leaderboard yeah that puts him in second but the first place is under review so we will have to see Usually if it's under review, that means, like, if there was a close call, for example, on the uh, balance, if the foot was close to the ground, things like that can be placed under review, and then the video review, the referees were in a camera, they'll check it, get the go, go, or if the run ended there, but, yeah, still a great run. Next up, our last runner for the flow course is Kimmy, who goes out of USA Ninja Challenge. So, I think in the Boston area. Uh, yes, uh, from the New England region. So shout out to once again to the New England region, which has had a ton of athletes come out here today. And has a another great time to this point. Um, we're seeing a lot of these athletes really going the distance here. And Timmy Gregory doesn't even have to leap off of that balance in order to get to the wow. We might have we Timmy Gregory is putting on an absolute clinic right here. Oh yeah. Here we go, now, getting set. It's the UFOs. Oh. Oh. Another 58 second run. But still a great run. And we have another sub minute run uh, up to that point. As you can so, see, here's our leaderboard going into the full course, or the full course, I mean. Remember that the, all these athletes do four events. Uh, each one, two courses, two skills, and the combined results from each. Uh, determine the champion the championship results, as you can see here. Yes, and for, bo for those who are not familiar with the uh, format, it's a uh, strongest ninja championship result. Um, so your, com your every placement you get, you get a point. So first place you get one point, second place you get two points, Third place, you get three points, etc. It's across four events, like Phil has said, uh, through the flow, flow course, the full course, the tech skill, and the dash skill. And the lowest number wins. Uh, so it's kind of like golf. Uh, you want a low score. So, like for example, right here, it says first, 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 second. So one plus one plus one plus two is five. So 
the lower the score, the better. And a plenty of medals will also be given out to our athletes uh, for each of those uh, four events and across the entire competition. With that, uh, stay tuned for more World Ninja League Tier 2 Championships action as we take our second wave of our pre-teen males and put them on the full course. Yep. Stand by. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I'll pull up the schedule for everybody. Uh, be back in a few.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Tier 2 World Ninja League Championships. I'm Philip Scott alongside Evermel, and we are wrapping up our pre-team males division right now. Uh, we've had a lot of runs. The first half went through their two courses. Now it's time for their second half. Very interesting to see how this goes. We haven't had any full clues to get. Uh, here's what the leaderboard looks like so far for the full course. We've seen seven of eight obstacles beaten. Every obstacle score counts in this format. And let's take a quick look at that format. Uh, as you can see, all athletes compete in four events, two courses, and then those are the ones that we have been broadcasting. Then we also have two skills. You can kind of see the Lachey one and the Dash one in the background. And uh, your combined result from those determines the uh, championship standings. So, lowest number wins. So, if somebody gets first, 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 second, that's three ones and a two. That means five points. That's and the best lowest score wins. Uh, and we also got medals for all the all of our uh, events individually, as well as our force combined and skills combined. So uh, lots of hardware to go around. Absolutely, couldn't put it better myself, Phil. And we are moving on to the full course, and we have our first athlete uh, coming up fairly soon. Uh, this is Joey Bank. So Joey Bank uh, comes from the Northeast region, um, qualified at Brooklyn Ninja Academy. Uh, so shout out to Brooklyn Ninja Academy. Um, as for uh, where we are host getting hosted at, uh, it is Austin Ninjas over in Austin, Texas. So big shout outs to them. And shout out to Nick Fortney and the Austin Ninja team for designing these very, very challenging courses. Uh, as Phil said, uh, we have not had a full clear on either the flow course or the full course. Uh, let's see if that will change in the full course right here with um, our next wave of athletes, uh, starting with Joey Bank. Now, something else to keep in mind is that uh, in this particular uh, wave of comp uh, athletes right here, um, they already did skills and the flow course, so they are tired. So they're going to have to find a way to fight through uh, these eight challenging obstacles in order to get their points needed uh, for the end result of the strongest ninja and therefore becoming the tier two uh, champion. Now, something else to keep in mind is that uh, the top three uh, tier two athletes uh, overall, uh, rather in every age division, um, will qualify for the tier one world championship being held in Greensboro, North Carolina. So definitely want to keep an eye on that and it's something to keep Keep in mind as the competition uh, continues underway. Looks like we're getting our final touch-ups on the full course. Yep. And, and if Joey you want Banks. to check the uh, the overall result, the final, the overall results, the you know the best of four events, go ahead and go to WorldNinjaLeague.org. Then uh, you should be able to see those. Yep, uh, Phil is 100% correct. Uh, if you go to worldninjaleague.org slash tier 2 world championship, uh, you should be able to come over to our website where we talk about location, the competition, and everything like location. Um, and also has the run order uh, ready as well. So, Phil, you've competed for a while now. Um, when you take on a lot of these courses back to back to back, like, 
what do you do to prepare, like, for when, like, you're obviously feeling the fatigue? Like, anything you do a little differently that maybe some of these young athletes can learn from? Usually it's not the fatigue from the courses, because the courses only take a few minutes and you've got plenty of time to rest between, but it's more the mental fatigue. Um, that's a, that's uh, one of the nice things about Tier 2 is that you know, this is like a really good ex starting experience for a lot of these very strong, talented uh, athletes that are just starting out. And yeah, I think, um, you know, this will really give them a good base and a lot of things to learn from. It, you're not going to feel completely 100% perfect when you step up there. You're going to be a little nervous, so it's very good that, you know, like I said, we're getting that experience, and they've been really showing it. They've been, all of these athletes have been having some really strong runs. Absolutely. Um, looks like Joey Bank is up to the starting platform of the full uh, of the full course. Uh, we see a lot of the Gym Nation team uh, right behind him, also getting ready to run. And obviously you see the warped walls in the background. One of the aspects of every ninja gym is you gotta have a warped wall somewhere. One of the most iconic ninja obstacles, period. And looks like we are about to get on the way. And for those of you who are just tuning in, uh, welcome to the Tier, tier 2 World Ninja League Championships. I am Evan Mel, and I am joined by Philip Scott, and we are live from Austin Ninjas in Austin, Texas, with the courses decided by Nick Fortney and the rest of the Austin Ninjas team. And we are about to get underway with the full course with Joey Bank. And he's off. Going through the uh, quad steps pretty easily, building up some momentum. On nice and smooth. Now we have one of the most iconic ninja obstacles ever. It's the cliffhanger. And it's in a pyramid shape. Um, one thing to keep in mind of is the dismount. You are allowed to use that support, uh, as you can see on the right hand side of your screen. And unfortunately, Joey Bank does not get the dismount, but that's okay because. There are still plenty of obstacles to make up uh, in points. And looks like uh, he's still up on the slack lines right there. And gets it, so easily made up for uh, the loss in the cliffhanger. Now we have uh, an obstacle that took out so many of our athletes in uh, our first wave. And this is the crux point of the course. Makes the small kip lache all the way over but now he is spinning around looks like he's going to fix his momentum joey bank gets the lache and our first runner of this wave clears a very very tough obstacle and we move on to these fidget spinners right here now this first fidget spinner uh, has some bungee cords that uh restrict your swing now this one is on an axis where you could go all over the place and looks like we're having a bit of technical difficulties over here. Uh, Joey looks to be on the well, ring tech obstacles we have here and he is spinning around right now Look, looking to recover. Gains his momentum back, puts, uh, uses his other hand to grab onto the ring, uh, and the other ring is now down on his shoulder. Oh, and he peels right off. Still great fight out of Joey Bank. And now onto the Kaleidoscope, and that is an obstacle that no one has beaten in the first wave, and we'll see if someone beats it in the second wave. Great run by Joey Bank. Um, Definitely the highlight for me was him clearing that crux point, an obstacle very, very difficult. And up next we have Landon Wright out of the Midwest, of, uh, Midwest region. Uh, 
qualified here through MLAB Ohio's uh, Tier 2 Regional Championship. Uh, out of Jim Nation over in Ohio. Shout out to Jim Nation. And he is coached by, I believe that is Bradley Collins. Uh, so shout outs to Bradley Collins as well. Uh, shout outs to Coach Lulu, who is also in the background. And looks like Landon is underway. Oh, nope, not yet. That was the oh, skills yeah. in the background. Oh, uh, never mind. <laughs> uh, my apologies. So, um, looks like we're getting a few things figured out over. Oh. Looks like, uh, just laying along. So, one thing that's going to be very important for each of these athletes to know is just how much how much left in the tank they have not only physically but also mentally just like what phil said you've been here you've been at austin ninjas for quite a while now so like obviously the mental fatigue is coming in and looks like uh, not quite seeing a little bit of the skills in the background uh, I believe that is the dash skill, if uh, memory ser if uh, I'm yes. correct. Uh, Phil, yep. Okay, I thought so. And now, Phil, what do you think? Uh, what obstacle do you think is on this full course? Do you think is going to play the biggest role in the uh, athlete standings? Oh, it looks um, like Landon so is off. This one that you can see right here, and Landon Wright is running. Um, so I think that one with, with the spinning uh, square and the spinning uh, circle, I think that's that's been a tough one all day. I think that's going to be big points getter. And then also, obviously, if anybody can figure out the last obstacle, which is a cliffhanger throw to this little, uh, little like, mail slot that you have to catch. And... Uh, Nobody's gotten it quite yet, but we'll see if this second half of the preteen boys can do it. Absolutely. Uh, that kaleidoscope is definitely going to be very hard on these athletes today. And Landon Wright uh, fortunately goes down on the cliffhanger, but still has plenty of obstacles to make up for the lost points. And gets through the slack line, putting up a pretty good run right now. Um... Oh, drops drops down a little, drops off on that fifth obstacle. Now onto the fidget spinners. Uh, these were made by uh, DGS. Uh, shout out to DGS. And Landon looks like he's trying to reach up to that. Look. Looks like he got a hand on it, but wasn't enough to just hang on. And now we have these uh, ring t ring tap right here. Goes back and resets on that little first hold. Definitely a hard transition. Definitely a lot harder than the athletes make it look. Tries to reach up. Still hanging on. It's only got 30 seconds left, but he's continuing to fight on. And carry on, no fat, no quit, and uh, Landon Wright uh, putting up a great run, still absolutely not giving up on any of these obstacles, even if he ends up falling on them. And now we have the kaleidoscope he tries to make the jump, doesn't look like he got it, string cut out a little bit, but still a great run from Landon Wright. He should be very, very proud of himself. Still have a little bit of skills in the background. Now, uh, also, once again, big shout outs to Nick Fordney and the rest of the Austin Ninjas team um, for 
putting on uh, this course that we have today. And shout out to Awesome Ninjas as well for hosting this wonderful event. Uh, they also hosted last year. And we are getting ready for Sam Moreland's run. Uh, let's see how Sam will be able to uh, do on this full course right here. And looks like he's off to the uh, couple steps. Now these early obstacles have proven to be absolutely no trouble for these athletes here today. But once we get to the cliffhanger, this is where things are going to get a little bit tricky. But Sam Moreland uh, is putting on a clinic right now, but he decides to drop off of the cliffhanger. So now he's moving on to our slack ladder. I'm sorry, our slack line. Uh, misses the uh, misses that as well, but he's still got plenty of obstacles to make up points here, especially this one right here that so many of our athletes have went out on. Tries to lache to it, but doesn't have the height for it. Now on to the fidget spinner. We just saw Landon Wright uh, struggle on this one. Sam Moreland, uh, what a one-handed save right there. Goes back to reset. Leaps for the second part of that little fidget spinner. And makes the lache. Pulling up a nice swing. And goes to the dismount with about 70 seconds left. Now we have the ring tech right here. Now this is also something that is deceptively difficult. Um, you gotta have enough backswing to get the ring out and where you want it. And look at that. And Bradley Collins is absolutely loving that from Sam Moreland. Uh, now onto our kaleidoscope, which no athlete has beaten. Let's see if Sam Moreland could be the first. He gets the first, gets the shade of the cliffhanger. Oh, but he slides off on his backswing. Still a great run from Sam Moreland, and he should be very proud. And I know Bradley Collins is very proud as well. What a run by Sam Moreland. Great effort out of Sam. Taking off our course. And next we have uh, Mason Buda, uh, Buda, I believe that's how it's pronounced. Uh, we have Coach Lulu on uh, getting ready to uh, cheer and help his athlete on. Uh, shout out to Coach Lulu, um, someone who's been extremely busy this entire competition. Um, and he'll be even busier tomorrow. But here he here goes Mason on to our second obstacle. These holds, like with many of our athletes, having absolutely no problems with it. Now onto the cliffhanger. Now we have seen our past few athletes struggle on it, and he just drops off immediately. Um, but that's okay. He's still got plenty of time to make up those points, including on the slack line right here, which he clears. And then we have uh, this crux point. Very, very difficult obstacle. Tried the lache up to that uh, second hold, but didn't have the height for it. Uh, Mason Bude uh, resetting on the fidget spinners. Building up some nice momentum here. Let's see if he can nail this lache. And he does. However, his momentum is going in a few different directions. Looks like he's trying to recover. Uh, let's see how he'll handle this mount right here. And he gets it. Very nice dismount by Mason right here. Now onto our ring tech right here. Nice placement of the ring right there. Mason having a great run this entire competition as he dismounts from the ring tech and now onto the kaleidoscope which no athlete has beaten so far let's see if mason will be the first to do it let's see if he gets this lache to the cliffhanger his fingers were there but he just didn't hang on but so still a great close. run from mason 
And Coach Lulu has to be very proud of him, and I would be proud of him as well. Looking at the leaderboard, we still have Luke DeSousa over in first place, um, followed by Brandon Bernaldez. And next up, we have Theodore Kohler. Uh, Theodore uh, came, is from, I believe, Brooklyn Ninja Academy. Uh, yep. Uh, so big shout out to Brooklyn Ninja Academy and shout outs to the Northeast uh, region. Uh, also has a lot of athletes coming from there as well. Let's see how Theodore will do on the course today, uh, on the full course. Makes it through the first obstacle very, very easily. Now we have these uh, holds right here. Our athlete's having no trouble with this obstacle so far. And Theodore looks to be, oh, unfortunately goes down, but he's still got plenty of obstacles to uh, make up for those lost points, especially this one right here, the cliffhanger, which not a lot of our athletes have beaten. Uh, so definitely going to be a awesome obstacle for him to regain some points on. And now he's on to that downward ascent. Makes it all the way to the end. Let's see if he can nail the dismount. Remember, oh, he just peels right off. And now he's moving on to the slack lines. Uh, he just faced one of these in the, full, in the uh, flow course. And it looks like he'll be able to handle it. Just, oh. Slot loses his balance, uh, trying to transfer over to that next, to that second uh, slack line right there. And now we have our Chrysler Lachey up to that uh, spinning square hold, uh, square hold, but didn't have the height for it. See, a lot of our athletes have static that first move, so I hope our nin I hope our athletes are paying attention. So that they could possibly be a break any of these obstacles. Theodore building up some swing on the fidget spinner. Going to have to make the nice lache over to the second one. Going a little bit back and forth. Oh, and he decides to drop. Um... So we have another obstacle here. I can get him points. He has only got about 17 seconds left as he takes on the well, ring tech right here. Uh, looks like we're having a bit of technical difficulties. Uh, oh, he's still on the ring tech. And he lost the ring? Oh, no, no, uh, it was around the shoulder. Uh, still a great run by Theodore as we move on to our next athlete, which is Sinclair Leahy. Sinclair, like with Theodore, is out of Brooklyn Ninja Academy, so shout out to Brooklyn Ninja Academy. And we should be underway very, very soon. For those of you just tuning in, welcome to the Tier 2 World Ninja League Championships. This is the pre-teen male division on the full course. Uh, I am Evan Mel, and I am joined by Philip Scott. And Sinclair Leahy is underway. Makes the transfer on these holds. Had a bit of uh, some strange momentum, but manages to save it onto the dismount. And Sinclair Leahy is pushing it on the cliffhanger. Definitely going to have to be very careful with some of his hand placements here. Um, now onto the very last ledge. He's going to have to nail the dismount. Oh! 
the support saves saves him as he moves on to the slack line. That's about a minute 25 seconds left. Balances through and gets this obstacle as well. So Sinclair Leahy jumps, doesn't even bother with the first ring. Trying to get to that pumpkin hold. Manages to get get a hand on it. Tries to get over to uh, that spinning UFO. Doesn't quite get there. And now we are on to the fidget spinners and has some excellent momentum right here. Makes that lache. I just has to make the dismount before our second to last obstacle, which is some ring tech. Oh! Oh! I don't know if that counts as a clear. Uh, Phil, can you uh, confirm that? Um, I'm not sure yet. Yeah, that one might have to be under review. Yeah. Um, but Sinclair Leahy went for the Kaleidoscope, tried to link it, doesn't quite get it, but Sinclair Leahy with a great run. Defi definitely, uh, what is a highlight for me is definitely that insane dismount save on the cliffhanger right there. Absolutely incredible. But our next competitor is coming up to the coming up to the starting platform and we have Lucas Walls. Uh, Lucas uh, is another one of our Gym Nation. Yes, uh, yes, Gym Nation uh, athletes out of Ohio. So shout outs to Gym Nation. Getting some chalk ready from his coach as we get ready to go underway with Lucas Walls. And we should be off very, very soon. And he is off, uh, making his way through the quad steps. Lucas Walls. Uh, Bounding through these holds very, very easily. Now we have the cliffhangers. Makes it to the top of that cliffhanger pyramid. Now it's starting to go down. Gotta make that dismount right here. Oh, oh. Looks like his uh, left foot did not cross the plane right there. And, oh, that's that's a hard fall right there. I he looks okay, but now we're on to this massive crux point right here. Uh, shout out to Nick Fortney for the uh, crux point right here. Uh, Nick Fortney uh, is the course designer behind these courses and the rest of the Austin Ninjas team. Um, Lucas Wells onto that spinning UFO, looking to try and fix his hand placement to not be spinning around as much. Let's see if he'll be able to nail this lache. Doesn't quite have the momentum, but still a great effort nonetheless. And now we're on to the fidget spinners. And this lache can be pretty tricky. It looked like he had it, but he was just short. But he's still got two more obstacles to go. And remember, on full course, every obstacle counts. Uh, a little bit stuck here, trying to uh, fix. There we are. I use that back swing, get up there, and does just that. Oh, he left. He left the ring behind. Manages to grab it. And about 20 seconds left for the kaleidoscope. I think this will stay to the cliffhanger. Has the hand placements, but just couldn't hang on. But Lucas Walls, a very, very solid run. Um, definitely the fight on that crux point, making it all the way to that UFO was definitely the highlight of that run. And still a great job out of Lucas Walls.
And up next, we have uh, Eli Miller. Eli is from uh, the New England region, uh, one of our many New England uh, ninjas. Which is definitely quite the journey from, like, that Massachusetts area all the way over to Austin, Texas, where Austin Ninjas is held at. So, big shout out to Eli Miller uh, for making the journey all the way over to uh, the Tier 2 Championships. But Eli Miller is off, and he is coming. So, he's got through the holds... And dismounts onto the cliffhanger. Definitely uh, pulling himself, pulling himself up on those uh, upper transitions. Got to gotta get the dismount right here, and with absolute ease, he gets it. Uh, Slackline is up next, balancing. Oh. That's that's the one thing about slack lines. Uh, if your momentum is going one way, it's very very hard to recover. Still, but Eli Miller on this little crux point right here uh, manages to get to the pumpkin hole. Let's see if he can make it to this uh, UFO. Oh, he makes the little kip there. Hand placement's good, but he is facing the opposite way from where the Boshe bar is. Faces it, and he gets the grab. That's going to be a great moment for him as he makes it to the fidget spinner with only three obstacles left. The fidget spinner, the ring tech, and of course the kaleidoscope. Gets the fidget spinner. Has a lot of momentum and goes to dismount. And then we have our ring tech. Oh, he's, he's going through it easily. And now we have the kaleidoscope. We have not seen someone beat this obstacle, but he grabs that, that first cliffhanger. Oh, and he slides right off trying to get to that little special delivery. They a great run from Eli Miller. And that faces grab. it, and he gets the grab. That was an insane grab. So great job to Eli Miller and going over to our leaderboard that puts Eli Miller in fourth place behind Liam LaRue, Brandon Bernaldez, and Luke Casusa. So he was the fastest of all the athletes that com completed six out of the eight obstacles. And then next we have Nathaniel Fedigan. Uh Nathaniel is out of The Northeast region, so like the qualified through uh, Brooklyn Ninja Academy. So shout outs to Brooklyn Ninja Academy. Uh, shout outs to our other uh, gyms that hosted regional regional championships. So M Lab Ohio, Level Up, uh, and of course Austin Ninjas right here. And makes the dismount right there. And has great walk-offs to start off the cliffhanger. And is keeping them. Nathaniel Fedigan is doing very, very well on this cliffhanger. Just got to get the dismount right here. And gets it. Uh, uses the little uh, support beam to uh, stop his momentum. Keeps his balance a little scary right there. And makes it through. Now on to this crux point. This crux point, we just saw Eli Miller not too long ago. So let's see if Nathaniel Fedigan can do the same. Uh, he's got to the UFO, but he is spinning around right now. He has to get those... 
Oh, he tried to go for the dismount right there. Absolutely. And um, we are on to the fidget spinners. Just got to make this uh, lache right here. Uh, Ooh. Looks like he just peeled off right there. Definitely no quit in Nathaniel Fedigan as he takes on a uh, ring tech. Goes to, uh, goes to reset. Messed up his arms a little bit. Still got plenty of time left. Only 36 seconds left on the clock. Almost makes it up there. Looking to try and save it, but he decides to just drop and move on to the Kaleidoscope. And we have still not seen anyone clear this Kaleidoscope. Goes to try and static it. But well, looks like he's going to have to make a lache right here. And he gets it to the cliffhanger. Now it is just the special delivery and uh, he just peels off. Still a great run at Nathaniel Fed again. <laughs> that um, was that, great. Absolutely. Um, my favorite was definitely on the cliffhanger showing off those lock-offs. For sure. That, and looking at our leaderboard, we still have Luke Basusa in first place with Brandon Bernaldez and Liam LaRue uh, in second and third place, respectively. So our next runner is Ian Humphrey, who is already off and running. Out of the Grit Ninja. Shout out to Grit Ninja. Uh, whoa! Saves it. Goes for the dismount. And now on to the cliffhanger. Now, we're starting to see our athletes in this wave really starting to get a hang on the cliffhanger. Just has that dismount. Oh, but he drops. But he still has plenty of obstacles to make up for the lost points. Oh, just oh. Rip. I hope he's okay because that looked like a hard fall. Looked like his, uh, like where his rip cage would be fell onto the slack line. But he looks okay. And he's onto the big crux point now. This lache is very, very tough. Spinning around. Trying to fix his momentum. Obviously not an easy obstacle to do. Just gotta get that little shake. Oh, oh but he drops. He had a good swinger. I thought he like got it, but you know, oh, just I thought so too. So Ian had the distance right there, but he just could not hang on to that second fidget spinner. And now we have the ring tech. Another deceptively tricky obstacle. You gotta use your backswing to help uh, keep your, uh, your uh, back ring uh, for you to swing into uh, the next little hole. Let's see if we beat Retrous obstacle, yeah, but he gets the first jump. Oh, just look at, yeah, the backswing is the toughest part about that, and that's what we've seen all day. Just that swing back, got to have that grip. It's such a tough forward thing because it's a flat ledge, so when you swing back, your hand naturally wants to slip off. It's so much grip strength. That's something I think a lot of these athletes are going to be practicing after the comp. Absolutely, and not just these athletes, but I feel like everyone should be practicing backswings on cliffhangers because those can be really, really tough. And next we have Ryan Cantu. Um, I remember right, he almost cleared uh, a flow course. I think so too. I know uh, Seth Hughes, who will be running later, um, also almost cleared the flow course. But now Ryan is making short work of these first few obstacles and goes straight into the cliffhanger. 
just those few dropping ledges left. And just gonna line up that dismount. Nice throw, no problem. Now onto the slack line. Ryan is also making really good time here. There's about a minute 50 seconds left. Um, onto this crux point obstacle makes the transfer over to that uh, first spinning uh, square hold right there onto the pumpkin kips onto that UFO and he's looking really good for this this for this Lachey, and he no gets problem. it very fast pace so far yes uh, Phil you've been right uh, that crux point fifth obstacle has proven to be a killer and a huge difference maker on this full course. And, this, and the fidget spinners are down as well. 70 seconds left uh, into some ring tech. Plenty of time. I would, him, I would, after this obstacle, because nobody has beaten the last obstacle, might as well take all your time, chalk up, and breathe, because you've got a minute left. And this obstacle only takes maybe 10 seconds top, so you just gotta... That's exactly what he's doing. Strategizing. Alrighty. Get his first grab. He's got the first grab. Gets and it. Nice Ryan can here. Do. This is oh, gonna be so a close. Oh! Almost. That grab is so tough. It's just this tiny little... This bar. It's... It's really tough to grab onto, and let's just take a look at our leaderboard. That puts him in first place so far. And yes, and unlike his flow course, uh, this is currently not under review. So that so Ryan Cantu definitely uh, put on an absolute show on the fourth course as we move on to our next runner, which is Rowan Moore. Yes, already up enough. Um, he's moving along now. On to the second obstacle. No problem. Makes the dismount right here. Um, we're in the Lucas Reale shirt. Uh, shout out to Lucas Reale. Going through the cliffhanger with absolute ease. Just got to nail this dismount right here. And gets it. Now, the slack line has been pretty tricky for our athletes today. Let's see if Rowan will fall victim to it. Doesn't look like it, and he will not fall victim to the slack lines. Now, we just saw uh, Ryan Cantu absolutely dominate this course, and Rowan Moore is like, is saying, what about me, guys? I'm here to play as well. And he's just got to nail this will say There he gets goes. it. Rowan Moore put, also putting on a show right here. We go for that pop right here. Nice hand over hand Excellent technique. Job. A little crooked, but he's gotten it corrected here. There he goes. Good this one. Just over a minute left. Losing through the ring toss. Gets that. Yep. Tough grab up there now. Now Rowan should do the same thing that uh, Ryan did. And that is rest out, maybe chalk up, and then go for it. Oh, but he's going straight for it. Yeah, this is tough. This is a good back swing here. Oh! Oh my goodness! He gets one, it! One handed grab! Rowan Moore is your full first player! Play as well. Wow. And he's just got to nail this will say. There and Someone gets, finally gets it. <laughs> in style. Look at that save. Oh! Oh my Good back oh, Wow. Again, again and just. Oh! Oh my goodness! He gets one, it. One handed grab! Yes. Rowan Moore, Moore is your full first player. On the leaderboard into the first place spot in our first athlete. And you can see all that eight obstacles. As yeah, and you can see with that little green, uh, that green over the difficulty score, he cleared. That was a full clear. Absolutely. And now we move on to Joseph O'Connell. 
Uh, Joseph is from I believe uh, the Northeast region. Uh, Bro uh, Brooklyn Ninja Academy uh, hosted their regional, so shout out to Brooklyn Ninja Academy. And he is ready to get underway, asking the referee a few questions before beginning. Uh, looks like we're having a bit of technical difficulties, but we are still moving right underway. And he's off. Now, Joseph O'Connell just witnessed uh, Rowan Moore uh, clear all eight obstacles right in front of him. Uh, let's see how he'll respond. Like, will he be able to join Rowan Moore and complete all eight obstacles? Making short work of the cliffhanger so far. And makes the dismount. Now the slack line has been pretty tricky for our athletes today. Gets through the first one and just has the second one and makes it to the ending platform of that obstacle. And it's on the crux point right now, having a bit of technical difficulties. Makes it all the way to the UFO. Let's see. Oh, he's spinning around right now. He's gonna have to. Good correction here, though. Absolutely. It's yeah. So that crux point uh, has just been beaten by three competitors in a row. I'm sorry, three athletes in a row. And now we're onto the fidget spinners right here. So it looks like going to reset. Uh, Joseph O'Connell is rocking uh, Series 1, shout out to Series 1, and uh, these fidget spinners were designed by uh, DGS, shout out to DGS, and Joseph O'Connell uh, building up a few extra swings and goes for the dismount. I'm starting to run a little, but it shouldn't be an issue at this point in the run, because he's got one more obstacle after this. Yep, and we got... Another obstacle down, only has about 25 seconds left to clear this kaleidoscope, and we just saw Rowan Moore not only clear this obstacle, but made a one-hand save on that special delivery, makes the transfer over to the cliffhanger. A lot of backswing gets here, it. and he gets it, another one! Joseph O'Connell also clears the full court. Wow. Full clear. Two and save in a on row. that special not makes the that. transfer over to the cliffhanger. Two in a row. A lot this of backswing so here. And he gets it another yeah. one. And Joseph O'Connell. Keep in mind, that special delivery grab is not easy. Like, in fact, it's been proven to be very, very difficult for our athletes. And that yeah. puts Joseph O'Connell in second place so far. Yep. With Rowan was just a little bit faster, so he. It's the lead for that, but still, only two finishers should be very proud of that, run. That was fantastic. Absolutely. Very, very good run from Joseph O'Connell. And now we have Aiden Arthelmas uh, up, to the, up to the starting platform now. Aiden is located in the New England region. Uh, one of looks again, like the, one of the nin ninja labs. I know that there's the Saratoga and Albany ones. Uh, they're up there in upstate New York. Recognize Absolutely. that neon green logo. And we are ready to get underway um, with Aiden Barthelmas's run. Uh, but I wonder how he's thinking right now. He just saw not one, but two full course clears back to back. So he's definitely has his work cut out for him if he wants to get onto that podium. And I am confident that he can do it. He's a very, Aiden is a very talented ninja and he showed that on the flow course earlier today.
Looks like we're waiting on the referee. For those of you just tuning in, uh, thank you for tuning in to the Tier 2 World Ninja League Championships. I am Evan Mel, and I am with Philip Scott. And we are at Austin Ninjas in Austin, Texas, with the course designed by Nick Fordney and the rest of the Austin Ninjas team. Um, we are just now about to get into Aiden Barthelmas's run as we prepare to get underway. You can see and looking at the two finishers so far. Yes, and those were our previous two runners right there. Uh, Rowan Moore was the first to break through on that tough kaleidoscope. Um, especially with that small special delivery grab. And then Joseph O'Connell comes and takes it down just like that. So we... Well, we still got plenty of runners to come. Um, Ethan Barthelmas is one of them, and he is on the starting line right now. All right, the ref is there. Should be ready to roll right now. Focusing up real here, real quick here, and he is off. Very quick for these uh, first few obstacles right here. Now we have these cliffhangers. Reaches the top point, makes his way down. Just got that dismount right there. And gets it about on the same pace as um, previous row, Joseph O'Connell. Uh, oh, it looks that. like uh, it's it's, tough. they'll have to review it. It was it's tough to tell. Close. That's that is going to be under review, but looks like our crux point right here. Um, these uh, U this UFO uh, Lachey right here with that pump with that pumpkin hold. Uh, is starting to get figured out, but Ian Barthelmas is spinning around right now. Oh, just misses the lift there. Yeah, it was and just tough. Definitely <laughs> getting spun around, he's probably a little bit busy too. Absolutely. But is making up for it on the fidget spinners. Yep, no problem. He's gonna big dismount here. There we go. Onto our ring tech. What's very important here is your backswing. Uh, you can use that to help get that ring out of that little hold right there. And we see just that with Aiden, Bar Aiden Barthelmas. And he goes straight into the kaleidoscope. We're not seeing a ton of our athletes take their time to size up this obstacle and really rest. Oh, he almost gets it though. Nice he almost gets it too, but still a great run by Ethan Barthelmas. His mom is super proud of him, and I would be too. Great run by Aiden Barthelmas. So, one thing to keep in mind is uh, on that slack line, we don't know if he touched, so it's possible his run could be under review. But for now, we move on to Grant Goodson. Grant is out of ITC Ninja, so that's the Southeast North Carolina. So he must have qualified out of uh, level, level up. up. Yep. So shouts level up and shouts to ITC Ninja. And Grant Goodson is already on the course, bounding through these first couple of obstacles. Uh, looks like something that we're noticing on that final okay. hold right there. There we go is a lot of our athletes try to grab the back half of that pole. Oh, incredible lock-offs right here on the cliffhanger. And he started swinging around a little bit sideways, but then he pulled up and got himself stable. Just has the dismount. 
Oh, oh. That's a, I hope he's okay because that looked like a very hard fall, but he looks just fine as he goes on to the slack lines. Halfway through. He's got it. Yep, that's that's been tricky for our athletes here today. Um, of course, shout out to Nick Fortney and the rest of the Austin Ninjas uh, team for designing this course. Uh, definitely proven to be a very challenging course for our athletes here today. Um, we only have two full finishers on the full course, and we had none on the flow course. So definitely challenging. Grant Goodson putting up a great fight on the the R crux point, but didn't have the uh, didn't have the grip strength we needed to get through the rest of the obstacle. But now onto the fidget spinner, has to make a lache right here and does just that. Grant Goodson making oh. all of his oh almost yeah the rules are you know you have to clear the front face of the obstacle and almost did yep. that backhand. That backhand touched. And he's keeping on moving. Look at that. Got enough time left to try this and then the next obstacle. Yep, 15 seconds left. Go straight into the kaleidoscope right here. Oh, I just slipped. Still a great run by Grant Goodson. Um, definitely had some nasty falls, uh, especially on the cliffing right there. Um, but still a fantastic run. Um, now we move on to our leaderboard. Uh, we have Rowan Moore still in first place with Joseph O'Connell in second and Ryan Cantu in third. Up next, we have a Dexterity Depot Ninja, and that is Wesley Tomasco. So shout out to Dexterity Depot as Wesley begins to take on the course. It's like uh, getting his hands all warmed up. It uh, looks like he's off a uh, little technical difficulties. And now we have our Holds right here as our second obstacle, making quick work of them. Grabs onto the front half. You see a lot of our athletes grabbing onto the back half, maybe to give them a little bit more room for error. But Wesley Tomasco going very, very good on the cliffhanger right now. Uh, just got to make that dismount and does just that. I want to give a massive shout out to all of our athletes and coaches out here at the Tier 2 Real Ninja League Championships today. Uh, some of them had to come a very, very long way just to not only compete, but also coach their, coach their athletes, and especially to the parents out there who also had to travel very, very long hours uh, to go and support their young athlete. As Leslie Tomasco is certainly making everyone proud on this Crux Point obstacle right here onto our spinning UFO. Let's see if he'll be able to get the lache. Looks like he got it. Great job by Wesley Tomasco as we move on to the 50 spinners. Makes the lache over to the second one and is going for the dismount taking an extra swing and gets it Wesley Tomasco uh, has not failed an obstacle on this course either, but gets the ring out and now he is moving very very smoothly now he only has about 20 seconds to get through Kaleidoscope he Starts to go right now, makes it all the way to the cliffhanger ledge. Now let's see. To the special delivery. As the oh. backswing. Oh he peels right off. Well done though. Yes, very well done. Um 
definitely had to rush that final part of the obstacle because um, due to the time, but still, throughout those first few obstacles, uh, all the way up until the Kaleidoscope, clearing every single one of them, um, Wesley Tomasco should be very, very proud. And we have uh, Miles Spadler on the course now out of Rise Ninjas. So shout outs to Rise Ninja. Also qualified for the Tier 2 uh, championships uh, through Austin Ninjas. So he should be very familiar with Austin Ninjas obstacles. And it's looking like that as well uh, through the cliffhangers. And makes the easy dismount right there. Now he's got the slack lines. Oh! Took, took a bit of a faster approach there, but manages to make it through. Now use it. Oh, that incredible grip strength. Wow. Having both of your hands that close to each other. Wow. Onto the UFO. Good link shake. there. Absolutely. Now let's see how he'll be able to handle um, the fidget spinners. Makes the jump to that uh, second part of the fidget spinner for a little closer lache. And gets it. Just got to nail a dismount right here and does. Has uh, over a minute left still uh, onto the ring tech right here. Making nice work of the ring tech. Miles has one obstacle left from a full clear, and it's the very tricky kaleidoscope. Only two athletes have been able to clear this obstacle. Both uh, Rowan Moore and Joseph O'Connor who stand at the top of our leaderboard as Miles Standler gets the lache over to the cliffhanger ledge. Now let's see how he handles oh. it to the... Oh, that was a good kid short. back. That was a good kid back. Bro. Absolutely. A lot of really good stuff to take away from Miles Stadler's run. Um, great run. And of course, uh, goes right onto our leaderboard over in fifth place. Uh, knocking down Brandon Bernaldez to sixth. And we also have Luca, Luke D'Souza at fourth. Miles Sadler goes into fifth. Uh, Wesley Tomasco is in seventh. Liam Ruluru is in eighth. And then Eli Miller at ninth. And we have four runners left. We have Seth Hughes, Sam Barlow, Mason Manley, and Timmy Gregory. And after these four runners, I'll give a I'll give a quick little rundown of all of our athletes, how they're stacking up in the strongest ninja competition so far. Half of the first half that we saw earlier this morning. Uh, all of those athletes have also done skills, but these athletes will be doing skills. Um, they will be doing skills when the preteen girls are running in a little bit. So I'll definitely keep you posted throughout the evening. Oh, good save Thank there on the post. Good save there, and thanks for the correction, Phil. I thought they already ran skills. <laughs> But now Seth Hughes is currently on to the slack lines. Um, if memory serves me correct, uh, Seth is first place in the preteen males for um, on the flow course. Got to uh, the UFOs with the fastest time. Is and a nice kip off of that pumpkin. Now he's got to turn back around. And he's swinging, makes the lache. Just only has three more obstacles from a full course clear. Uh, currently on the fidget spinners. Takes a little bit, looks like it took a bit of time to rest. If any and he right throws into right into it. Seth Hughes uh, showcasing his talents on the biggest stage for all of our Tier 2 athletes. 42 seconds left. Nice kickbacks right here. 
and a dismount. Just one obstacle away from Ooh. another full course clear. Makes it. Oh, just so uh, there. Yeah, still a great run from Seth Hughes. Uh, gets a big hug after hitting the buzzer. And that, again, is what Ninja is all about. As he moves seventh into our leaderboard, uh, only just ahead of Wesley Tomasco and Liam LaRue. And, but we have three runners left to go. Sam Barlow. Um, we have an MLab Ohio athlete right here. So shout out to MLab Ohio. And looks like and Sam Barlow is ready to go. And he's making quick work of these obstacles so far. Makes the dismount. An incredible walk off from the cliffhanger. Nice pull ups there. And let's see how he'll handle this dismount. He gets it. That's a that's a very tricky dismount. That's not as close as it looks. And of course the slack lines. <laughs> Oh, and Sam goes down on the slack lines, but you still got plenty of obstacles to make up ground. As a bit of a oh, oh wow! Now even yeah, um, slid right off, but Sam Barlow is still coming in, not letting anything phase him as he goes for the dismount on the. Hey. Now, Sam Barlow can still get pretty high up on the rankings, especially if he clears the Kaleidoscope, which, remember, only two athletes were able to do. Makes a nice stretch over. Chalking up because he's got about 50 seconds left before he goes into the kaleidoscope. Taking a bit of a breath here, and now he's off. Makes the transfer over to the cliffhanger, but now here's the really, really hard part. That transfer, oh, and comes up just short. Didn't have enough momentum, but still a great run from Sam Barlow. Still um, having amazing technique, especially on the cliffhanger. For sure. Now we're down to our last two runners. And that means that Rowan Moore has guaranteed himself a spot on the podium for the full course. Let's see how Mason Manley and Timmy Gregory will ha will uh, see if they can join him on that podium. And here goes Mason right now. Starting off strong. Coach Lulu cheering him on. Big shouts to Coach Lulu. Making absolutely quick work of these first few obstacles. Now into the cliffhanger. It's to the top, starts the descent, and fill up his momentum for the dismount, and gets it. Moving through the full course with a great time, just under two minutes, and gets to the slack line. Now, this obstacle has been very, very tough. This, especially this pumpkin hold right here that Mason is making his way over. See if he's gonna lache to it. Mostly we see people static it, but he gets the lache. And he gets the kip over to the UFO, but he is spinning around right now. Gonna have to control his get some body control back and go for this lache right here. And gets it. Next we have the fidget spinners. Uh, Mason Manley has yet to fall on an obstacle on this full course. 
three obstacles away from a full course clear. And reminder that only two of our athletes here today have gotten a full course clear. Now Mason Manley onto the ring tech is making it look easy. Now he has about 45 seconds left for this final obstacle. Taking some shot from his coach. Begins the Kaleidoscope. And we've seen a lot more athletes make it to that cliffhanger ledge. What? And he links right to it. Now this is the tricky part. Oh, and he slides right off of the cliffhanger ledge. Still a great run by Mason Manley. Uh, great time and great run out of Mason Manley. Um, definitely put on a clinic uh, this entire this entire competition. Especially on that Crooks Point fifth obstacle where he decided to lache to that pumpkin hold instead of sagging to it like a lot of our other athletes did today. And he managed to get through the obstacle and clear. And last but certainly not least, we have Timmy Gregory, the final runner for PT Mail. Getting some advice from Coach Lulu. Uh, shout out to Coach Lulu. Looks like Timmy Gregory will be underway fairly, fairly shortly. Timmy Gregory getting ready and set, and he's off. Making quick work of that first obstacle right there. Through the hold very, very easily. Timmy Gregory, uh, Timmy Gregory is out of the New England region. Uh, again, another one of our New England uh, athletes here today. And obviously, uh, during our final run, I want to give a big shout out to everyone involved in this amazing event. Uh, Chris Wolcheski, the owner and founder of World Ninja League. Uh, my co my co commentator here, Philip Scott. Um, we have obviously everyone at Austin Ninjas, including Nick Courtney and the in the Austin awesome Ninjas team for designing this course. Uh, all of our coaches here today, um, the likes of Coach Lulu, Jonathan Bange, Abel Gonzalez, uh, Bradley Collins, and many, many more. Um, and of course, the athletes and their parents here today to cheer each other on. And Look really how much time he has left. Day. Yes, and as, I, as I'm shouting out everyone, uh, Timmy Gregory is has over a minute left onto the Kaleidoscope. Let's see if he's able to jump. nail. All out. Yep, there you go. With the jump. Oh, so no! close. That would have been an he insane time. There. Absolutely. That put him in the third. Yeah, that was the fastest uh, to that point. He was so close, but what a run. That still would do, do him really well in the in the standings. Absolutely, and that will get him a spot on the podium for this event. Uh, joining him on the podium are two full clears, Joseph O'Connell and Rowan Moore. Yep, so they'll be going home with some hardware. Um, and then, of course, the other individual horse event that we had. Timmy will get another medal there too, um, because he got second. So he's looking really good for um, for an overall. Once we get word on how skills goes later this evening, and then Mason and Logan also picking up some hardware. Great runs by all of our athletes, of course. And next up, we're taking a short break, and then we'll be uh, some cameras moved around, and then we'll be. Uh, moving on to the preteen girls divisions, they've already run skills, so I'll be so we'll give a quick rundown of how that's going. So right now, uh, 
Yeah, Ala Magnuson uh, swept both of the skills, first and a first, and then second place so far is Arissa De La Garza, who's gotten a fourth and a second, and Ash Meyer has gotten a third and a fourth, Everly Camp's second eighth, Gala Domencic, uh, eight and a th eight and three, and then Jordan Morehouse, six and five. So, uh, as he, so yeah, Ella is looking in really good position right now. Um, second place, or if not second, two points, two first places. Uh, we have 27 girls running up uh, on these two courses next. Uh, but yeah, this has been a great, great competition so far. Thanks everybody for watching, and thank you to Evan for commentating alongside me as I'm running this stream. <laughs> and um, thanks for sticking with us through everything. And uh, yeah, we will be back shortly with the girls.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the World Ninja League Championship Tier 2 Championships in Austin, Texas, hosted here at the awesome Austin Ninjas facility. I'm Philip Scott, alongside Evan Mel. We've been having the action all day. Preteen males just went, now it's time for the preteen girls. They've already done their skills, as you can check the format right here. We have two courses, two skills. We'll be broadcasting the courses. We'll keep you updated on the skills. Uh, but in the skills so far, Ella Magnuson is a name to watch out for. She got first place in both of them. But as you can see, we're, we were very well in the championship because of how the format works. Lowest lowest number wins combined placement. So she already has two first. That's going to set her up really well. And medals, of course, are also awarded for individual skills. So all the athletes that have done the two skills, um, tech and power, uh, tech and dash, I should say, and then force combined, and then skills combined also have their own medals. So lots of hardware to go around today. Lots of strong runs we've seen so far. Let's we'll see how these young ladies do. Alrighty, uh. So our first uh, athlete here today uh, for the preteen female division is State Sadie Seinberg. Uh, Sadie uh, is out of the Brooklyn Ninja Academy. Uh, they're here to championships. They're regional championships. Um, big shout out to Brooklyn Ninja Academy uh, out in the Northeast Division. Uh, there's Coach Lulu. Uh, He's been around here all day. Uh, big shout outs to him. Uh, definitely had to put in a lot of time and effort uh, today. And we'll have to do the same tomorrow. And that applies to all of these coaches here today. Uh, way too many of the names. But, uh, for sure. And then, uh, Say Seinberg, uh, getting ready to get started. And we are off. So Sadie looking to build up some momentum up to that ring up there and does just that. And decides to use the spider walls. Oh for that ring now. Good. Yes. And now we have two more holds on this obstacle to go. Using the spider walk to get through the obstacle, not even bothering with the holds right there. Gets to that final hold and is looking to make a dismount and does just that. Now onto our wobbly balance beam. This is a very tricky obstacle. And we can see her uh, definitely Taking some time on it. I'm going to put down. Oh, good. Looks, uh, looks like she left to that little second safety net over there. What makes it through? She has enough time to beat this. If you through. Has to get through the slack ladder. I'm sorry, the slack line. Gets to the end of it. Just makes Our that transfer over the world. Good effort, good fight though out of Sadie. Very, very good job out of Sadie. Um, I really like how she decided to go for the opting for the spider walls as opposed to the holds. So I wonder yeah, if sure. our uh the rest of our athletes are going to uh are they they should pay attention. Maybe, like, if you could just get through all of those holes, maybe you could just beta break the obstacle. But, oh, we'll shout outs. See. But for now, um, shout outs to Nick for me for the, uh, course design. Uh, definitely had to put in a lot of hard work himself. But up next, we have Libby Campbell. Uh, Libby is out of the Northeast region as well. Qualified uh, through the Brooklyn Ninja Academy's Tier 2 Regionals, uh, so Regional Championships, so big shout out to Brooklyn Ninja Academy again. I got 
Taking a big, big deep breath. As Libby gets ready to begin. And she's off through the shrinking steps. Opting to use the uh, spire walls rather pretty quickly. And that ring, there she goes. Still using the spiral walls. Makes the nice grab over. Just got to reach that blue hold right there and dismount. Now onto this wobbly balance beam. Oh! Completely skips it, just going for those little foot close holds. As Libby moves on to the slack line, moving very quickly through it. Just has to make that jump to the rope, and it does is. just that. Now Libby is pulling back the swing on the aerial barrel here. Um, looking to get some momentum, early momentum. Just has to make that jump to that ring. It doesn't quite get there. But now Libby has about 10 seconds left to try out the double steps and the UFOs. Now one change from the preteen male course to the preteen female course is that um, they only have to worry about the first two UFOs as opposed to all three. Yep, and you so can that's see definitely that going to be something to keep there. in mind. Yes, that blue mat is the uh, new uh, the new landing platform for our preteen females, and a great run at Libby Campbell um, as well, making it definitely uh, moved at a pretty quick pace as well. Um, but up next, we move on to Tempe mm -hmm. Coffee. Yep, Tempe Coffee is up next. Uh, also out of the Brooklyn Ninja Academy. Uh, so shout out to Brooklyn Ninja Academy. And is off and running. Makes a nice grab onto that ring. Is she going to skip that last hold? No, she won't, but she'll still clear regardless. I think we might see a bit of a beta break on this balance beam right here. Uh, those little safety platforms, you're going to see, a, probably going to see a lot of these athletes just skip the balance beam and just go off of that. But now, onto the slack line and through the rope. Now we just have um, the aerial barrel. Definitely an, an obstacle worth watching here on this flow course. Uh, shout outs to Nick Fortney for designing the obstacle. And building up a lot of swing right here. It gets nice to the ring. Onto the cliffhanger. Now you can use the uh, metal supports, but Tempe doesn't need them. Just gotta make that dismount right there off the cliffhanger. Yes. Yep, she's Double going up the time. Double step. Yes. Okay. Nice one, though. Absolutely. Tempe Coffee doing a very nice job on the course. And then up next, uh, we have a Dexterity Depot Ninja. Um, Sundo Bogdan, I believe, is how you pronounce it. Yes, and, and the, so many, we have our, another one of our Dexterity Depot Ninjas. Uh, definitely a good chunk of them have come out uh, to Austin Ninjas today as Sundo begins uh, going onto that first ring. Building up a lot of momentum to reach that second one and does just that. Using the spiral walls to her advantage. 
For those of you just tuning in, welcome back to the Tier 2 World Ninja League Championships. I am Evan Mellon, and I am joined by Philip Scott, um, and we are live over in Austin Ninjas in Austin, Texas. Uh, so shout out to Austin Ninjas, and as well as Nick Fortney and the Austin Ninjas team who designed all of the courses that you are seeing today. As we see Sundell Balkan on the slack line right now, and now is going to have to make that leap to the rope. And does just that. Now onto the aerial barrel. We just saw uh, Tempe Coffee uh, absolutely nail this obstacle not too long ago. Let's see if Sundell can do the same. Makes the leap, but doesn't quite grab onto the ring. But she still has some time to try out the double steps. It is making really good work up then. Double steps are not an easy obstacle at all, so Sendell should be very proud that she got to the top. And now is looking to go on the UFOs. Doesn't quite grab. It had the hand placements right, just couldn't hang on, but Sundell clear, uh... Sundell hits the buzzer as we move on to Allison Holmes. Uh, Allison is out. In uh, the New England region. So many New England ninjas have come out to the World Ninja League uh, Tier 2 Championships today. Uh, which is very nice to see, especially since it is a very, very long journey. Uh, all the way from that area, all the way over to Austin, Texas, for to, for this weekend's competition. But Allison Holmes uh, start starting off on the stripping steps in the queue and is off. Allison Holmes building up some momentum. Grabs the first, the second of that ring. Grabs the third and now has the two holds. You're seeing a lot of these athletes uh, grabbing those little T-bar holds uh, towards like the back half of them. That way, by a little bit of a safety net if they were to miss. And it gets them a place to hang on to their, uh, hang on to their other hand if they decide to go uh, both hands. So, Allison Holmes uh, still on the course. Looks like we might have a bit of technical difficulties. But she is on the aerial barrel now and manages to grab onto the ring. Very, very nice job out of Allison Holmes. Uh, just has to get through the cliffhanger and then all she has left are the double steps and the UFOs. And using that uh, support beam to her advantage and gets through it. Allison Holmes making her way up those yeah, double steps right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Time ticking now. Still a great run out of Allison Holmes. Uh, definitely conquered each obstacle with absolute ease. Especially uh, on the second obstacle, the rings and the, the spider walls in the rings. So very, very good job uh, from for her as we move on to Sarah McLaughlin. Sarah uh, is... Out of, Aust out of the South Central Division, so pretty local, uh, re well, relatively local compared to some of our other athletes here. Uh, from Rise Ninja Warrior, shout out to Rise Ninja Warrior, another uh, Texas based gym. Getting ready to take on the course. Boop, boop, boop. 
and is off and running. Gets the shrinking steps down. Really got to extend out and does just that. Using the uh, spider walls to her advantage, making her way through, grabs that final hole and makes the dismount. She is not going to entirely skip the, skip the balance beam right here. She's going to try and give it a go. We saw some of our previous athletes uh, skip that, uh, skip the balance beam entirely due to a few of the. Oh, it looks like she stepped down. Very unfortunate, oh. but she still got plenty, of, plenty of time to try out all the other obstacles and keep her blood going uh, for the full course. And make a jump for the rope. And now we have uh, the aerial barrel. Oh, whoa. Good save. Very good save. Trying to grab onto that uh, second uh, handle on the swing. Now this is another obstacle that uh, does not look as easy as it looks. Oh, and makes makes the grab, hanging on for dear life as Sarah McLaughlin He's putting makes up a it really great right here. Oh, but time expires. Ah. Yep. Time expired. Oh, so like she's getting a little bit of chalk. Going to try the double steps. Going up them pretty easily. He just got up. And there's Sarah now I McLaughlin. Think time expires. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we'll definitely see Sarah McLaughlin on the full course uh, coming up very, very soon. And now we move on to Katie. Fitzpatrick is there she is um, Katie Fitzpatrick uh, out of out of the Northeast Division Northeast uh, region uh, Qualifying at Brooklyn Ninja Academy, so shout outs to Brooklyn Ninja Academy. And we're in a lab rat shirt, so shout outs to the movement labs. Making her way through these uh, holds very, very easily. Drops down and makes the dismount. Like with many of our female athletes, they're just Skipping the wobbling balance beam. I don't blame them. That thing looks very, very scary. Now, through the slack line, just gotta make that jump to the rope and that's it. Oh, and it's a okay, Fitzpatrick uh, building up some momentum right here. Swinging back and forth. It makes the leap to the ring. And stacks all the way over to the cliffhanger. Now we'll just have as a few more moves to make before she clears this obstacle and moves on to double steps. Getting pretty high up on that cliffhanger too, making that dismount just a little bit easier. And gets it. Very, very smart decision there for Katie uh, to go a little bit further on that cliffhanger. So, starts Devil Steps as time just runs out, but still a great run out of Katie Fitzpatrick. She should be very proud of herself, and we I look forward to seeing her run on the full course. For sure, and take a look at her current 
leaderboard. It's seven runners. Yes, and Allison Holmes is currently in first place, uh, clearing the first seven obstacles. And next up, we have uh, Riley Moss. Uh, right, Riley right. Moss. Shout outs to Level Up and shout outs to Chad Holmes, who is coaching her. And, sh and shout outs to North Carolina because that is where our Tier 1 Nin World Ninja League Championships are going to take place. Uh, over in the Greensboro Coliseum. Uh, you can check that out on our website, uh, worldninjaleague.org. And just remember that the top three athletes in each age division uh, for their full results will qualify for the Tier 1 World Championship. So definitely something to keep in mind. But Riley Moss is making her way through the course really, really easily. Has about 30 seconds left. Chalking up a little bit before uh, the ring and the cliffhangers. Building up some swing. It's tough to get this momentum going. It always feels like you have to like swing back and forth. Like, but it's all about timing and just like wait. It, it's a kind of a funny feeling, but it's so hard sometimes to get it down. Makes the jump as time expires. Doesn't quite grab the ring, but still a great run out of Riley Moss. As she's it's a start to double steps, but realizes that time just runs out and Chad Horn is super proud of his athlete and he very much well should be. So our next runner is coming up to the starting line. And I believe this is Savannah Willinger. Yes, Savannah Lillinger. And then Savannah is out of Austin Austin Ninjas. Um, they're in South says, Central. Hold on, I think this it is says, Riley Moss. Sorry. No, it's Savannah. That's right. <laughs> it, it just kind of switched. I think. Gotcha. Oh, okay, the wrong person was if I was, yep, I was confused. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 I was, I was about to say, I was like, that's a Brooklyn Ninja Academy shirt right yeah. there. <laughs> but right now we have Savannah Lillinger. Uh, Lillinger, making her... I think. Yes, Lillinger, uh, my apologies. He's edited now on to second one here. Swinging her way through. Misses that first grab, but manages to get it a second time around. I get to that final hold and does just that. Oh. Oh. Doesn't get too far in the wobbly balance beam. Uh, however, she still has plenty of obstacles to go. Uh, oh, and slides right off of the slack line. Uh, still putting up a really solid run. Still got plenty of obstacles to take on. Let's see how she'll handle the aerial barrel. This is proving to be a bit of a crux point for our uh, female athletes. So let's see how Savannah will be able to handle it. Makes the jump, comes up just a little bit short. But she is moving on to try the double steps out. Making very nice work on the double steps. Now just has to go for the UFOs, but it looks like time just ran out. Still a great run from Savannah Lillinger as she hits the buzzer. And then up next as Lucia Aventajago, Jado. Uh, Lucia 
is out of Brooklyn Ninja Academy. Uh, shout out to Lucia Brooklyn Ninja Academy. Ventajado, I think. Uh, yes, thank you. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you for the correction, Phil. And using uh, her feet on the spider walls very easily. Nice work on the wobbly balance beam as well. A little bit scary on the slack line, but manages to save it. Uh, making great time too. A uh, bit over 50 seconds left onto the back half of this course. Lucia makes the grab and makes it all the way to the cliffhanger. Uses the uh, support beam to her advantage. Taking some advice from her coach. Let's see if she's going to use that support beam to help her dismount. And she does. Very smart decision. And second and to get up. Gotta get up double steps really, really quickly. We have to turn around as time expires. Wow. Going to start the, but she uh, does UFOs. get the touch point on the UFOs, though, as you can see by the leaderboard. Yep, she's one of two to get there so far, so that was just in the nick of time. Quarter of a Absolutely. second. Absolutely. Very smart decision as well, because uh, that could easily be the difference between a medal and even and a pretty high up placement. And then we move on to Billion Post. Dylan is out of the New England region again. One of our many New England athletes here today. As Dylan is pulling me up some swing right here. And try and make the grab over to that ring using the spire walls to her advantage. For those of you just tuning in, uh, welcome to the two tier two World Ninja League Championships. I am Evan Mel, and I am joined by Philip Scott, and we are live over at Austin Ninjas in Austin, Texas. Uh, and shout outs to Nick Fordney and the rest of the Austin Ninjas team for designing these courses uh, that have proven to be very, very challenging so far, um, especially uh, to these preteen female uh, athletes here today. Um, we have yet to see a full clear on this full course. Dylan makes a great save right on that rope. Now we just have that balance that will swing over to the ring on the aerial barrel. Gonna build up some swing here. Time running out. And time runs out while on the swing. Goes for the jump. Great. He doesn't fight quite out get of it. Yes, absolutely. Great fight out of going. So after Dylan Post, we have Caroline. Caroline Scheffler. Caroline is out of the South Central region, uh, qualified through Austin Ninjas. Definitely familiar with a lot of these obstacles. Uh, something about the uh, Austin, something about the South Central uh, regional region uh, athletes is that. Because their regional qualifier was at the Austin Ninjas as well, uh, they get our they know how these obstacles work. So, and just remember, no two obstacle, no two same obstacles are the are fully the same. Like one Ninja Gym spider walls can be different from another Ninja Gyms, for example. But as Caroline Shepler is making quick work on the course right now, uh, definitely want to give a big shout out to 
all of the ninjas who have traveled here, uh, whether it be coaches, athletes, or family and friends, out to World Ninja League Tier 2 Championships as Caroline Shuffler is making quick work of these balance obstacles. Uh, has about 50 seconds left uh, going into uh, this rope. Has about 40 seconds left uh, for the back half of this low course. Building up some swing. Definitely can be pretty tricky, a deceptively tricky obstacle. And Caroline falls right here, comes up just short of that uh, ring, but is making great work on the double steps, even skips a step as well. Now, just has the two UFOs. Goes for the leap. Hand placement looked a little good, just didn't hang on. But still a great run at Caroline Shepler, wild fight, and obviously that double step technique is second to none. Now we have Fiala Dame, I believe that's Dimensic. how you pronounce it. Dimensic. Uh, she is out of, again, the New England region. Many, many, many New England ninjas coming out. Uh, definitely a very a hot spot for so a lot of ninja talent. And skips that final uh, hold on that second obstacle. It is moving at a very quick pace right now. Excellent dismount right there to the aerial barrel. Gathering up a few swings. We'll go for it and stacks all the way to it. Grabs that cliffhanger. And now, is she going to use the pull right here? Uh, she will not. Uh, looking to go for the dismount. Decides to push off of the pull. I just saw uh, one of our earlier athletes uh, push off. And now we're on the double steps. Uh, looking like a really good time right here. Now will see how uh, she'll handle the UFOs. Goes for it. Again, hand placement looks really, really good. Just moving on, but still a great run for Fiala Dementic. As we move on to Cameron... Heatherton? Uh, I hope I pronounced that right. Heatherington. Heatherington, yes. Thank you for the correction. And then we have a Northeast Region Ninja uh, qualified through uh, Brooklyn Ninja Academy. So shout outs to Brooklyn uh, Ninja Academy. Uh, looks like uh, we're just waiting for Cameron to get to the starting platform. Oh, looks like she's there right now. Another one of our Brooklyn Ninja Academy team shirts. So shout outs as well. Getting some a uh, little bit of play by play from the ref. Making sure everything is all set for this run right here. We still got plenty of uh, runs to go, not just on this uh, flow course, but also on the full course coming soon. As Cameron Heather Heatherington is about to start her run on the flow course. And I uh, want to give another big shout out to Austin Ninjas in Austin, Texas for hosting this amazing event. Uh, shout out to all the coaches. You see Coach Lulu right here. Uh, been running around the entire gym all day. Uh, we have other we have other coaches here uh, like Abel Gonzalez, Jonathan Bange, and many, many, many more. And of course, Nick Fortney and the Austin Ninjas team for designing all the courses that you will see during this weekend. And uh, keep in mind that the top three 
uh, her age division uh, in total amount of points in the strongest ninja format will will qualify for the Tier 1 World Championships being held in North Carolina. So it looks like uh, Cameron Hetherington is about to begin. Looks like the ref is about to get her going. Making sure she doesn't have any questions. And she is off. Quick work out of the shrinking steps. Building up some swing onto the yeah, first ring right there. And again, using the spiral walls to her advantage. Making her way through very, very easily. Yeah, oh, we're going to see a lot of the, these athletes uh, just skip that balance beam. Um, now we have the rope. Gets it, and with about 50 seconds left in this back half of the course, so Cameron has a lot of time left to definitely get make some progress onto the course, if not get a full clear. Building up a lot of momentum right here. Uh, doesn't quite reach the right ring yet. Still building up momentum and gets it, stacks it all the way to it. On to a cliffhanger. Uh, going for the. Oh, going straight onto the support beam. Now let's see if Cameron can make this dismount. Uh, the time is ticking right here. She's going to have to dismount pretty quickly. And she does it. So, Cameron, Heather, Cameron Heatherington makes it all the way to the double steps before. The clock hits zero. And realizing the coach told her, but still very, very good run out of Cameron Hetherington. Especially uh grab it with that nice grab on the aerial barrel. And up next we have Dakota Harley. Uh Dakota is currently on the starting platform. Dakota is from the New England region. Uh, qualified there from Empire Ninja. So shout out to Empire Ninja. And she is off and running. Very, very nice build up right here. Going through uh, these all of these obstacles at a very efficient pace, too. That's about. A uh, minute five seconds left as she moves on to the slack line. And she's going to leap for the rope and sticks it. Going for that uh, first side. Leaps for the swing but pulls it back to make sure she gets some extra momentum. Very smart decision to reset right there. Oh, she's got to go for that ring and gets it. Very efficiently throughout all of these obstacles. Is she going for the dismount on the cliffhanger? Uh, doesn't look like she got it, but still. I hope our athletes have paid attention to that because that might be a beta break right there. We did see that quite a bit with our male athletes. We might start seeing that with our female athletes. Uh, makes the jump to the UFO. Uh, Impulsement uh, was there, just did not have the grip, and I bet you Dakota is definitely exhausted from all the skills and waiting happening around earlier on, but still a fantastic run, and I cannot wait to see her in the full course. And another Dexterity Depot Ninja is up right now, and that is Harper Chapones. So, shout out to Dexterity Depot. Um, and all of their team, and especially Matt Bradley, who uh, was a huge Dexterity Depot uh, ninja, one, one of the best ninjas in the sport right now. As Harper Chaponis going for the dismount right here. 
going on that wobbly balance game, not opting to just skip it with the safe with the little safety nets. Taking a bit of a slower approach, but just wants to clear the obstacle. And does just that. Now onto the slack line. Uh I've said this before with the three team males, but it's slack lines are not easy and you're seeing a lot of these athletes uh clear it with absolutely no problem. So it really shows just how much the talent in this sport has grown. Building up a lot of swing right here. Goes for the jump, but just misses with her, her right hand. But now she has uh, the double steps to go. Uh, trying to get these, this and the UFOs uh, out of the uh, cleared to not only build up a bit of confidence back, but get used to the obstacles because the full course is coming. And that course is very tough. Uh, once again, the hand placement was there, but the grip strength just could not hang on. Still a great run out of Harper Chaponis. And now we move on to Nola Ewald, uh, who just made it to the starting platform. Nola uh, competed, competes in the South Central region, so relatively local. Um, so big shout outs to uh, Austin Ninjas, who hosted that regional championship. Uh, getting coached up by one of the coaches at Brooklyn Ninja Academy. So, very nice of them to hop over and co coach an athlete that may, doesn't have a coach uh, with them at the competition. So, very nice to see uh, that support between uh, different ninja gyms and coaches helping out the other kids. Tru truly shows what the sport is all about. And Absolutely. Noah Awald Having some insane momentum shifts on those rings and those holds and dismounts. Looks like she gets through the wobbly balance beam without uh, using the safety net right there. And it's a bit of a low grab on the rope, but that didn't face her at all. As she moves on to the aerial barrel, which has proven to be a bit of a cross point for our female athletes. As a lot of swing she has right a swing here. There. Oh yeah, nice work. She has a she has a good amount of time left. Should be able to make it over here. Yep. Yes, I thought so. She can get this here. Yep. Uh, it looks like she got, got it. it. Definitely keep an eye on that. Um, that could be under review. Uh, but as for now, uh, Noah Ewald is uh, has to do great at the yep, top. There she goes. <laughs> Hitting the buzzer. Great work by Noah Ewald. Um, definitely getting to that insanely hard crux point of those UFOs. And as we take a look at our leaderboard, uh, she goes into fifth place. Definitely some great runs uh, going on right now. And Phil, we are back in business with um, Arissa De La Garza, I believe that is. Arissa is another one Arissa of our Garza, South yeah. Yes. Uh, another one of our South Central Ninjas. Uh, qualified for the regional championships here at Austin Ninjas, so she knows how these obs how these obstacles are, uh, like grip holds, uh, how deep they are. Um, something that maybe uh, are more tra uh, tra what's the word I'm looking for? Tra like, are more travel-based ninjas, like ones from like the Northeast or the New England area might not be accustomed to it. Looks like our referee might be taking a bit of a break right now. Uh, maybe going to use the bathroom. Up oh, there he is.
looking to get underway. Asking a question real quick. Uh, we see Abel Gonzalez uh, coaching her on, so big shout outs to him. Uh, definitely someone who's been here pretty much all day uh, coaching along his fellow athletes and also recording her as well. Uh, obviously, probably for whether it be like her parents or friends um, or even memories because every single ninja event is a memory that every one of these athletes will cherish. As Arissa De La Garza is making excellent work through this course. Ariel Barrow. She's got a lot of time left. Has to build up this momentum. Oh yeah, she's right there. Just makes that grab and right to the cliffhanger. Using nice the work. support beam to her advantage. Oh, she goes right for the dismount. Yeah, she does the kickoff and it works. Yes, it does. And she should be climbing up the double steps. Right about now. They have a bit of technical difficulties. There we go. And makes the jump. Gets it! Just one more lache, and we might have a She's got it! Here. She's got it! Marissa De La Garza gets to go for it. Nail the go, 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 go! Did she get it? She got yes. it. Less than a second left. Less than a second left. She's We're got right it. Here. She's got it. Right Marissa De La Garza gets to go for it. Go, 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 go! Did she get it? And I know Abel Gonzalez is very proud of her, and as we all are. And as you can see, everybody was cheering for her. That's just how Ninja is. Exactly. And I bet you that's going to be a... I was talking about memories earlier. Uh, that is going to be a memory Arissa will have for the rest of her life. Absolutely. And Maylee Dillon is up next. Uh, Maylee is, I believe... Out, again, another one of our South Central ninjas uh, qualified through our regional championships here at Austin Ninjas, and she's off and running. Let's see if Melee can match uh, Arissa's performance on the flow course here. Let's see if we can get another full clear. Making great work right here. Makes the dismount. Going through the balance beam, step, uh, steps down on one of the safety nets, and going through the slack line. Jump out to the rope now. He's got no problem. Good amount of time left. Almost as much as uh, almost as much as Arissa right here. Yeah, as much as Arissa, and she has to get some momentum up. I go for that grab and gets it. Mainly putting up a great run of her own. Yeah, now nice and she'll smooth here. Technique on the cliffhanger. Oh, nope. She's going for a little bit of a safer dismount. Um, pretty smart. Uh, jump. There we absolutely. go. Absolutely. Oh, she just oh. misses it. Oh. Off to the side, very, I think. Just a little bit. Bit of a, bit of a bummer right there, but still, Mainly has plenty of time to try out uh, the double steps and the UFOs. And Coach Lulu uh, helping her with some chalk. Uh, big shout outs to him. And uh, Mailey Dillon with a great run. Especially uh, throughout the entire uh, course, like in the first half. Honestly, pretty flawless. Yeah, that was a really nice smooth run. Here's our top and so far that puts her in and Yes, and we have one one, two, three, we have eight four, left. Five. Eight left? Okay, good to know. 
And we have Sofia Koval uh, up on the course. Great swing out for that ring. Very good making, swings there. Yeah, very, very quick work right here. Let's see if Sophia will be able to oh, join she's the fly. Oh, absolutely. Goes for that rope. Minute left. Yes, uh, she is definitely on pace to join Arissa as a full clear on this course. It's the swing. They're kind of far apart. He gets it. Yes, she got that big kickoff for a lot of momentum right to the ring. Now we'll see if she'll uh, do Arissa's technique. Oh, not quite. Uh, still might use the support beam to push off to the dismount and gets it. Nice dismount. 30 seconds left. Oh. oh. She went for the touch point, though. That was, that was smart, but yeah, I feel like she had a decent uh, chance at the time. Still a very nice run though. All right, let's Absolutely. Take a look. Yeah, that put her in second by a pretty decent margin too. Uh, uh, four seconds. Yep. Next we got Eberly out of Rise in Houston. Shoutouts to uh, Rise. Um, as Eberly begins the course. Now you just saw Sophia. Take up a take, didn't take up a lot of time on the first half of this course. Uh, I feel like all of our other ninjas need to be watching. Try to get through those first few obstacles as quick as possible. Now, Phil, something that a lot of these uh, athletes are doing on this third obstacle right here, this wobbly balance beam, is that they just skip the beam and just do those little safety nets. Yeah, little parkour strides, yep. Yeah, so, uh, do you, do you think that's, uh, a good move from either, a, from a speed and a safety, uh, safety perspective? I feel like, if you're comfortable with balance, I have mentioned earlier that, you know, not every ninja likes balance, but if you're comfortable with balance, I'd say go for it. Absolutely, I, w I would agree. And looking to, going. yes indeed, has about 20 seconds left, makes a dismount. Going up the devil steps, um, see if she'll uh, make, do the touch point, or is she just going to try and attempt the obstacle? Oh, almost got the catch there, just a little overshot. Still a great run at Eberly Camps. Uh, very strong run, especially in the first half of the course. Uh, going up on the leaderboard, we ha she is now in sixth place uh, with one, two, six left. Six runners left. Annabelle Prinsky is coming up uh, out of Brooklyn Ninja Academy. Shout out to Brooklyn Ninja Academy. I believe right there is one of our preteen male athletes. Uh, yeah. That's, uh, I believe that is Sinclair. Yep. Yep. Got the coach, uh, coach Darian Bennett, of course, on the sidelines. Yep. Shout out to Darian Bennett. Uh, definitely had a very busy day for himself, uh, along with everyone else here at the Tier 2 World Ninja League Championships. Uh, taking a bit of a slower approach. Nice and smooth now. Nice and momentum going. Absolutely. And even though it used, even though the spider walls are definitely safer, they can be a little bit on the slower side. But Annabelle goes through at a pretty efficient rate. Oh, I just. Oh. Like just slides off of the slack, la slack line, but slack lines are not easy. Especially if you got a leap to a rope right after. So our preteen athletes uh, have a lot of talent in 
have a lot of talent and have a lot of difficult obstacles ahead of them. Nice reach up. Absolutely. Ambel goes for the pull and makes her way through the rest of the cliffhanger. Gets that dismount. Do that dismount. Now let's see how she's handling the double steps. Doing very well so far. See how she'll handle. Uh, try, uh, tries the forward grip right here. Still a great run from uh, Annabelle Prinsky. Might look, oh, she looks a little bit upset, but still a uh, great run out of her. Uh, regardless, uh, she should still be very proud of all of her accomplishments up to this point. And she will be back on the full course. And then we have uh, Alexi Bach coming up to uh, the starting line. Uh... Oh, there she is, out of Rise Ninja. Shout out to Rise Ninja. Looking to get ready on the course and starting off with the shrinking steps. Building up some nice swing here. Very, very efficiently for Alexi right here. Onto the slack line right now and going for excellent balance right here. Looking to make the jump over to that rope and does just that. Getting some uh, momentum off the platform for the uh, aerial barrel. So just got to make that grab to that ring. And gets it. Oh, with one hand. Wow. Goes straight to the cliffhanger. Uh, doesn't use the support beam at first, but ends up using it to see if she'll need it for the dismount. And looks it's like she good. got it. Her time's just gonna run out. Nice run there. Absolutely. Looks like she's still climbing the devil steps. But for now, uh, still a great pace uh, out of Alexi, especially on those first two obstacles. As about as smooth as anyone can get. And we have Sophia Rotsman coming up. And our next, and then after her, we have three more runners. Sophia out so of Empire Ninja. Shout out to Empire Ninja uh, for also hosting uh, the regional championships uh, for Tier 2 uh, in the New England region. Making quick work of these first few obstacles right here. And we are now going for the going for the little skip on the uh, wobbly balance screen. Has about a minute five seconds left onto the slack line. Makes the jump to the rope. Now has the aerial barrel. And makes a nice grab. Doesn't even take a lot of swings either. She's still got 40 seconds left uh, onto that support beam for the cliffhanger. Still making great progress right here. Goes Good for that now. Look at her time. Absolutely. She's got plenty of time to join Arisa de la Garza as our next clear. Going for that jump. 
Oh, just oh, great run. Great run. Nice and smooth. Very, very smooth, especially again on that first half of the course. And that aerial barrel didn't even take a lot of swings to get to that get to that ring and then right over to the cliffhanger. Up next, we have Jordan Morehouse. Uh, Jordan. Uh, one of the ninja labs from the state of New York. So shout outs to um, shout outs to those uh, ninja labs as she is off. And going at a very nice pace, uh, Jordan is from the New England region. Uh, we had we have so many New England region uh, athletes. Just shows the amount of growth and talent over in that region specifically. It is absolutely amazing to see. And we are we are looking at the future of Ninja right here with some of these athletes. And Jordan Morehouse is looking to be one of the future one of the future premier athletes of the sport makes a nice grab over to the ring still has a ton of time let's see if Jordan Morehouse can join uh, Arissa De La Garza as our first as a second clear on the flow course Make, makes the dismount right there up the double steps with about 20 seconds left, almost to the top. And she gets that grab over. Yep, and th th these are very, very tough. Oh, 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 oh. Left hit just a little bit off, but a great run from Jordan Morehouse. As we have now. two runners left. First up. Ella Magnuson, who went first and first in the skills. Let's see how Absolutely. she does here. Yeah, Ella has been putting on a show this entire competition. And we have the all, we are all Abel uh, uh, shirt on. Shout out to Abel Gonzalez, who is currently at Austin Ninjas, coaching on all of his athletes obviously super super busy guy to uh this weekend but i bet you he wouldn't change it for the, uh, change it for the world as ella magnuson making quick work right now through that wobbly balance abel gonzalez also uh like with uh, Arissa De La Garza before, uh, is filming his athletes. Uh, maybe they like preserve a memory. Maybe something they can always look back on to. Uh, obviously, I like I how as strong as athletes are. <laughs> yes. His athletes are very nice strong. Nice jump down. Nice Ella, Ella is making great time right now. And... Going very, very smoothly through the devil steps. All right, now we three just have seconds the two left. UFOs. Nice Gets grab. the first one. And remember, Orissa cleared with less than a wow. second left. And Ella Magnuson is about to make the dismount a clear. What a clear. Absolutely Over 10 seconds job. left. And that will put her right into first place if uh, if I'm not mistaken, because our only other clear was Arissa De La Garza, <laughs> another one of the <laughs> uh, Gonzalez's uh, athletes, who managed to clear with less than a second left. And look at that. That's a smooth UFOs. And UFOs are super, super difficult. And our final runner. Uh, currently on the starting platform is Ash Meyer. Uh, looks like we may have a bit of technical difficulties over here. Um, but 
Well, this while we are about to start our final runner, uh, big shout outs to Austin Ninjas in Austin, Texas, for hosting this wonderful event. Uh, shout outs to all of our coaches and athletes here today, friends and family coming out to support their athletes. Uh, Nick Fordney and the rest of the Austin Ninja teams for designing these courses. Shout outs to my co commentator Philip Scott and everyone in the World Ninja League uh, making all behind the scenes to make this event a reality. Looks like we're still at a bit of a standstill right now. Uh, Phil is currently working on fixing the stream. But still, an absolutely amazing event uh, so far at the Tier 2 World Ninja League Championships. And keep in mind, today is only the first day. We got more events tomorrow. Uh, we got plenty happening Looks like still uh, still dealing with some technical difficulties. Uh, Ash Meyer is still on the course, but time is running low. I will let you know. Let's check the leaderboard. Sorry so much, guys, about um, SRT complete being the stream was completely down. Um, She just ran out of time there, but still great effort. Yes, I have Ash Meyer. We'll get everything sorted out and fixed for the full course. All these athletes will go again at the second course, so please stand by. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you in a little bit.
Alrighty, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we're just getting ready for our last course of the day. Uh, before we do that, let's go over some of the leaderboards. So, first off, here are here is the top ten boys, the final standings for each one of those courses and skills. First two numbers are the courses flow and pull, and last two are the skills. So, um, as you can see, Ryan Cantu, with an overall placement of 10 points, wins it for the preteen boys with Timmy Gregory and Mason Manley, second and third. And you can also see the rest of the top 10. Congrats to everybody who competed today. That has been a great event. And then, for our girls that are in the middle of running, this is what the standings look like with one horse left to go. You can get a good idea of where everybody is. Ella Magnuson has swept it so far. It will, she's been doing an absolutely amazing job, but so have all of these girls. Second and third place also. Um, we've had two finishers so far, I believe, of the flow course. Let me look at this. Yep, two finishers of the flow course. It was Ella and Arissa. Both from Axios. Super strong out of that gym in Texas. So yeah, this is this is what it's looking like going into the full course. And the full course is a longer, tougher course. It's about um, two and a half minute time limit, I believe. And let's take a look at the format just to remind ourselves. So with the flow and full courses, so all athletes can be in four events. These girls have already done three of the four. The last one left is the full course. And then uh, we will be uh, tallying up their overall placements as I just showed you. And we'll be handing out some hardware at the end of the night. It is very exciting. Almost there. Um, these athletes have done an amazing job all day, both on this course and then also on the kids course. And we're going to be back at it again tomorrow with the uh, 9 to 10 year olds and also the 13 plus. So thank you so much for tuning in. And we should be getting started with the full course shortly. And uh, something else to keep in mind, uh, the top three placements at each of the uh, each of the standings uh, for total, uh, they will qualify for the Tier 1 World Championships being held in Greensboro, North Carolina. So that is something to keep in mind as well. So Ryan Cantu, Timmy Gregory, and Mason Manley have all qualified for the Tier 1 uh, World Ninja League Championships happening in June. <laughs> so definitely something to keep an eye out uh, for when that time comes. For sure. Yep, so you can see there, those would be the three qualifiers for the two teams. And here are the preliminary qualifiers, but still one event to go, so anything can happen. And definitely keep you updated on that as we progress through this last round for the three teams division. Thanks so much for tuning We should be ready to go shortly. Take Absolutely. A quick look at the schedule while we're, while we're still getting everything ready to roll, and then we'll be back at it.
Looks like we have uh, Sadie Seinberg, I believe that is, on the fifth obstacle, which has been a huge crux point for our male athletes. Uh, misses the grab, but goes to reset. Makes a second attempt. Oh, still hanging on. Oh, but decides to drop. Uh, Sadie is uh, again. Sa uh, again, uh, Sadie is out of Brooklyn Ninja out of the Northeast uh, Division. Uh, Brooklyn Ninja Academy is where her regional cha uh, championship was. So shout outs to them. Uh, she hails from the Grit Ninja, which is again. Uh, also in the Northeast Division, so, uh, Northeast Region, so shout out to them as well. Going to try and reach up there, sides to drop, and now we have the Kaleidoscope right here. Now this is an obstacle that none of our, that only two of our pre-team males were able to, to conquer. But right there, uh, Sadie has a great run. Didn't really get to see a whole lot of it, but now we are on to Libby Campbell. <laughs> now, uh, before Libby's run, I uh, want to give a big shout out to Austin Ninjas once again for hosting uh, this amazing event, uh, along with Nick Fordney and the Austin Ninjas team for designing all of the courses that you will see, not just today, but tomorrow as well, while well, the mature kids and the 13 and up age divisions uh, go ahead and uh, take on their courses. As we see uh, Darian Bennett and Coach Lulu uh, dancing off on the camera. Shout outs to them. Uh, having a great time, uh, not just by themselves, but also with their athletes. So definitely very nice to see uh, over here at uh, Austin Ninjas. And uh, some things to keep in mind, uh, Ella Magnuson. Uh, is currently sweeping the uh, pre-teen female division uh, so far in the competition. She just needs one first place here on the full course, and she will nab uh, the state, and she'll nab uh, the clean sweep. Uh, but for now, uh, Libby Campbell is up next. Uh, Libby Campbell uh, is, I believe, out of the Northeast uh, region. Yes, Northeast Division. Uh, Tier 2 Regional Championship was held at Brooklyn Ninja Academy, so shout outs to them. Um, chalking up a little bit before uh, taking on the course right here. Now, uh, Phil, we... We have had uh, a lot of runs come down to the biggest part of the course, which was that fifth obstacle crux, crux point. Uh, do you think that um, that will play a similar role here for our preteen females? Uh, looks like uh, looks like Phil is away from the mic for the time being, but for now, uh, Libby Campbell is. Through the first two obstacles easily. Now on to uh, the cliffhanger. Uh, obviously, one of the most iconic obstacles in ninja history. Um, going back years and years ago. Uh, gets to the top of that cliffhanger pyramid. And is making her way down. But we have a... Ooh, slides off right there. But that's okay. Because this is a full course, every single obstacle matters here and that is starting uh with each and every obstacle obviously the cliffhanger doesn't quite get through the slack line but definitely a great effort nonetheless gonna swing her way up to this crux point this obstacle played a massive role in the standings uh when it came to our male athletes that ran not too long ago going up for the swing doesn't quite grab it and drops. Now we move on to the fidget, uh, fidget spinners. These are deceptively tricky. Uh, that first fidget spinner is on bungee cords, so you cannot get as much of a swing as you would like. 
and now it has to make this tricky lache over to this other fidget spinner that spins around, makes the makes the grab, got to keep swinging around. Libby Campbell uh, making made a nice grab there and makes that dismount. Now onto some ring tech. Has to use her back swing to try and get the. Oh, she got it out pretty easily, but doesn't have a ton of momentum uh, to try and get that ring up into the next hold. Building up some more momentum. Only has. And time is about to run out as she is going up to attempt the kaleidoscope. Yes, as far as the great fight, great effort. Absolutely. Now, Phil, uh, we've seen how much of an impact uh, that fifth obstacle made uh, for our preteen males. Do you think this obstacle is going to play a similar role here? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's definitely going to be... I think all the same crux points will remain. Um, but yeah, we'll just wait and see how it plays out. And very interesting to see how our later runners fare on it. Um, especially since we our first two uh, low course finishers uh, earlier, so we'll see if they can do it again here. Absolutely. Uh, and those will be running a lot later into uh, this heat. Those are Arissa De La Garza and Ella Magnuson. Uh, the latter of which uh, is looking to complete the clean sweep at the uh, World Ninja Championships for the preteen female division. But for now, uh, Tempe Coffee is currently on the cliffhanger and making absolutely short work of it. Now, these preteen female competitors, they've already done skills and they've done the flow course. They must be completely gassed out from the day's events. And it looks like Tempe Coffee is still as alert as she has ever been. And look at that grab right there onto that spinning square. Gonna have to make her way over to the pumpkin and does just that. Touches the uh, UFO, doesn't grab bomb, but still a great effort onto that obstacle. That obstacle took out so many of our preteen males. So there is absolutely no shame in falling down to that tricky obstacle. As Tempe Coffee looking to get a nice swing on the fidget spinners. And gets one side of it. See if she can recover her momentum here. Uh, her feet very close to touching the mat as well. Um... Out of Brooklyn Ninja Academy with Darian Bennett as her coach. Shout out to Brooklyn Ninja Academy and Darian Bennett. And keeps on swinging. Looking for that dismount. And comes up just short. Still a great fight over in Tempe Coffee. And we still have two obstacles left. Uh, going for the rings. Comes up just short. See if she reaches it and gets it. Last move, and dismounts, so that will net her some points. And lastly, we have the Kaleidoscope. Makes the Lache over to the cliffhanger. Let's see if she can act, get this special delivery, and comes up just short as time expires. Still hits the buzzer, and she should be very proud of herself because that was a fantastic run. And then next up, we have Sundell Bogdan. Coming up, uh, yes, Sundell Bogdan. Uh, Sundell is from the Northeast region again. Uh, Brooklyn Ninja Academy, shout out to them. But is a Dexterity Depot athlete. Um, Dexterity Depot is def is a great ninja gym, uh, home to many talented ninjas, including uh, one, the only Matt Bradley. Uh, so, big shout-outs to Matt Bradley. And making her way through these first few obstacles. Now, Dexterity Depot ninjas definitely know their cliffhangers. 
So, and Sun Bell has proven to be no exception. Makes it all the way to that top portion of the cliff and now has to come down. And this is where it gets really taxing. And then we have that dismount, which is very, very tough. And gets it. Sundell is to, at least to my knowledge, the first athlete of our preteen female division to clear that the cliffhanger. And now onto the slack lines. She's looking to be the first to clear that as well. Making her way over and gets it now for this very, very tough crux point. If she can clear this, she is going to be in very good shape. Makes the nice spin over to the pumpkin. And saves it with one hand on the uh, spinning UFL. But she is still spinning around. She is going to have to get her body control centered and get ready for that lache to that bar. She's fighting too. Definitely no quit in this athlete right here. But she's still spinning. But she drop, but she drops down and is looking to uh, make up some ground on these final few obstacles. Makes the leap over to the fidget spinners. Got nailed this lache right here. Oh, it comes up just short. Uh, Phil, I think she might be pretty gassed after the day's events, and it's definitely. Coming out, but still a fantastic run out of Sundell Bogdan. And is definitely going to get some good points over on the cliffhanger. Uh, so, clear, um, clearing that. He also, she really did have a lot of endurance left. She was really fighting on all those obstacles. That was really good to see. Absolutely. Very nice to see. And Sundell has a very bright future in the sport of ninja. <laughs> And next up, we have Allison Holmes, who put up a really solid run uh, in the flow course. So definitely someone I want to keep an eye on for uh, our neck, for someone to keep an eye on for the full course. And for those of you just tuning in, uh, welcome to the Tier 2 World Midget League Championships. I am Evan Mel, and I am joined by Philip Scott. And... Uh, we are live over at Austin Ninjas in Austin, Texas. Uh, shout outs to them, as well as Nick Fordney, Nick Fordney and the rest of the Austin Ninjas team. Over here, uh, they were the ones who designed this course. Very busy weekend for everyone involved in this competition. So definitely big shout outs to all of them. Um, and although it's definitely some hard work, it's definitely very rewarding to see an event as awesome as this one. And we have Allison Holmes coming up to the starting platform pretty soon. See Darian Bennett, um, one of the coaches over at Brooklyn Ninja Academy. Shout outs to him. And Allison Holmes taking a nice deep breath with her coach. Getting ready to take on the course. Getting all focused up, and now in the referees counting her down. Making a quick work of that first obstacle right there. Now we have the holds. None of our female athletes have been struggling with those first two obstacles, and Allison Holmes is no different. Onto the cliffhanger, which we just saw Sundell Bogdan clear uh, in the previous run. Let's see how Alyssa, Allison Holmes does here. Makes it to the end, just has to make that dismount. Making a few extra swings. Looking to regroup right here. Try a... Uh, yeah, that is also a sideways dismount, which are not easy. Especially since you have to worry about that pull. And looks like she ends up a little bit too far to the left. But she's still got plenty of time to make up ground. Especially on these few obstacles. The slack line right there. And on to 
the spinning square with the pumpkin hold and then the spinning UFO makes her way over to the pumpkin. Amazing grip strength out of Allison Holmes right here. Uh, looking to fit, uh, get her body under control, uh, but she is still spinning. But still no quit in this athlete. Lifting her legs up uh, to try and stop her momentum. Now let's see if she nails this lache. She's got a really good swing going. Come on, Allison. Oh, it came just short of not only the lache bar, but also the landing platform. Still a great fight out of Allison Holmes on that crux point. Oh! Yes. Hopefully she's okay, because that was a hard fall. She has enough time to get to the end here. Get rid of Coach trying to help her out. Almost there. Hang on. Oh. Still a great run out of Allison Holmes. Uh, definitely showcased a lot of fight and grit on that on that uh, fifth obstacle right there. It's a big hug from her coach. Uh, she, he should. He's very proud of her, and we are all very proud of Allison Holmes after that run. And up next, we have Katie Fitzpatrick, uh, who should be making her way over. I believe this is going to be Katie Fitzpatrick. Just looking for um, our referee. Definitely all of our Athletes are very exhausted after the day's events. Uh, we have the entire gym right at the entrance uh, cheering on these preteen female athletes. Coach Lulu in the background. Big shout outs to him. And looks like Katie Fitzpatrick is up to the starting platform. Uh, Darian Bennett uh, coming over to help coach. Uh, which is something that we all love to see over here at uh, In Ninja is coaches helping out each other, athletes helping out each other, everyone just helping out everybody. That's what Ninja is all about. And Katie Fitzpatrick currently on the course right now, grabbing a hold of that of those holds and makes the dismount. And up and going. On that cliffhanger, uh, Katie Fitzpatrick wearing a Lab Rats jersey. Shoutouts to all of the movement labs all across the country, uh, whether it be in New Jersey, Ohio, and uh, some of the other locations are escaping me at the moment. But those are those are the main two that I think of. So big shoutouts to all of you guys over at the movement labs. And now, an unfortunate miss on the. Mm -hmm. Cliffhanger, and now just now on the slack line, but now we have a huge obstacle right here. If Katie, oh, tips her way up and hanging on for dear life on that pumpkin, makes the makes the tip over to that flying UFO. Will Katie Fitzpatrick be our first to clear um, this insanely difficult obstacle? Um, none of our female athletes have cleared this obstacle. Oh, but she's still spinning around. She might have to fix, and she just drops right there. Going to try and see how she could do the other obstacles and get some more points. Makes the lache. Um, those fidget spinners are pretty tricky, especially that first one with the bungee cords. You can't, you might not have a ton of momentum right there. Uh, this now just was just short, but still great fight out of Katie Fitzpatrick on the full course and doing four events in one day, along with just being in a gym with everyone else is very, very tough. Like 
you, regardless of result from these. Oh no! And there goes the ring. Oh no! What? But yeah, so Jet's still a Shay right there. Let's see if she can get that special delivery. Comes up just short, but. Katie Fitzpatrick with a great run, and she should be very proud of herself. In fact, all of these athletes should be very, very proud of themselves because they're doing something very, very difficult here. Uh, not only just one run, not just one run in a day, but four. And you've basically been here the entire day, so it's not like bam, 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 bam. Like, it could be a while before your next run, so... That physical and mental fatigue is really starting to set in on the full course for our athletes. And we have Savannah Lillinger uh, on the starting platform right now, making her way through uh, all of these obstacles here. Now it has all of these holds. Making nice work of them. Uh, fortunate drop, but she still got plenty more obstacles to go. Onto the cliffhanger, and great fight out of Savannah right here. Definitely giving it her all on these obstacles. She's got a very bright future in the sport, and getting ready to start the slack lines makes the first one. Uh, it comes just short of the second. But now we have this very tough crux point here. This is going to be a huge difference maker in the full course and how its standings are going to play out. Uh, Darian Bennett giving her some tips. Not quite just there yet. Going to reset again. see and gets the grab let's see savannah's spinning around right now let's see if she can grab onto that pumpkin hold misses and drops but she's still got three more obstacles to try out in the 50 seconds left on the clock going for big swings right here Goes unfortunate fall right there, but we are we, she's got two more obstacles to try out, and especially this kaleidoscope right here, going to be very very tough uh, for any of our athletes to get here. Um, Savannah trying to get that ring right up into that third hole doesn't quite get there. Now going to try the Kaleidoscope, which only two of our preteen males were able to clear. And as time runs up, she goes and hits the buzzer. Uh, Savannah, very, very proud of... Everyone is very proud of Savannah. And she'll, she's got a bright future in the sport. And then next we have Lucia Aventajado. Uh, I got that right, right? Oh, right, Phil. Anyways, uh, looks like Phil's out off the mic for a little bit. Um, Lucia, uh, another co athlete being coached by Darian Bennett. Uh, big shout out to him. Um, as she is making her way through these first few obstacles, out of. Brooklyn Ninja Academy. Big shout out to them. Excellent grab right there. Oh, doesn't quite this nut yet. Whoa. Oh, hang on. Ah. Oh. And that's going to take away a attempt at the cliffhanger. But she's still got plenty more obstacles to make up ground on. It makes it all the way to that fifth obstacle. Now let's see how she'll be able to handle this fifth obstacle. She's doing good so far. Just got to hang on to that pumpkin hold. Gets it. Insane grip strength out of Lucia. 
Now she's got one. She's got to nail this cliche right here. Going up a nice swing, too. Just that one lache. Oh, he just pulled. Still has a chance at a redemption at lache uh, with the fidget spinners. Uh, tries to static it. Um, doesn't quite have the wingspan for that. But this will be another obstacle she should end. What's up? She has a lot of time. Absolutely, and nails that dismount uh, to try the kaleidoscope. Does not really take a rest? That Lachey looked really good, just did not have the grip strength. Again, that physical fatigue is really starting to set in with all these athletes. But a great one by Lucia, who also is going to have a great future in this sport. And up at the starting line right now uh, should be Dylan Post. If, uh, if I am correct. Looks like we're getting a few things up, and here's the run order. We still got Caroline Shepler, uh, right after Dylan Post's run. And she is ready to go. Very, very determined. And she is off. Going through uh, these holds very, very easily. Oh, misses the grab on that final hold. Let's see if she's able to recover. And she does. Goes for that dismount and sticks it. Dylan is from the New England region. Uh, out of which is where the which uh that is where empire ninja uh hosted their hosted their regional championships for tier two which is where dylan qualified uh made it to the end of the cliffhanger see if she can get this dismount right here which is a very tricky dismount doesn't look like she got it but she's still got plenty of Obstacles to make up points, especially this step mm -hmm. up. Oh, she did. Uh, I saw the I saw the I saw the lights went red, oh, so I wasn't so I didn't think so. But that might be under review. Uh, be on the lookout for that. Um, but this fifth obstacle is in incredibly tricky, and if Dylan can clear this, she'll be in very very good shape. Mm -hmm. Try, but unfortunately does not make it up to that first uh, first hold right there. Now onto the fidget spinners. Gotta nail this lache right here. Uh, the fidget spinners uh, proving to be a little bit of a crux point for our female athletes. Um, the lache has taken out some of our athletes, mm -hmm. including Dylan just right there. But also that dismount is pretty insane too. Um, Dylan is from Grit from the Grit Ninja Gym. Uh, shout outs to them over in the New England region. Well, uh, looks like look she looks absolutely gassed, and I would be too after a day like this. Got one more obstacle to try. Gives it a great try. Runs over, hits the buzzer. And that will be an awesome run by Dylan Post. Uh, hopefully we'll see her uh, more in the future. Um, I know she's got a bright future in the sport. And we have Caroline Shepler up next. Uh, we got everyone over here at uh, Austin Ninjas, including uh, – Chris Wilczewski, who you just saw on camera not too long ago. Um, Coach Lulu is uh, also in in the crowd. Big shout-out to him. And he's, co he's coming over to Coach Caroline Shepler. Caroline Shepler uh, from the South Central 
South Central Region uh, qualified through Austin Ninjas. Making a nice quick way through these first few obstacles. Now we have quite a bit of crux points uh, for our athletes here, uh, including the cliffhanger, that fifth obstacle with the pumpkin hold and the spinning in the spinning UFO and square. Uh, the fidget spinners have proven to be a bit of a crux point as well. And, of course, the kaleidoscope, which only two of our male athletes were able to complete. Caroline Shuffler drops at the final cliffhanger ledge, but she's still got plenty of obstacles to make up for the lost points. And makes it through the slack lines. It makes a nice grab over to that uh, square. And then onto the pumpkin showing off incredible grip strength. Let's see if Caroline... Oh, she, she had the distance and she had the hand placement. Just did not have the grip strength. But she's got a redemption at Lachey right here and comes up just short. But she's still got two more obstacles, including that kaleidoscope, which could easily turn the tides of the standings. For sure. If and just at it now. See this ring toss trying to get that reach up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, this course has proven to be absolutely brutal for our female athletes. Uh big shout out to so once again Nick Fortney for um designing this course and all the other courses that you will see this weekend at the Tier 2 World Ninja League Championships. Uh, doesn't get the Lachey to the cliffhanger right there, but Caroline, Caroline Shepler uh, should be very proud of her accomplishments here at the World Ninja League Tier 2 Championships. And looking at the leaderboard, that moves her into 6th place. Uh, Sundell Bogdan is currently in first as the only one of our athletes who has cleared four obstacles thus far. Let's see if anyone will be able to match that. Next up we have Yara Domenchik. Domenchik. Uh, yeah. Yes we do. And Kiala, um, I believe is also from the Grit Ninja. Yes. Uh, the same shirt that um, Dylan Post had on not too long ago. Uh, she is looking ready to go, and her coach is ready to get her going. Looking for the chalk bag. Giving her some chalk right before she runs. Now, Phil, I am definitely interested uh, in that fifth obstacle in particular because we've seen a lot of close attempts on that obstacle so far, but no one has beaten it yet. Let's see if Kiala will be the first. Making quick work through this first obstacle right here. Makes the not uh, That's not the first obstacle. That's the second obstacle. But onto the cliffhangers right now. And making great work. Very, very calm and collected. Very efficient. Just got to make that dismount right here. And makes it. Uh, one of our only few athletes who were able to clear that obstacle. Struggle a little stumble on the slack line. Uh, takes some time to regroup. And now Kiala is the f second of our athletes in the three-team female division to clear at least four obstacles. And she is not stopping. She is currently on that fifth obstacle, that hard fifth obstacle. Uh, Going to have to – she is fixing her hand placements right now. Still, But still spinning around. Going to have to bring up her knees – try and stop her from spinning. Well, the issue with this is... There she goes. Now she gets it. Yep. And that looks like a good swing there. And there gets go. it! That fifth obstacle has finally been taken down by Kiala Dementich. 
Um, now she's on to the fidget spinners and goes it back and resets. That's another lache. Kiala is putting on a show right here for all of these athletes. And I hope all the rest of these athletes take notice because um, Kiala is going to be in first place by a wide margin. Trying to get that ring right in there. Looking to reset. Going to try and see if she can clear this seventh obstacle. There we go. Gets it in. Did she get this clear? And go for the dismount. And going straight into the kaleidoscope. Honestly, if you if she had more time, I think she could have made a good point. And right Ella, now. the Magnuson run. Uh, is about that to make is Ella Magnuson, not uh, not Kiala uh, Dementia right there. <laughs> um, Cameron Hetherington is up next. And that is a Brooklyn Ninja Academy Ninja uh, on the starting plat platform right now. Uh, yeah, Darian I Bennett. I thought I, mar I thought I marked the replay. So what a what a great run as as you can see he is in first place so far by a wide margin as you said. Absolutely, and let's see if Cameron Cameron Hetherington can match that performance, and it's looking really good so far. Just gotta make that grab to that ring and swinging over. What a great event this has been for everyone involved, hasn't it, Phil? Oh yeah, it's been an action-packed day. Lots of these ninjas first experience with a big competition like this, and they're having a blast. Absolutely, and we've said it before and we'll say it again. What's the point of doing ninja if you're not having fun? Which I hope all these athletes are having fun here today. And... We're going to see even more fun tomorrow. Oh, what a save right there. Great save on that cliffhanger. And now onto the slack line. Gets through it. Makes a nice grab onto that spinning square. Stacking all the way over to that pumpkin. Showing off great grip strength. Just couldn't hang on. But she's still got three more obstacles ahead of her. And this is one of them, the fidget spinners. Just got to make the lache right here and does just that. But now her momentum is going in a diagonal. Let's see if she'll be able to fix it. Looks like she is. Now this dismount has proven to be pretty tricky for our athletes. Still going a bit side to side. Oh, comes just short. Cameron Hetherington uh, still putting up a really solid run, especially with that great save on the cliffhanger dismount. It gets through the ring tech very easily and going straight into the kaleidoscope. Let's see. Oh, almost gets that lache to that cliffhanger. But still, a great run by Cameron Hetherington. Um, definitely going to be someone that we'll need to look out for in a few years. And she has gotten older, and she has gotten even more experience. And up next is Dakota Harley. Uh, Dakota Harley, uh, taking, a, taking a big breath with her coach, uh, is out of... The New England region. Barrett, uh, wearing the same shirt as um, one of our earlier, I believe it was Sarah McLaughlin, who was also at the same gym. But making great work on this uh, horse right now. Onto the cliffhanger. Making quick work. And then 
we have that dismount right here. That dismount is very, very tricky. And uses the pull to our advantage. Onto the slack line. We have st started to see our athletes really get the hang of this obstacle. Balancing her way through and makes it all the way through. Now only Kiala Domencic has uh, cleared this obstacle. Let's see if Dakota Harley can do the same. And awesome, awesome job. Now has to get her hand placements right to make that lache. Let's see how Dakota Harley will do right here. Gonna have to spin around, face the bar. Let's see. Building up some nice swing. Doesn't quite get it, but still great effort and a great fight out of the Coral Harley on that fifth obstacle. That very, very tough fifth obstacle. And now, going a bit side to side on the fidget spinner, is she going to try and reset? Looks like it. Showing a lot of fight here is Dakota Harley. Um, on this obstacle and on the previous one, it just slides right off. But she's she's got two obstacles to go with about 20 seconds left. Goes for the grab. Goes for that grab. Uh, placing as well. And makes that dismount, going straight into the kaleidoscope right as time expires. Hangs on. Let's see if she'll be able to clear, even though time has expired. Decides to drop down and goes over. Doesn't quite hit the buzzer. Still a great run out of Dakota Harley, and she's got a bright future in this sport. And up next, we have Harper Chapones. Um, another one of our Dexterity Depot ninjas. Shout out to Dexterity Depot. Um, along with uh, Sundell Bogdan, who uh, has ran earlier and is currently in, I believe, second place. Uh, we'll have to take a look at the leaderboard in a little bit. Um, but Harper is up on the course now. Oh, and it looks like uh, Sundell Bogdan has been bumped down to fourth for now. Dakota Harley and Cameron Hetherington uh, in the second, in the third and second place spots regardless. Well, Kiala Demenchich is still in first place, uh, clearing all but the Kaleidoscope. Harper talking to her coach. Um, definitely, uh, the Serity Depot is a very, very far gym away from Austin Ninja, so... It's incredible that even some of these athletes were able to come out for the competition and test their, scale, test their skills on the biggest stage. And it's just been incredible to watch the entire event. And keep in mind, this is only today. We still got more going on tomorrow. And let's see how Harper will do. Looks like uh, getting everything all squared away. And she's off. Harper Chapones right here going through the holds with ease. And of course, Dexterity Depot Ninjas and Cliffhangers. Obviously, Matt Bradley uh, trains there. <laughs> Her hat falls off and her coach puts it on for a, a great sign of support as well. Um, as Harper Chapones makes it all the way to the end of the cliff and just has to make that dismount right here. And gets it! Now we have the slack lines right here. Definitely some of, some of our earlier athletes have struggled here. And Harper... Harper unfortunately goes down here, but this is the this could be the difference maker for her in the standings. This fifth obstacle. 
Going to reset. Use a bit of a lock off strategy to get up to that spinning square, that pumpkin hold. So encasing a lot of grip strength. Great hand placement, uh, just could not hang on. But still great fight out of Harper Chapones. Big swings right here. A little bit too far off to the left, but still, again, uh, great distance on her lache. And now, uh, get that back swing, uh, pop that ring out, and place it right into the next one. Excellent ring tech by Harper. Now, she has about 30 seconds left. She should chalk up as much as possible and take on the Kaleidoscope, which none of our preteen female athletes have top down today but oh she looks like she tried to static it but did not have the wingspan and just dropped down but un but an unfortunate end to an otherwise great run uh harper chapones uh should be very proud and all of her dexterity depot team members are definitely very proud of her as well and we have nola ewald coming up next uh Nola is uh, from the South Central region, so that is in relatively uh, close by uh, compared to some of our other athletes. Um, going through the holds with very, very quick ease. Um, has some chalk around her waist. Uh, doesn't have to rely on a coach, but she does have... She does have Darian Bennett uh, coaching her along, uh, very, which is very nice to see. Uh, Darian Bennett has uh, proven to be an absolutely phenomenal coach to all of these young athletes uh, in their ninja journeys. Uh, he should be very proud. Oh, he, she gets that dismount as well. Um, the slack lines makes it to the second one. It gets through. Now, only Kiala Dementic was able to clear this obstacle so far. Let's see if Noah Ewald could be the second. Staticking her way over to the pumpkin. Now, we've seen some try to static over to this UFO. We've seen others try to lache. Let's see what Nola tries to do. Looks like she does a mixture of both, but it is hanging on. It has really good swing. That's looking really good. And she clears it, but she overshoots her dismount, and that will cost her a try on the fidget spinners. But still has a great run, and is definitely going to help her out in the standings. As she gets through all the rings. Now she has about 35 seconds left. If I were her, I would stop and chalk up Looks like she's not doing that at all. Makes that first transfer to that first cliffhanger. And peels right off of the second one. Uh, Phil, you and I talked about this earlier. Um, backswing on cliffhangers is very, very difficult because your hands just want to peel right off. Yep, it's However, not like a bar where it's rounded around and you have kind of some grip to fall back on. Yeah, so still a great job of uh, Noah Ewald. And now we have a runner that I am that I know everyone is very, very looking forward to, uh, especially after her full clear in the flow course. And this is Arissa De La Garza, and we have Abel Gonzalez coming over to once again film her run as she takes on the course. Uh, Arissa has been doing very well in the competition. I believe she is currently second overall. Yes. Uh, yes. And she's making quick work so far. And of course, she's trained by Abel Gonzalez, so like, of course, Abel Gonzalez is gonna have like top ninjas. Everyone has top ninjas. And looking to try to build up a swing right here. And gets it.
makes it over to that second slack line. For those of you who are just tuning in, welcome to the Tier 2 World Ninja League Championships. I am Evan Mel, and I am joined by Philip Scott, as um, we are currently live in Austin Ninjas in Austin, Texas. Um, by Nick, and of course designed by Nick Fortney and the rest of the Austin Ninjas team. And we are seeing Arissa De, De La Garza absolutely dominate that fifth obstacle. Has about 70 seconds left for these final three obstacles. Chalking up before she takes on the fidget spinners, which has proven to be pretty tough for our female athletes so far. Makes that Lachey. Now this dismount has also proven to be very, very tough. And gets it. Orissa De La Garza. Making awesome work here. Just needs that back swing. And up and in. Makes that other drop down. And she has 30 seconds left. Uh, taking the time to chalk up before attempting the kaleidoscope. Uh, none of our female athletes have taken down this obstacle. Will Arissa be the first? She gets that first one. She it. makes it! She's got it! Arissa De La Garza! We have a full clear! And she is ecstatic as everyone is in this gym. And I know Amy I remember Arissa cleared with less than a And, performance. and her mom, I believe that's, oh, no, that's another one of the uh, Axis coaches coming over to give her a massive hug. All of her fellow competitors look at, look congratulating at, her. Look at the community we got here. Absolutely. Like, this is incredible that we're seeing out of all of these athletes. And as you can see, that puts her in first place for the full force. What a run. Absolutely. And keep in mind, uh, only two of our preteen male uh, athletes were able to complete this full course. So, and we already got one of the preteen females. Let's see if another one can join her. And on the course right now is Maylee Dillon, uh, being coached by Coach Lulu. Big shout out to Coach Lulu. We all love Coach Lulu here at the World Ninja mm -hmm. League. Uh, go. Unfortunately, comes just short on that cliffhanger, but still has plenty of obstacles to go, especially that tricky fifth obstacle and, of course, the kaleidoscope, which only two, only one athlete was able to beat both of them, and Hiala Dementich was able to clear this fifth obstacle. But Meili is looking absolutely exhausted from the day's events. Uh, looking to chalk up, trying to regroup on the fidget spinners right here. Building up a lot of swing as well. Goes for the leap. Uh, doesn't quite get it, but still has two obstacles to go. Building up a lot of back swing right there. And absolutely nails that first uh, ring tech right here. Let's see. And she gets the second. Has about 50 seconds left uh, to try out the kaleidoscope. But goes straight into it. Doesn't even bother chalking up. Tries a little shade to that first uh, cliffhanger. Unfortunately doesn't get it. Coach Lulu is dancing. He's happy. We're all happy. And we're all happy for Maylee Dillon right now. As she moves into 8th on our leaderboard. And we have Sophia Koval coming up next. Uh, Sophia is, I believe, yes, uh, out of the Northeast region. Um, so Empire Ninja was where the regional championship was held in that division. Shout outs to them. And Sophia is making quick work on this course right now. Moving at a very efficient pace as well. And excellent lock-offs on the cliffhanger. She's, she is 
definitely coming for that top time that Arissa De La Garza has put up. So Via Koval uh, through the first three obstacles very quickly and unfortunately steps down on the slack ladder, but still has three obstacles uh, that could definitely get her a lot of points here. And she is currently on one of them. And that is this insane, oh, makes the nice kip over to that UFO. Uh, now it just has to make that one last lache to that lache bar and gets it. Sophia Koval is going to rack up quite a bit of points right here. And she's still going. Makes it over to the fidget spinner. Now this dismount has proven to be very, very tricky. It looks like she got it. Sophia having a lot of the support from her fellow athletes here today and makes the nice move right over. Uh, she has a minute left to take on the kaleidoscope. Uh, taking some time to chalk up and uh, shake out her hands. She has Lock Off Ninja in the back and cons on the back of her shirt and considering how she did the cliffhanger, uh, you can definitely see why. Unfortunately, she slides right off as she goes over, hits the buzzer. Still put up a amazing run. Uh, definitely being someone that competition is going to be on notice for, especially a sense she was able to clear that fifth obstacle, which has proven to be a massive crux point for all of these athletes here today. And up next we have Eberly Camps. Eberly uh, out of Rise Ninja over in Texas. Shout outs to them. Um, qualified for the regional champion. Qualified for the World Championships here uh, for Tier 2. Uh, the uh, Austin Ninjas, where we are currently hosting right now. Uh, Sylvia Sylvia, uh, Sylvia Hall already ran, um, but this is Eberly Camps at the starting platform right now. Uh, yes. And after, after Eberly, we'll have seven more runners. Uh, Annabelle Prinsley, Riley Moss, Alexi Bopp, Sophia Rotsman, Jordan Morehouse, Ella Mag Magnuson, and Ash Meyer. So, eight runners here are eight runners left, and here is one of them right here. Eberly Camps, ready to get started on the course. And she is off and running. Making a quick work through these obstacles right here and hits the touch point. Now onto the cliffhanger, and we just saw Sophia Koval go crazy on this cliffhanger right here, showing why uh, they call her the Lock Off Ninja. And facing the platform, I don't know why none of our other athletes have tried that yet. Might be a bit of a bad break here uh, over in. Over in our final runs over on the full course here at the Tier 2 World Ninja, Cha World Ninja League Championships. Yeah, I think it just comes down to experience more than anything else. Uh, she's just comfortable with cliffhangers and it's where she's trained on them. Absolutely. And something else to keep in mind uh, when it comes to Eberly Camps. Is that she only competed in two competitions, uh, racking up a total of 18 points throughout the Tier 2 season. And looks like she got through uh, the, that tricky fifth obstacle. We're seeing more and more of our athletes get through it. Which obviously was a very tricky obstacle for both our male and our female age uh, three teens. But Eberly Camps is putting on a clinic right now, and she still has plenty of time to get through this obstacle, rest up a little bit, and then get through the kaleidoscope, which only we've only seen three athletes get through the entire day. Look at the amount of time she has left. 
chalking up right before she begins. Makes that little shake to that cliff hang. And, oh, comes just short, but still a great run by Eberly Camps. And I believe that will put her in the second. Yes, it does. That puts her in the second. Um, we are moving on to our next runner, Am Annabelle Prilinski, I believe it is. Or Prinsley, uh, my apologies. Prinsky. Yes, Pr Prinsky, yes. Annabelle, uh, out of the Brooklyn Ninja Academy. Uh, shout outs to them. A lot. Also shout out to Coach Darian Bennett, who has been all over the place today. Uh, so have many of our coaches here at, uh, at Austin Ninjas right now. And Annabelle is off and running. Building up some swing right here. Um, she has competed in three competitions uh, and has a grand total of 18 points from them. Uh, uses the uh, pole to get up to the cliffhanger. Let's we'll see how she'll be able to handle this. And she's moving pretty pretty efficiently through the entire obstacle. Just got to go for that downward transfer. She's definitely hanging on for dear life right here. Let's see how she'll ha get this dismount. Um... Yeah, and that's going to drain a lot of her strength as well uh, as she moves on to the slack lines. Gets through the first one and gets through the second. Checking her hand to make sure there's uh, no rips there. Uh, rips, definitely uh, one of the worst things to get in Ninja. Uh, I, I remember my first rip. Uh, that was not fun. <laughs> Kind of a required thing for being a ninja. Yes, indeed. And oh, excellent fight out of Anbol Prinsky. Uh, she looks okay though. That did look like a pretty hard fall. But we're continuing on moving. Just gotta make this transfer right here. Going, going around. Decides to drop. Oh, she. Looks absolutely gassed, but still putting in great effort all around, especially on the flow course and on the full course. Gotta make that jump right up. Yep, just ran yeah. out of it. Yep. And she's been looking at her hand quite a bit, but still not giving up. Oh, maybe she did get a rip. I hope she's okay. Still a great run uh, from all of these athletes, including Annabelle Prinsky. And if that true, if that is a rip, uh, I have to give her even more props because uh, doing upper body obstacles on rips is not fun uh, because they hurt. And then up next, we have Riley Moss out of Team Level Up. Uh, shout outs to Level Up and shout outs to her coach, Chad Holm. Making her way through the first obstacle. Building up some momentum here. Gets to that ring. And then onto that. Hold right there. Just got to nail the dismount. Now onto the cliffhanger. Cliffhanger has proven to be very, very tough for our female athletes here today. But she is going along really, really nicely. 
Oh, it oh, comes up just short. Slack line this up. Taking a little bit of time to get herself centered. Oh, missed the foot placement. And a bit of a bummer that she uh, touched down, but still, her run is still going. And she is looking to be another one of these athletes to beat this tough fifth obstacle. Oh, oh. Just slipped off trying to reset. Yeah. And it, that also looked like a pretty hard fall. Uh, a lot of hard falls today. Um, thankfully, everyone seems okay. Uh, as Riley Moss goes for this lache right here to that fidget spinner and gets it. She's just going to have to nail the dismount right here. And this has proven to be a tough dismount for all of our athletes. And she gets the swing going right there. It's going a little diagonal. So let's see if she can get it. There we go. He gets it. And only two obstacles left with about 35 seconds. Oh, goes up to reach. Still going. Uh, coach trying to tell her to reset. Does just that. Building up some more momentum. Trying to get up there. Looks like she's just absolutely spent after the day's events. Going to try the kaleidoscope. Again, a very tough obstacle, but still a great run by Riley Moss. Um, as we move on to the leaderboard, we still see Arissa De La Garza over in first place. Uh, getting a full course clear. Eberly Camps in second place and Kiala Dementich in third. With only five runners left. Including Ella Magnuson, who is currently sweeping the age division right now. And we have another one of our Rise Ninjas, Alexi Bach. Going through that first part of the course very easily. Now onto the holds. Makes a nice grab right there. Up the cliffhangers. Going to reset on that top one. Has a little bit of a lip, as uh, Phil said. Going for the dismount right here. Oh, it doesn't look like she got it. And now it looks like all of our athletes are starting to figure out the slack lines right here. And uh, Alexi is no different. But now this fifth obstacle has been very, very challenging all day. Not only just for our female athletes, but our male ones too. Gets that grab onto that pumpkin. Now just got has to make that either static or lache to that goes for the static gonna have to fix her hand placement because she is spinning around with 55 seconds left got has to make a, the, the lache over to that bar oh looks like she tried to skip it came just short and looks like she just shook out her ankle a little bit. I hope she's okay. Um, definitely could be a very nasty fall, but gets the lache right there. Now let's see how she handles the dismount right here. And she gets it. Has about 17 seconds left to complete these two obstacles. Gets that first one. Gets that second one. It makes it all the way to the Kaleidoscope with three seconds left. Just keep going, Alexi. Oh, tries to make the little shade to the cliffhanger. Doesn't quite get it. But still a great run out of Alexi Bach. 
as we move on to our next runner. And Sophia Rotsman is up next. And Sophia is out in the New England region. Um, qualified for the World Championships over at um, Empire Ninja. So shout outs to them. And Sophia is making quick work of the course right now. Makes that dismount right there. Onto the cliffhanger. Um, that dismount has proven to be very, very tricky for all of our athletes here. Going down. Just has that dismount. And she gets it. Uh... Experiencing a little bit of technical difficulties here. Uh, she's likely on the slack ladder right now. Oh, looks like up. Oh, we got some a little bit more technical difficulties, but here Sophia is on that fifth obstacle, and she did end up clearing the slack lines. Got some has to have insane grip strength on that pumpkin makes the transfer over to that UFO and just has a lache bar oh and she's she's starting to spin might have to fix her hand placements are a little bit too close to uh, where her head would be and it looks like she's doing just that She got to nail this Lachey. Oh, uh, it doesn't look like she got it. Very, very much of a bummer right there. But we still got three obstacles to go. And she's currently on the fidget spares. Doesn't look like she got that either. But two obstacles left, especially that Kaleidoscope, which can get you a, net you a ton of points upon completion. And look at that. Absolutely smooth through those rings. Has about 12 seconds left to get through the kaleidoscope. Makes the transfer over to the cliffhanger. Now it's just that special delivery that only Marissa De La Garza got. Doesn't quite get it. Still goes to hit the buzzer. And a great run by Sophia Rotsman on the entire course. And with three runners left, we have Jordan Morehouse, Ella Mag Magnuson, and Ash Meyer. For those of you just tuning in, a welcome to the Tier 2 Real Ninja League Championships. I am Evan Mellon. and I am joined by Philip Scott. Uh, we are live at Austin Ninjas in Austin, Texas, and with a course designed by Nick Fortney and the rest of the Austin Ninjas team. And we've had many coaches and athletes today, um, including Coach Lulu, Darian Bennett, Abel Gonzalez, Jonathan Bange, all big shout outs to them. A big shout out to all of our athletes along with their families and friends over here today as Jordan Morehouse begins her run very, very shortly. She's our third to last runner on the full course for the preteen female division. Going through the course very, very easily, wasting absolutely no time. Clears that first two obstacles in less than 15 seconds. Jordan Morehouse is definitely coming for that top spot on the leaderboard. Held by Arissa De La Garza, who has a full course clear. She was the only one to clear that kaleidoscope, which is that final crux point at the end. And looks like we're having a bit of technical difficulties. Oh. We're back, and she is on the slack lines right now. Makes it through. A uh, great run as a whole by Jordan Morehouse. Let's see how she'll be able to do. The only goes with one hand on that, on that square. 
and statics all the way to that UFO. Just got has to make that Lachey right here and gets it. Jordan Morehouse is yet another one of our athletes to clear that tricky fifth obstacle in the middle of our full course. Now we have the fidget spinners, which has proven to be quite a crux point for our athletes. Not a lot of them have cleared it. Let's see if Jordan Morehouse can join them. Looks like she's trying to reset. And does just that. Sizing up the obstacle once again. Just has to make that lache and does just that. Now this dismount, not a given. Definitely not easy. Has to and gets it. Jordan Morehouse uh, has yet to fall on an obstacle on this full course. However, something to keep in mind is that she only has 20 seconds left to get through the kaleidoscope. But she's going and is not chalking up. Makes the lache to that first cliffhanger ledge. Oh no, she peels right off. Oh, it so looked close. like she was good. She and was what going. A great it, run. Absolutely. Could not have said it better myself. And that puts her right into second place. Only behind Arissa de la Garza. Um, and speaking of Arissa de la Garza, uh, one of her Axis Ninja teammates is about to run. And let's see how she'll do. And this is Ella Magnuson. Ella has been absolutely on fire this entire competition. Going, going first place in the tech skill. First place in the dash skill. And first place on the flow course. Let's see if she let's see if she will complete the full sweep on the full course. Where the we are all able to win right here. Absolutely. And Arissa De La Garza should be guaranteed on the podium uh, for this event. And Ella is making quick work of these first obstacles. Abel Gonzalez, her coach, just like with Arissa, shout outs to him and shout outs to the We Are All Able shirt as well. I want to take this opportunity to uh, thank Austin Ninjas for hosting this amazing event. Uh, thank you to Nick Fordney and the rest of the Austin Ninjas team for designing these courses. Thank you to my co-host, Philip Scott. Uh, thank you to the World Ninja League for providing us Ninja fans such a fun competition for all of all of these athletes. I was looking really smooth here. Absolutely. Get me some shock. And uh, tomorrow we are back at it with uh, the mature kids divisions and the 13 and up divisions. Gets a lache up to that uh, out to that square and to the pumpkin. Let's see if she'll kip her way over to the UFO and does just that. Now Ella Magnuson gets that lache as well and is making great time on this course. Makes the leap forward, building up some nice momentum, and gets the lache very quickly. And goes for that dismount, has 50 seconds left. And this obstacle proven to be absolutely no problem for her. Ella Magnuson has a very, very bright future in Ninja. Definitely someone you want to work out. Definitely someone you want to look out for, especially if she gets top three and qualifies for the Tier 1 World Ninja League Championships over in Greensboro, South Carolina. Makes that transfer over. Oh, no! So close. Just slips out. Ella Magnuson still with a great run, and that should still get her... A very, very nice placing into third place. Only behind uh, her teammate, uh, Jordan, uh, Arissa De La Garza and Jordan, and Jordan Morehouse. And we have our final, final runner of 
the preteen female division over on the full course. And this is Ash Meyer out of Brooklyn Ninja Academy. Shout out to Brooklyn Ninja Academy. And we have Darian Bennett as her coach. Shout outs to him as well. And Phil, I gotta be honest with you. This has been an absolutely fantastic event for everyone. Everyone's had so much fun. I know a lot of these athletes have made such great memories on this course and with their friends and family um, over here at Austin Ninjas. Uh, definitely impacting the lives of everyone in this sport. And I know these coaches, very rewarding experience for them as well. And I, ca I cannot wait to see what the future of this sport holds, especially for these young athletes right here. Because we've seen a lot of talent here. And one of these talented athletes is on the course right now, and that is Ash Meyer. Next up, we have this fifth obstacle right here. Goes for the static. Oh, we just saw L.O. Magnuson go for the uh, kipping technique. Let's see if Ash Meyer will be able to get, get through this up. obstacle as well. I go for the here. Kicks the bar. Nice grab. Very nice grab. Now on to the fidget spinners, which has proven to be pretty tough for our female athletes, but not for Ash Meyer so far. Just has to nail that dismount. Taking a few extra swings just to be sure, and gets it. She has about 35 seconds left for the final two obstacles. All right, and 25 seconds left for the kaleidoscope. Let's see if she's going to chalk up. Doesn't look like it. Taking a bit of a five-second rest right into the kaleidoscope. Gets that first lache. Now it's this tough lache. Do the no! Great Ash Meyer with an insane run. And she should be very happy with herself as she moves into the leaderboard with at fifth place for the full course. Uh, and that will wrap up the competition. Uh, Arissa Dilla Garza gets first place in the full course with a full clear, one of three full clears on this full course. Uh, in second place, we have Jordan Morehouse, and in third place, we have Ella Magnuson. And Ella Magnuson uh, absolutely put on a show, uh, getting first place in all of the other events and getting third here. She should be very proud, and I know her coaches and her friends and family are definitely proud of her as well. And look at that. First place overall, Arissa De La Garza comes in second, and then Jordan Morehouse comes in third. What an absolutely fantastic competition for everyone here. Yeah, man, that was getting really close there in the top, top three to places three to six. That's a really tight competition. All these athletes are really pushing each other to keep on, keep it on, and. Uh, Wow, yeah, what, what an event, and thank you so much, for everybody, for joining us today, and definitely one heck of a show, and thank you so much to everybody, like I said, and great Saturday, full of ninja, in this free teens division, and tomorrow we get to do it all over again, so thank you so much. Uh, World Ninja League and everybody, I'm Philip Scott and Evan Mel. Thank you for sticking with us all day and hope to see you soon. See you tomorrow.